Greetings, everybody. Welcome to uh, Coom TV. And it is, of course, the live episode. We're still trying to iron out a couple of technical gremlins. So bear with us as that we're trying to do a bits and pieces. Um, and uh, Kev's down, currently sorting out the uh, microphones down. In fact, I tell you, what, while, while you're there, we've got someone different that's doing the interviews. Hopefully you can hear me. And I'm going to bring him onto the stream uh, in a second. Let's bring him in. Uh, we've got Josh Barrett down there doing the interviews. You're right, Josh. Hello, Chris. It's like I only saw you a couple of days ago. That's incredible, isn't it? Yes, Josh and I were together at Donington Park uh, on Saturday. Uh, and then, yes, we're back there working. And it, a little bit different for you today, isn't it, mate? Yeah, I'm not going to see much of the racing apart from what's on the stream. But uh, looking forward to chatting to lots of drivers, which I haven't really been able to do much this year so far. No, absolutely. It's going to be good. And we got to hope that they get they, uh, they do get sort of shepherded in there, which uh, has been a bit of a, a mixture of whether they've even done that as well. I know Ian Salmon is over at the uh, the old paddock box, but we left him out in the sun for a little while, haven't we, at the moment? <laughs> it's not bad. It's a much better was it today, isn't it, than Saturday. We've got a bit of sunshine and it's maybe not quite as warm as some bank holidays, but the weather's OK for some good racing. Uh, absolutely. Fingers crossed it'll be good. So thank you, Josh. I know you're going to be down there wrapping those interviews in between. I'll leave you to enjoy things and just get comfortable with everything. And we'll uh, we'll catch up with you a little bit later, mate. Thanks, Steve. See you later on, Chris. Thanks, Josh. So that's uh, Josh Barrett that will be uh, our roving reporter down there. As I say, just uh, we're finishing off qualifying. We've still got the GTs out there. We had a long delay because... Um, Steve Bracegirdle's mini went off at Tower. He's fine as far as I'm aware, uh, uh, but the, I don't think the mini is. I think that's out for the day, sadly. But they had to do a lot of repair work over at uh, at Tower on the, the barriers and the, the rector cells. Oh, wicked. I've got a wasp in here now. A wasp. Uh, even, uh, greetings for everybody that's, uh, that's coming in. If, uh, and I've just realised... The, uh, the important thing that, uh, go away, Wasp. <laughs> uh, Kev. Just making sure that Kev uh, is aware of what I do and don't have here. Uh, he's got to let Ian in at, uh, at the commentary box over there and get him set up as well. So, um, yeah, everything will, uh, will, will sort of all tick into place. Of course, we've got plenty of time. The racing doesn't actually start till uh, five past 12, so don't panic about that. Uh, we're going to get a few. Uh, we're going to get some sponsors videos showing shortly as well. I know how, how showing off is that. Uh, ben Martin asked uh, a while ago, is Dan Brown racing this one? That was the hot hatches earlier. Uh, no, I don't believe he is, unfortunately. I think he's uh, as quick as he was in that opening one. I think he's still trying to sort of... Uh, get the funds together and, and find some sponsors. Lee Tucker says, good luck, Blast Motorsport. These are all on YouTube, we can tell uh, from the, the symbol there. Ben Martin, good morning all. Hope you have a lovely day racing. Is Dan Brown racing together? So no, Ben, sorry, I just uh, I'd missed that earlier, but uh, there's your answer now. Uh, and and I yeah, fair comment, Ken Davis, looking forward to live stream. Good luck to all. Quicker we can get to see live racing, the better. Agreed. Absolutely. Fingers crossed. You know, hopefully we, we are getting a bit nearer. The stream, I have to pre-warn you, is looking uh, a little bit uh, hit and miss at the minute. It's a bit blocky. The quality, for whatever reason, I think we're having a problem. I think more and more people are trying to nick on the uh, the stream at the minute. So, uh, but bear with us, but we'll still be bringing you as much of the action as we possibly can. Uh, Adam Hall, good luck to everyone racing today. Uh, Mike Cotton, hello, mate. Nice day for it. It really is a bit different to we had Saturday, as Josh was saying. We had a lot of rain at, uh, in the second half of the day at, uh, at Donington Park. Mary Ward, wishing everyone a great day. And I see Carl is here as well. Eh? You've, uh, you've let him out, Mary, uh, obviously to support your son, Nathan Ward, in the Golden Ball race in Kevin Mills run Formula Ford. Matt Park, good morning, guys. Hope everyone's well. Uh, and obviously, yes, I am. Thank you very much. We heard that Josh is. Hopefully, Ian is once he's uh, he's allowed in there. And uh, and then hopefully, all of you that are watching are able to answer that as a yes as well. It looks like we've got a little bit of barrier repair is going to be needed on the, I think that's the exit of Tower. They're going to need to do a little bit of work up there. 
Kimberly Mizzen, good luck, Nick Mizzen, dad slash granddad. I love, I love Nick. He's such a legend and such a wonderful story that I shared on uh, um, the Coombe Racing Talk. Uh, Jacob Nichols, good luck to Nathan Nichols racing today. We thought he'd had a problem in that hot hatches qualifying because it had an exclamation mark against his name. He'd just forgotten to put his, uh, his um, uh, what do you call it, the timing device in his car, which is a bit daft. Anthony Henley, have a great day's racing, everyone. Big support for Dave Spiller in Spiller Motorsport Mini. Absolutely, he was going well, so thanks, Rich King. Sally Slade, great to be at back. Go, go, Adrian. It is so good to see the 2018 Saloon Car Champion uh, back uh, in the... He's in the hot hatches. Just keeping uh, Kevin updated uh, with, uh, with the movements over there. Yeah, Adrian Slade, the 2018 Saloon Car Champion. He's in the hot hatches this time. So welcome back to the Slades. Great to see that you're back here, guys. And, uh, and please don't say, I keep thinking that he's actually just like, um, Michael Bublé, just defrosting once a year to come out racing or something, but, uh, hopefully Slade, he'll be here to stay. Uh, Ben Oggs, which boat you out in this time, Ben? Good luck, Team TSR. Uh, Slipper grips Peggy Spackman, the uh, the other half of uh, Ross Parker, who's out in the hot hatches this time. Morning, what a lovely day for some racing. Go team Parker, Slip and Grip Automotive, number 89 in the hot hatches. Finally, he's back out there. Agreed. We're so proud. Back there with you, Litlin, of course. Uh, good luck, everyone, and safe racing. Absolutely. Uh, Matt Parr obviously says good luck to all that are racing today. Uh, Dan Powell says, great to see some Castle Coombe racing. Good luck, everyone. Bring on the hot hatches and saloons. All of them. You should see the grid for the uh, for the GTs. Looking incredible. Great numbers in the uh, Formula Fords as well. And, of course, we've got uh, something a little bit different. We've got the, uh, the sports car trophy. Sadly, with the lockdown, we were going to have a whole host of them coming over from Ireland. Not allowed, is it, of course, at the minute. So that's not been an option for us. So it's a little bit lower. But those cars are amazing round here. Uh, I'm going to assume this is Emma Strawford. Greetings from the media and centre. Hello, Emma. And I'm waving down to Emma now down there in the media centre as well and the whole team down there. Uh, Danny Rawlins says, shame not to see Ben Oggs. We just uh, uh, had the message from him out in that red Astra GTE. Good luck to my brother, Chris Rawlings, car number 77. Absolutely. He was looking quick in that qualifying, although I think he kind of got in contact with a couple of the cars out there. So they're in race control, sorting that one all out uh, over, well, not race control, over at the officials at the top of the Strawford Centre. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> They do, they're, they're now they're waving from the media center. I just caught up with them there. They've obviously got a slight delay compared to what I'm saying. Uh, Daniel Williams, good luck to James Blake and his new Seat Leon and everyone at iTech Racing. Absolutely, that's going to be great to see. Uh, Stuart Tinker Taylor, hello, Chris, from one of the camp softcore. You got it right this time, mate, from a sunny Roud. Is that how you say it? Roud, is that the right way? Uh, <laughs> Sally Slay says, Haha, I wish he was Michael Bublé. Well, he makes the same number of appearances. That's all I'm saying. Are you sure? Have you seen them together, Sally? You haven't, have you? So you, you never know. Uh, good luck to uh, Team Preble from Linda Preble. Interesting. The Prebles were something like, uh, what were they, like fourth and fifth on the grid because they tried some new tyres that just did not work for either of them. So we've got the excitement of them coming through the uh, the grid at the beginning. That is going to be wicked. Both of them. Remember, it's first and second fastest lap times for the two races. So that's going to be really intriguing. Jake Cox, morning, Dorsey. Hello, mate. See, uh, uh, I've actually sort of gone official and called myself Chris Dawes for this. But uh, yes, I'm Dorsey as far as everyone else is concerned. Uh, Chris Valentine, good grief. It's Chris Dawes in a shed. Have a good day, buddy. It's not a shed. Goodness me. Look, we got race control in there. We're up in the tower, mate. We're up in the tower overlooking the uh, the start finish straight. We love it up here, but good to hear you from you, Chris. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering whether I'm commentating on you next Sunday at Brands Hatch in the what was Festival of Porsche, which I think is now just Porsche race day. I'm hoping you're going to be there, mate, and uh, it'll be good to commentate on you again. After so long, uh, Simon Kara, good luck to my family of races. Lucky Kara, Jazz Sapper, and Sonny Gill running with Simon Green Motorsport. Amazing. I've been commentating on uh, Lucky Kara the last couple of days uh, in his uh, Ferrari 488 in the Ferrari Challenge UK up at Donington Park, and he's dominated it in a whole other level. Um, so it's great to see him back again. Simon Green of Simon Green Motorsport has been up at Knock Hill 
run in Lee Frost, because Lucky Kerr was at Donington, so didn't take part in that. Um, and he then came back down, eight and a half hour drive, or it was due to be eight and a half hour. I haven't asked him how long it actually took. Um, but uh, got down last night for a, a beer or two before bed and then here running, uh, running all these guys down here as well. So absolutely best of luck. Oh, and the good news is, is it looks like I've got Lucky Carer to agree to um, coming on Coombe TV. So we'll be able to grab uh, a bit of an interview with Lucky Carer at some point, which would be brilliant. Wonderful character. Might get Jazz Sapper on as well, actually. Robert Lewis, shared fee to Club Racing UK Paddock. Wonderful setup, Chris. Good luck to all club racers today. Thanks, Robert. I appreciate that, mate. Uh, love what you guys have been doing. I did comment last week when you had... Um, I'm trying to remember who you had on. You had one of our racers on uh, last week. Mike Bland. Mike Bland, that was it, from the, uh, the green Peugeot 306. Uh, and uh, just love what you're doing, and uh, it's always good banter, as, as we like to do. So thank you for sharing that, guys. Much appreciated. Uh, Jerome Van Niekerk, uh, good day from uh, Cape Town. Hello, mate. I think you win so far, so we'll see how that, that goes. Uh, Sarah Coombs, good luck to Mike Jemvy and everyone in the sports car trophy. Absolutely. And Mike was looking very, very quick in that earlier. Uh, let me check to see how that one... Where did Mike Jemvy... He dominated that one. I think that's the easiest way to <laughs> sum that one up. He did. He dominated it. Uh Brewster Originals, hello, mate. Are you here? Are you in Orange this week? Uh, I would imagine not, because I think normally I'd see you down there if you were. But uh, hello, mate. Uh, unless I'm getting the, the 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 wrong Drew, but I'm sure that's uh, is that Rob Drew Brewster's Originals. Apologies if I've got that one wrong. So uh, Kevin is hopefully getting uh, Ian Salmon set up over in the the old paddock commentary box. And uh, we will have him back shortly. Uh, there we go. Rob Lew Robert Lewis says, Mike Bland, we would love to have you on the podcast soon as well, Chris. I'd love to, mate. Give me a shout. I'd uh, I'd, I'd love to be on that. It would be great uh, to, to, to come and join you uh, because I love how you bring in all of club racing um, to all the news from all the circuits. I tuned in um, this last week when Mike Bland was on. And, uh, and and loved how you were going around all the circuits with everything. So definitely give me a shout. You know I'm a huge fan of uh, of everything motorsport, and I definitely fly the club motorsport banner. Caroline Sutton says, good luck, Mark Sutton, from Hannah, Alfie, Lily, and the wife. <laughs> is that what he calls you, is it? I, I don't know. That's, uh, that's, that's not right, is it? But, uh, yeah. Um, Oh, good. Drewster's Originals confirmed. Not in Orange this week. Watching the YouTube. So I was right. I took a, I took a punt then because I thought I remembered you uh, uh, as Drewster Originals as well, Rob. Uh, so that's great. Thank you for that. So welcome, everybody. I'm just going to uh, very briefly bring something else up a second. Uh, I do apologize. It is me. But obviously, Open Doors Training, my company, is one of the sponsors of this feed as well. So I'm hoping to just quickly sort out another one as well for Castlecombe Circuit. But here's a, just a very quick message from uh, my uh, public speaking, presentation skills, skills media training, um, all, all those kind of things, uh, training company. So I shall be back in a moment. Video one is about the reasons and benefits of public speaking or presenting. Well, let's think about this another way. Why on earth do we exercise? It takes some serious willpower to get going and it's all too easy to talk yourself out of it. But we know the benefits will be significant, so we push ourselves to do it. And once you get going, it becomes addictive, including the battle of wills to keep going. The same applies with public speaking. It's easy to psych yourself out if you let yourself, but it lets you share your knowledge, point of view, passion, emotion, etc. You have the opportunity to inform, motivate, win over and persuade an audience. What a buzz and an honour. I have the same addiction to the battle of wills, adrenaline and achievement with public speaking. So turn around the way you see it and relish the chance and opportunity. And it hurts a lot less than exercise. Yeah, sorry about that. It is still me, but uh, uh, that was just the first video that I could find that I'd put together at some point, and it still makes my wife uh, uh, chuckle when she sees that one. And and uh, I know that uh, when uh, there's another one that I, I kind of, I seem to act where I go, oh, hello. <laughs> 
I'm not putting that one on because it's just too cringeworthy, but it was uh, it was all sort of directed for me. Uh, in fact, my girls are indeed watching. Uh, hello, Mrs. Dawes. Dawes, or the current Mrs. Dawes, as we jokingly call you. Dawesy girl and Diddy Dawes watching Daddy. Hello, Lauren. Hello, Lauren. I hope you're enjoying it. I know you got up especially important. a pretty dressed to see me off this morning. It was so cute. And thank you for that. And I look forward to getting back and seeing you. It was nice that I got back early enough to see you last night before bed. Uh, Chris Pearson. He is here. I've seen him. No breakdown. He got here fine. And he's going to hopefully be feeding me photos of the winning car for us to put up at uh, certain times. And fingers crossed that will uh, that will work. And we'll be able to uh, um, see if I can put up that photo. Just just a nice little edge. So thanks, Chris. We'll give it a go. Uh, and of course, he says, dilly, dilly, everyone. Dilly, dilly to the mighty Orange Army in particular. I can see they're just on their well-earned lunch break, which reminds me, I should probably, if I have any sense, I should actually be uh, uh, having a bite to eat, but we'll see. Janet Jenkins says, good luck to the flirtations racing team and my darling Jeremy Irwin. See you tomorrow. Jeremy, thank you again for all of the emails just letting me know about Ollie Ball's car. Tried to pretend that uh, they were going to take it steady today. They don't know how how to do that. Uh, Nick Snellum, Chris Rawlins, 77 TSR, up for a podium finish later today. I agree. I agree. He did brilliant last race meeting. And, uh, and you know, let's see if he can keep it up. He was certainly looking very, very quick again in, uh, in, in the qualifying session earlier. So we'll see how that one goes. Neil Lovell, good luck to Nick Mizzen today. Great man. Neil and Freddie, wish we were there. Soon, mate, soon, I'm sure. Gerald Howell, special dilly dilly shout out for a safe day to the Orange Army, especially pit lane and assembly. Unfortunately, it's my turn to not be there today. I mean, this is what is so amazing for uh, for everybody in uh, uh, down here is that Richard Beard or Beardy, as we know him, has had a terrible time actually sort of picking the people that, uh, you know, are able to do the Orange Army duties. And, uh, you know, bless him. Sorry that you missed out this time. Um, but uh, Please remember, for any of you out there watching, 19th and 20th of September, two-day meet, the finals day for the championships. I get the impression, last I heard, is that we're fine for marshals on the Saturday, but the Sunday's possibly a little bit lower. If you have said yes to Saturday, no to Sunday, because you think you can't stay over, the marshals campsite, I believe, is going to be open. So uh, if you just want to do the Sunday, you can't do the Saturday, again, get in touch. Um Make it, make it a problem for Beardy that he's got too many and he's got a pick again, please. Uh, that would be good. Uh, Mackenzie Pring. Yes, Dodge. I No idea. No idea what that means, but uh, apologies I missed that. Peter Snowden. You look familiar. I do, mate. Peter and I, Snowy and I, had a great fun at Donington Park yesterday. Good to see you, mate. And I'm glad that obviously means you got home safely yesterday, buddy. So that's good to, uh, to hear. Uh, Craig Schill. Hello from a sunny S's out. So, of course, that's the uh, the first of the chicanes just as you're approaching Old Paddock. So he can probably look over and see uh, my co-commentator currently, I think, just starting to be allowed into his, uh, his commentary box. And we'll get that one sorted out soon. Mackenzie Pring. Good luck, Chris Rawlings. Alfred Gendel Racing. Uh, absolute superstar from down the road. My old uh, stomping ground, Yate where I grew up and uh, what have you. And those guys are down there and uh, this young man is uh, is winning some big things. Looking forward to some great racing on the stream whilst getting the junior American Cup car ready for round three this Saturday. Hope everyone has a great day and stay safe. Thank you very much. Uh, Lily uh, May Daffin, come on, Mark Sutton. Now, of course, Mark Sutton, definitely come on as far as, uh, as he's concerned. He's currently second place behind Adam Preble in the saloon car standing. So he's doing great in that MGZR. Lynn Bateman says, good luck, Robert Ellick, team TSR performance. And that is uh, a couple of very fast golfs being run by, uh, by TSR there. So uh, yes, they'll be hoping that that's going to, uh, to continue. And uh, I think they're just in the throes of, uh, of looking to try and sort out the, uh, the, the stream quality. Cause as I say, it's a bit blocky at the minute. So they're just free sorting that out. We've got the interviews you've seen sorted out. Commentator over there will be done soon. Don't panic though. It's not until five past 12 that we've got racing. I'm not aware whether there's likely to be uh, any delay in that. And uh, ooh, I'm trying to sort of multitask here as well, get uh, another video done. Mickey Hay says, gutted can't be there, only down the, down the road from the track, mate. I know, I know, it's, uh, it is, it's torrid, it really is torrid. 
but uh, fingers crossed, hopefully not uh, too much longer before we can get something sorted. It's a, it's a constantly evolving... Uh, there we go. So they are now calling the uh, the drivers up now. So there we go. Green flag will be actually be going at uh, at twelve o'clock. So I was just listening to the paddock announcement then, just to make sure. Because as I say, we did get quite a long delay where we had to rebuild the uh, the, the barrier. I think it was the red to sell the tire and now as far as I'm aware oh I've got, got a feeling that I'm now sort of going a bit, a bit blocky uh, so hopefully that means that we're okay it may have just been that my computer was doing some uh some some extra work there trying to sort out this uh this other video so that we can have that running that's better that's better so i can now bring this in here doing it all live, bringing videos in just to get ready. But yes, uh, Mickey Hayes, we completely agree that it is a, a massive shame that uh, can't be here. Oh, missed one there. Sorry. Uh, Hannah Sutton, good luck, Mark Sutton. Keith Wren says, yes, Keith really is there, but I'm keeping my eye on things whilst doing the housework and baking. Have a great meeting to all the Orange Army. Stay safe, everyone, especially the start line, Lynn Rain. That's okay. Now I understand. That was Lynn making sure we didn't panic that it was actually Keith that was saying this because obviously he was uh, he's due to be here. He is here. Uh, Lily May Daffin, my grandpa is Mark Sutton and he's the best. He's certainly doing brilliantly at the moment. Tom Davies, morning from Post 10. First time marshalling here and loving it. Been busy so far. Welcome, mate. Welcome. Good to see it. Uh, yeah, Chris Morris, sorry, mate. The 50p is in the meter. It's got going again. Apologies that uh, uh, I lost you a momentarily there. Hannah Sutton, good luck, Grampy. Mark Sutton. Baldrick Bryan, can't you pull a few strings to get me in, Chris? I'll bring the gin. Oof, gin is a, is, a, is a tempting one. You know it's a way to my heart, but I wish. I can't even bring my own family in, mate. Uh, Linda DeClaudio, good luck to Sean Govard from the DeClaudios. And agreed, I've agreed to Sean. I'm going to talk more about Sean than Was Racing, who run that car. Sorry, mate. I know he gave me grief. Winding me up, in fairness, but he gave me grief. Right. Uh, I'm now just going to uh, pause for a second and uh, run the video that I, I hope is going to work because I've only just been able to get this one sorted. But it is obviously something that goes on here. It's about those of us that actually want to go racing. Becoming a racing driver has never been easier with Castle Coon Circuit. Book your arts novice driver's training course at the Wiltshire venue today. The easiest and quickest way into competitive on-track action. Welcome to Castle Coon. My name's Alan Cooper. I'm the, the Chief Driving Racing Instructor here at this circuit. We're here today to do the Novice Driver Training Course, often known as the ARDS course, which is the first way to start off and get your racing driving license. So, no further ado, let's get on and show you what's involved. So you've seen the format, 
Everyone here today passed their tests and now have their racing license. Who knows, the next time I see them could be as I commentate on them in front of the usual packed house of racing fans here at Castle Coombe Circuit. All you need to do to be next is to visit castlecoombecircuit.co.uk and select Become a Racing Driver under the Racing tab. Becoming a racing driver is easier than you think with Castle Coombe Circuit and Motorsport UK. Phew, I managed to get that working because thank you to Sam Preston got that through to me uh, last this morning and then I had to tweak it because it was 130 megabyte and it had to be under 100 megabyte and I managed to uh, to get that tweaked here on the fly whilst live. Uh, but the good news is, yes, it did work eventually, thankfully. Uh, I don't need that. So, uh, Hannah Sutton, good luck, everyone. Christopher Britton, greetings from the start line. Have a great day, everyone. So, Christopher Britton's down there. Looks like they're doing a little bit of a, of a briefing for some of the drivers down there at the moment. And uh, Edward Meyer, come on, Stephen Jensen. I know it says Jensen, but we know what you mean, mate. It's Jensen. Stephen Jensen in the uh, Zebra liveried Mini in the hot hatches. Obviously, Mini having their own class out there. Now, the hot hatches are currently making their way down to the assembly area. 36 cars, by the way, it is. I know we were hoping for 39. The actual number that uh, is going to be here is 39 cars. And now I've got to do the multitasking of, uh, of input in another grid a second. So, because uh, obviously everything is still paperless in our commentary box, the length and breadth of the country. And uh, so I've now got uh, various systems electronically that work for me to try and keep in control of everything. But it means I've got PSL over here. I've got other bits running all over the place. And, uh, and it's then about bringing it all together as best as I possibly can. I just can't wait. I'm just inputting the, uh, the GT grid and it is looking in, in rude health. And of course, don't forget, championships are getting towards the pointy end we've got double headers for all of our championships here today and then on the what is it uh in september just letting ian know that uh, kevin is on his way to let him in there it's all going to be a bit tight for our second commentator and bless him i know that uh Ian's going to be a little bit concerned about that. Oh, dear. We look, Dominic Shepard had an off in the GTs by the looks of it. I knew there was someone off at Tower, but I couldn't tell who it was. And a bit of damage to the front of that car. Right. What was I originally about to do? I, I've forgotten what I was about to do now. Oh, yes. The date for the, uh, the meet. 19th and 20th of September that we are here for what is uh, finals day. And it will be double headers to see it all in. Uh, I notice, yes, uh, Jared Knight just says, good luck, Dom Shepard in the GTs. I don't know whether he's going to be out or not, mate, to be honest with you. That's not looking... Uh, it, it, I mean, it looks like he'll be absolutely fine, but the front end's not looking particularly pretty, sadly, on that car, which is a real shame. Tanya Mizzen, good luck, Dad. Nick Mizzen, we're all watching. Hi, Tanya. Welcome to the stream. Uh, George Hadley, good luck to Simon Hughes. Uh, Chaz Draco, hello, mate. Hello, darling. All right, my lover. <laughs> He's going to give me grief because I was giving him grief while he was covering the 2CV 24-hour race at uh, the um, uh, at Snetterton. All oh, good. Uh, Ian's just let me know that Kevin is over the other side letting him in now, so that's good. Laura Griffin, good luck, Daddy. Darren Duffield in the Hot Hatch Challenge. Love, Abby. Great, uh, great drive last time. And he's going to hope to carry that on in that mini. Really, really impressive. Uh, Celeste, uh, Adam Preble's better half. I bumped into her earlier. Such an awesome day down here, isn't it, Just And welcome. And, of course, you've then got uh, Gary Preble's other half as well jumping in. Good luck, my boy, Gary Preble, in the Honda Hot Hatches. And, of course, he's out in his usual uh, Seat in the saloons as well. How cool is that? Simo, is Alex Kite and the Grant Motorsport team there? No, Alex Kite. I did see him last time. He was helping uh, run some of the other people. 
is Grant Motorsport here? I'm not sure, you know, whether they are here at the moment. But, uh, um, you know, it's one of those years, 2020, isn't it? Uh, it's a it's a what's it show, isn't it? Sadly, this year. Martin Mees, this is great. I've always wondered what the inside of the control tower looked like. Well, it's pretty, isn't it? Eh? Wood, glass. I think that sums it up, really. That's about the lot here. It's uh, They've got air conditioning in race control next door to me, but uh, I don't. I don't get anything like that. Uh, and uh, Josh Barrett said that uh, Dom Shepard apparently at, he's just confirmed that he outbroke himself and couldn't get in to the corner on the marbles. So there you go. That's what happened there. Jared Knight sounds like I'm going to have to fix the front end again on Dom's car. Yeah, it does sound like he just outbraked himself. And I'm pretty sure it was at Tower. Just got onto the marbles uh, into the barriers. It only damaged the rector cell barrier, barriers. So I think the, uh, the unicorn fluff and whatever else is in them has possibly saved it being too bad. Uh, Chaz Draker, I'll be in and out over the course of the day, but we'll keep the grief to a minimum. Have a great day, mate, and good luck to everyone racing. Thanks, buddy. That's great to see. Our very own Clive Woodward, have a safe and competitive day, everyone. Sorry I can't be there to watch. Be commentating at the next meeting. Chris, Ian and Josh, have a fun day. Thank you, mate. Yes, look forward to you joining us next time, buddy. Uh, Neil Clarky Clark, hello, 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 hello to you too as well. Good luck to Simon Hughes from Josh Selway Racing. And good luck to everyone at my old team, iTech Racing. Look like they're going to be pretty busy, you know, as well. But uh, we'll see how that one gets on. Right, where am I going? I was uh, in the throes of getting this done. So where did I get to? 16th place. <laughs> that isn't right. Kevin Bird in 14th. Oh, I missed one, haven't I? 241. 20. See, this is this this works, doesn't it? Entering in my data live on air. I'm a maverick. I'm a maverick. That's what I am. Um, I've been called worse, so it's fine. But uh, cars, it's amazing field for the hot hatches are down there, just getting themselves sort of uh, digged into their their positions down there, ready to be unleashed onto the circuit. And uh, they uh, will be released. What are we at? five two so in four minutes they'll be released onto the circuit nine minutes and it'll be the green flag lap uh <laughs> chris mater hill hello mate can't be a bit of dorsey on a monday a bit a bit of bully something like that is it i don't know i don't know <laughs> <laughs> thanks mate lovely to to see that you've joined us right where did i get to i got to number 11 good to see that jamie sturges is back here in the gts this is their their grid that i'm just quickly uh feeling it feeling it feeling in filling in uh, Jazz Sapra, good to see he's back. 14. forty. Oh, and I can see that uh, my fellow commentator is just beeped in. Uh, Kevin's on the stream at the minute. I'm going to add him in. Hello, gents. Can you hear me? Hello, Chris. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Absolutely, mate. Absolutely oh, perfect. perfect and spot on. Uh, oh, how um, are you? I'm sure that was yeah. a stressful start for you, but you're there in time, mate. <laughs> I am. Plenty of time. Look, it's another eight or nine minutes to go, so we're, we're all good. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's, I was soaking up the rays down here, actually. I mean, on, on my own down here on the bank at Old Paddock. And, uh, yeah, the sun's been out. It's clouded over a bit now, though, but uh, it looks good. Looks good for a good day's racing here at Coombe, doesn't it, Chris? With, uh, what, ten races to come today, so should be a good one. It really is, and some uh, both bumper and exciting grids out there as well, with some of them looking a little bit different to what we might expect to see of them. Yeah, um, I was just trying to catch up on uh, on all of those times from this morning. It should be a, a good days, uh, good days racing. I mean, Formula Ford have got Luke Cooper on pole, haven't we? Of course, but uh, uh, Felix yeah, Fisher I... a couple of rows further back. Yeah, and in fact, I think I saw he stopped out on circuit. Yeah, well, there was a car that was stopped, and we were trying to work out if it was his, and then we realised that it probably was when we saw that it only did i think seven or eight laps whereas most of the others had done 11 or 12 laps or something like that so hopefully felix will be uh, good to go this afternoon because that's the sort of main battle isn't it in the uh, in the formula fords uh really luke's is. luke's got the advantage in the championship by what about eight or nine points in it at this stage uh but big grids elsewhere um notably the hot hatches they've got a tremendous entry haven't they look forward to seeing those shortly and the uh and the gts and the saloons both just under 20 i think but uh but pretty solid numbers so uh so good to see those it really is so uh kevin's over there at the minute which means we've got no footage just yet 
Um, <laughs> is that right? He's, he's heading out now. Hopefully he's heading uh, yeah. this way. So we've got no uh, camera in the stream to, to show, but he's going to come charging over, hopefully. Yeah, he's, he's, he's charged down. He's uh, opening, the, opening the back of his van again. What's he going to do now? Oh, moving things around, looking for something. Hopefully, it's uh, it's what we need to get you back, uh, get the get the cameras back up, up and running again. Because otherwise, you just have to look at us all day, and that's not what you want. No, exactly right. I mean, I shall probably be able to flick mine round to sort of show the uh, the the the, uh, the start finish straight. But uh, I know we've got uh, Greg, uh, Kevin's son, downstairs already to to sort of flick through the cameras. So instead of it just being the multi camera, we'll have uh, a whole lot more. But sadly, it's not one of the, uh, the the things in the stream at the minute. So I can't share that with you. But hopefully, we will be able to soon. I will actually flick it round right now just to show. Uh, that the cars are making their way out onto the grid. And at that note, I'm going to take you through this grid for the hot hatches, and it will take me a while to get through it. So on the front row, pole position goes to 191, Gary Preble. Alongside him, 881, Sam Stride. Second row, 15, Sean Govard. And 40, Adrian Slade, the 2018 uh, Saloons champion. So he's going to be out there in the hot hatches. Third row, 169. Oh, I'll just... Uh, I'll just quickly uh, mute. I'm going to mute. Uh, muted Ian <laughs> for a second. So Ian's muted. Bless him. Um, 169, William Oakley and 47, Tony Cooper on the third row. Fourth row, 14, Nick Gwinnett and 25, Nathan Nichols. Row 5, 211, Chris Southcott and 21, Joe Dorrington. Sixth row, 89, Ross Parker and 81, Tim Adams. Row 7, 34, Will Self and 69, Stephen Jensen. Great job again by 119 Darren Duffield on the eighth row with Nick Adams, number eight, alongside him. Row nine is nine, Mike Wyatt and 12, Lee Waterman. Tenth row, 117 Lewis Clark and four, Adam Perrett. Row 11, 24, Sophie Morgan, 155, Ryan Cook, local to me uh, in that mini, uh, Swindon resident as well. Twelfth row, 987 Mark Pope and his uh, four, Puma and 55, Graham Cox. Thirteenth row, 68, Nick Mizzen, 95, Paul Dickinson. 79, James Camphor and 113, Sean Deacon on the 14th row. 15th row is 74, Michael Bland in his Peugeot 306. And 39, James Blake out in this, in his original MGZR. 16th row is, uh, or was due to be, 84, Steve Bracegird. Or no, that mini isn't out there, sadly. 53, Paul Bird. 17th row, 23, Matthew Barrington. 76, Dean Clayton. And on the 18th and final row, 71 Simon Hughes and 265 Gary Franks. So uh, I'm going to unmute uh, Mr. Salmon again there. I just flicked that on because you, uh, Kevin was there sort of uh, rabbit away to, wasn't he? <laughs> he, he, was having, he was having a crisis. He'd lost his keys, but he's found them again now. And he's now hurtling back past the commentary box in your direction. So uh, that's, good. So that's good news. Yeah, but, uh, but no. Yeah, we, we're going to be having the green flag, I think, within the next sort of three minutes uh, for these guys to, to get the action underway. And as I say, sadly, there's a chance we might miss the very start of this um, where we don't have the cameras uh, ready to, to be able to go. But they'll he'll be doing his best to get that one sorted. Let me just have a look because we still had uh, we've had a few more messages come in. Um, Sarah Bland, good luck, Daddy, from Jaden and Owen. Wish we could be there to watch you. Hopefully, we'll bring it to you uh, very shortly. Uh, Tabby uh, Govard, good luck, Dad. He certainly is, uh, is is looking very strong out there as it stands at the moment. What did I say? He's uh, he's third on the grid. In fact, you can see him down there on the second row, the furthest away, the nearest on that second row is Slady. 30-second board, so we're actually going to be going early. So, yeah, we are going to uh, miss the, uh, the very start of this race, but I'll bring you as much as I can with my webcam. Uh, Mike Bland, good luck, Daddy. Yep, sorry, we got that one. Uh, Marie Furby, good luck, Uncle Mike, from Leon and Daniel. And uh, Emma Abbey, good luck, Mike Bland, from Lauren and Sophie. Hey, it's the, it's the Mike Bland show. Oh, look at this. My mum's watching as well. Good luck, Chris. That's quite good. Quite a plus with that, chuff with that. Deborah Humphrey, one advantage of not being able to spectate is hubby being able to call you and ask to bring spare parts to the circuits. Hopefully I can drop off and get back to watch the live coverage. You're an absolute star. Off they go on their green flag lap then. Don't panic. We've still uh, 
got this uh, this lap to go, and it will be a 20-lap race for uh, this, the uh, EBC Breaks Hot Hatch Challenge Series. Chris Mason's downstairs. Good afternoon, everyone uh, from us all in the medical center. Hi, guys. Great to uh, thank you for all your work. Go, Dad, from Tabby. Chris Dennis. Hi, guys. You're looking good. Looking forward to some good racing. And uh, Dave Nixon, good luck, Ross Parker. Martin Hillier, good luck, Adrian Slade. Have a good race. And uh, as Ian, <laughs> Ian runs back just to get the door shut. It'd be too loud otherwise. Go Will Self from uh, all at J Day Engineering and uh, Amelia De Claudio saying, come on, Sean Govard. Here we go, says Jonan. Bill Colgate, good luck, Bryce Aaron from Jagulandra Rover uh, Annapolis. I presume that's stateside because I know Bryce Aaron is an American driver. Good luck, Mike Bland. Really does have a fan club out there, doesn't he? So uh, what I shall do is that uh, I'll put that up as the uh, the main camera at the moment until we get something and uh, you'll be able to see them coming through. So apologies, this is just a, uh, a webcam for us at the moment that normally would be looking back at my ugly mug, but you're, you're, you're saved of that for now. We'll have this. They're, they're off round your neck of the woods, are they? Ian, or have they already gone past? They are halfway past me at the moment. Yeah, two-thirds of the field probably have gone past me. The leading cars just exiting Bobby's now, heading back up in, in your direction. But what a great field this is for the uh, Hot Hat Series. What do we have? 36 of them qualifying. Obviously, Gary Preble on pole by a reasonably convincing margin. Let's see uh, if um, the likes of Sam Stride and Sean Goford can take the fight. Jim. Of course, Gary had some success at Silverstone last weekend in the 750 Motor Club hot hatches, uh, where he's also been doing some racing uh, this season as well. And the good news is we do now have the uh, the footage. So as I say, apologies that that is, uh, is a little bit blocky as it stands at the moment. I think it varies between the cameras around the, uh, the, the circuit from memory. Um, if, see, there you go. See, look, the start finish straight one. That is a, a very good uh, camera angle for us. So we are still on the audio and I can uh, easily bring us back in again by uh, changing to that. But uh, that then means we, we can have a little look at Ian. <laughs> That was a stitch up, wasn't go. it, Ian? <laughs> that's, a, that, that, that's a better angle. <laughs> it is, isn't it? So that is me, as you as you guessed, is that I'm overlooking the start, finish straight. Ian, you're at the far side. You can see them come barreling from quarry down towards you and, and away again, can't you? Yeah, down down the farm straight into the S's. Throw a pallet, great place to watch. And then uh, off through Hammer down, down towards Tower and catch them just as they head into Bobby's as well. Uh, and then they'll get back into your site. So between us, we've got it all covered. And it looks like that grid's nearly formed up now, Chris. It's nearly there. We've just got the last few cars making their way onto the uh, the back. And I'm realising, looking at the picture, uh, certainly here, we've got zero delay. So that's good. You guys might at the, uh, the home stream. But uh, get ready. It's going to be 20 minutes of fantastic entertainment here. Green flag waves at the back. You can see the green flag waving on the infield there. So that means five-second board has been given. We wait for the lights to start making their way up through the five-light count. One light, two lights. On goes the third. Up go the engine notes. The fifth light is on. Off go the lights and off go the field. And it's a great start, certainly from the left of the field. Sean Govert has got Tony Cooper's trying to barrel his way through. And he kind of got pinballed between Adrian Slade. And Sean Govert a little bit there, but up the, the uh, Avon rise they go. And I'm trying to work out. I think Sam Strides actually got the nod there as he makes his way up in towards Quarry Corner. It is the green flashes that tell us that that is Sam Stride. But Gary Preble's trying to come back at him and he's done it. Yeah, around the outside there at Quarry Corner. He didn't make the best of start there. starts there, did Gary Preble. But he's back out in front now as they head down into the S's for the first time he's already got ooh, four or five car lengths lead over in second place then uh sam stride there at the moment third is the number 40 car which is that of adrian slade and then it looks like it's tony cooper in the gray car with the yellow wheels in fourth position but there on your screen as they head down towards tower a good example of the lead that uh, gary Pavel already has he was nearly two seconds faster than anybody else in qualifying and is set off like he means it in the race as well, Chris. 
Yeah, as you say, it took him a moment, didn't it? But uh, uh, order has, uh, has been restored. Now, I'm looking behind Sam Stride in the uh, the white and green Honda Civic 881. Oh, big lock up there as he comes in towards camp. And it is the uh, the Peugeot Brigade behind him, being led by 40 Adrian Slade, Tony Cooper. Sean Govard under pressure from Big Nathan, Nathan Nichols. is now trying to look up the inside of Sean Govard. And it looks like he's made that move. And I think that Tony Cooper in the silver 47 Peugeot 106 was a little bit steady out there, but he got it cranked back up again. It's a great fight between the Peugeots back there as well. Yeah, and, and that's the Saxo, sorry, of course. <laughs> indeed. Uh, and that's for Class B, of course. We've got, uh, and obviously, Sean Gove is actually a Class C driver. It's the Class A car out in front of Gary Preble as they come down towards me. Close battle there, going through Quarry by the looks of it. We've got one car uh, looking rather smoky on the exit of Quarry Corner. Try and pick up who that is in a moment. But for second place, it's actually the Peugeot of Adrian Slade that is taking the fight now to Sam Stride as they go down towards Tower Corner turning their way through the right hand as they go and up towards Bobby's. So it's Slade ahead of Cooper, who's in fourth position, Sean Govard fifth, Nathan Nichols sixth, and uh, Nick Gwinnett, who went well last time out in the Clio, he's seventh. Yeah, I remember that. Nick nearly got our driver of the day. He performed so well. He was certainly one of the uh, the shortlisted drivers. There goes Gary Preble across the line to uh, complete his second lap in complete control. Sam Stride not under pressure anymore from Slady, who just runs a little bit wide. Did the white Peugeot number 40 of Adrian Slade, but just bounced across the gas. He's now got Tony Cooper, the silver 47 Peugeot 106, right with him. And then it is Sean Govard's managed to uh, fend off Nathan Nichols for now, but that Saxo, as long as there's no issue, I'm just watching. Keep an eye on that Saxo, actually, because I think he's just been passed by Gwinnett. OK, have a look at that. Yes, he was sitting ahead at the start of the lap, according to the screens, but that might have changed around at Quarry Corner. So, Gary Preble leading away. Oh, and Sam Stride's got problems. Sam Stride pulling off on the exit of the S's, so he's going into retirement. That means it's number 40, Adrian Slade, now up in second place, 47. Uh, Tony Cooper third, then you've got Sean Govard fourth, and then I think it was still Nichols in fifth place as they uh, came past me as it now is fifth place. We need to watch out as well in this race for the battle in, between the minis in class E. Stephen Jensen leading that class at the moment. We'll try and pick that up on screen at some point, but uh, he was expecting a much harder fight today from Darren Duffield. Yeah, what a shame that is for Sam Stride. He was late to the uh, to the grid as well. And uh, it's really sort of shaken things up back here because I'm just trying to pause and make sure the uh, the number 14, Nick Gwinnett, is fighting with Will Self just behind Sean Govard. So that means that Nathan Nichols, yeah, he's he's down to uh, eighth position now. And Chris South got 2-1-1. Now, that's a car we hadn't mentioned yet. So something's <laughs> not quite right with that car, is it? He's normally right at the front. No, absolutely right. Well, he... he's just he's just fought, got past Nathan Nichols, I see, into quarry. So he's coming back. Yeah, he's started ninth on the grid, didn't he? So, uh, yeah, he must have dropped down on lap one and uh, be fighting back through the field. Sam Stride and Thomas, of course, he had engine issues at the last meeting, didn't he? So uh, I wonder if it's a recurrence of those. So Slade, Cooper, Govard, then it's Gwinnett in fifth, actually. Oh, what a big fire. Uh, the 169 car, I'm afraid, is on fire down here with me. And that's William Oakley. It seems to have extinguished itself quite quickly as he's gone over the grass. But Nick about to bail out of the car. The marshal running towards the car with the fire extinguishers pulled up just before hammer down on the left-hand side of the circuit. So a huge flash of flame that came out of the side of William Oakley's car there, of, uh, of the 169 car. Uh, and, yeah, William out of the car, over the barriers, OK. But uh, the car slightly barbecued, I suspect. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, probably sounds like the best way to describe it, sadly, isn't it? What a shame. William Oakley was going well, and sadly, it was a DNF for the opening race at the Hot Hatches for him last time as well. Heading up in towards Quarry uh, already, Gary Preble's scampered off, but Slade is under massive pressure now from the 47 Tony Cooper. You'll see them coming towards you now, Ian. Yeah, they are. They're turning their way through. Well, they're out of Quarry down towards the S's already, and they've got... Uh... I think Nick Gwinnett now behind them because Nick in the Clio is ahead of Sean Govard in the Peugeot. So that's been a change. And then you've got the uh, the next Peugeot behind him, which is the 211 car of, uh, of Chris Southcott, red car. And they're heading towards Tower Corner now. Yellow flags down here, of course, because we've got this 
car off on the side of the circuit. Meanwhile, the Class E leader, Stephen Jensen, coming past me as well. And he's got, what, I think two cars between himself and, and Darren Duffield, who had the Class win last time out when uh, I think Stephen had turbo boost issues. Well, Gary Preble crosses the line to complete his fifth lap with uh, just over 13 and a half minutes remaining. Don't forget, you can stay tuned to the timings and everything else as well at tsl-timing.com and then navigate to uh, the Castle Coombe event and you can see all the timing at the same time as all of this. But uh, whilst our leader's already exiting Quarry Corner, heading up in towards Quarry is now a three-car fight. Last time round, it was Adrian Slade, number 40, in the white Peugeot with the silver 47 of Tony Cooper. But now it's the red 14 of Nick Gwinnett all over the back of them. Yeah, Nick's doing a great job here in that Class F car. Uh, quite a few cars in Class F this season. That's really been a boost to the Hot Hatch series this year. And Nick uh, really taking the fight to some of the theoretically more powerful machinery here and round he goes old paddock he's only about two car lengths behind tony cooper now nothing you can do here of course so we still have the yellow flags double wave jellos at uh, at the post on the inside of the circuit so no change there it's still very close indeed now tony cooper trying to fight ahead of adrian slade there into bobby's but he can't quite make that work i don't think and that's allowed Gwinnett in the clear to get right on the boot of the second of the peugeots as well chris he is. He's there glued to him. Last time round, he got past Sean Govert, of course, in their 15 uh, car, the uh, the other Peugeot 106 GTI. He's now having uh, a great fight lining up with uh, Will South. To, uh, sorry, Chris South got 2 one, one. I need to update my notes because that red car is not what I normally am used to seeing uh, him in. So uh, he is uh, looking very racing, that car indeed. So he's obviously had to get used to that one, Ian. Yep. Meanwhile, there's some backmarker Lapry going on up at Old Paddock, and it involves the second place scrap. They get past one of the slower cars there as uh, Gary Preble comes flying past me with those very bright headlamps on his car. He's just going past the slow number four, Adam Perrett, clear 172, which I think must have a problem. And we've had a change here because Adrian Slade has dropped back down to fourth place now. Tony Cooper up to second, and uh, Nick Gwinnett in the clear up into third place. So I think possibly as they were lapping a slower car there. Uh, Tony Cooper, sorry, Adrian Slade has lost out and he's dropped back to fourth place. Meanwhile, the two mini class leaders, that's the class E battle, together now as they come past me with only about three car lengths between Stephen Jensen and Darren Duffield and they're in ninth and tenth overall. Well, it looks like someone's just pulling off there at uh, at Bobby's, the she second of the chicanes. I it's think that's the Parrot um, Parrot uh, clear. Yes. Yes, yes, it is. Number four. You see that now as he comes through. This five-car train comes across the line. Tony Cooper from Gwinnett from Adrian Slade trying to come back at them now. He got compromised, but he's coming back. Sean Govard right with them. And, of course, we've got uh, Chris Southcott in that red two-on-one car. We've got Mark Pope stopped in that orange Ford Puma just halfway up the uh, uh, Avon Rise as well. But that five-car train looks incredible heading towards you, Ian. Yeah, here it comes. It's uh, looking very good indeed. I think you've got uh, Adrian Slade keen to try and fight back. This is a great five-car battle for, for second place. It's just a bit of a shame, really, that Gary Preble's so far up in front, about 10 seconds ahead of the rest now. So you've got Chris Southcott now in the 205 at the back of this group, which includes three 106s. It includes the Clio as well of Nick Gwinnett two litre car of course and Govard there makes up a well no he defends off um Southcott that's what happens as they go through Bobby so uh, that's Govard holding on to fourth place yeah it looked place, like sorry. he yeah it looked like he potentially lost it and then got it back again there didn't it for Sean yeah. Govard so he's involved in a great fight there here they come down towards us they're about to put a lap on the number 23 car of Matthew Barrington and that white Renault Clio sticking to the left-hand side. But as they go towards Folly, that's a very fast part. They're all diving to the inside. Those three have kind of broken away from Sean Govard and uh, Chris Southcott again. But I suppose that was such a heavy fight. It's probably not surprising. But those three in particular are fanning out up over Avon Rise. And it's the red car in the middle. Now, there's a car that's pulling off at the S's as well. It's... Uh got its bonnet up in front of the windscreen so obviously a bonnet pin has come loose there or something i can't see which that car is and like an idiot i forgot my binoculars today so i can't even look through those but maybe the the, the uh, tv footage the camera footage will pick it up in a moment no change in the order here really though uh, as they come past me 
Oh, for that, actually, I tell a lie. Uh, Slade's got back ahead of Gwynnett, hasn't he? So that must have happened up at Quarry Corner. So Slade now back up to third place and chasing after Cooper for what is the uh, for the Class B lead. They're heading through through Bobby's there. Just a fabulous fight between these guys. And it, you could see that Adrian Slade was trying to find a, a, a way to uh, to challenge Gwynnett in the uh, the red uh, Renault Clio, the Clio at the back of this trio now. The Clio at the back of the trio. There you go. That was almost poetic, that one. But Adrian Slade crosses the line, second on the road, Class B lead, of course. Don't forget, Gwyneth is Class F. Sean Govard, number 15, in fifth place, keeping Safgot behind. Safgot's Class A. Class C leader is Sean Govard. It's, it's like it's multiple races within one, isn't it? Absolutely right. Of course, we've got all the different Slade's classes as well. Slade's done it. He's got past Cooper. Oh, uh, yes, he has indeed. He has as they head down the farm straight. Cooper's going to be on the inside line. Can he try and get it back now? He's too far back there as they came into the S's that time. So it's Slade back up to second place. Has he got a little bit of damage on the front of the car? No, nope, no, I don't think he has. I think that's just my eyes. So Slade now ahead of Cooper back into the Class B lead. Then you've got Nick Gwinnett in the Class F Clio. Then a little bit further back, you've got our Class C lead to Sean Govard. You've got uh, Chris Southcott as well. It's Joe Dorrington, 7th, Nathan Nichols, 8th, Stephen Jensen, ninth, and Duffield, 10th. And that's changed. That's changed. The Class E lead has changed around because the driver with the novice cross on the back of his car, Darren Duffield, has now got through ahead of the very much more experienced former Formula Ford uh, front runner, Stephen Jensen now. So that is the first time Duffield has been ahead of Jensen on merit this season. Uh, and fair play. You can even look at the fastest lap times. 117.2 for Duffield, 117.6 for Jensen. So Duffield has come on very, very strong. And I think he's got some interested parties that we're going to be watching this. For so Darren Duffield coming down towards Camp Corner now is doing an incredible job there. Stephen Jensen, I don't think, has given up. And they've just got the 89 car for Ross Parker. And he's due to him Civic racing this year. And well done to the slip and grip boss there. It's that he is actually about to challenge those two minis, you know. <coughs> yeah, looks like it. So we'll uh, we'll pick up on that in a second. Just worth noting that Gary Paul's done a best lap of a woman at 12.931. That's the fastest hot hatch lap of the season so far. Chris Southcourt did a 113.5 at the last meeting at the beginning of the month. So we've got the scrap between uh, Joe Dorrington, 21, and Nathan Nichols, 25, has just come past me. He's in the Saxo. But we've got the two mini leaders now through Old Paddock. And yes, you're absolutely right. The Ross Parker car, the little uh, early model Honda Civic, right behind them as well. Jensen trying to get back ahead, though, of Duffield. This time he looks to the left-hand side as they go down towards Tower Corner. That's going to be the outside line. He tries to go all the way around the outside there. But he can't quite do it. So Duffield holds on. But it's very much a three-way fight for ninth, 10th and 11th places. I've got to applaud Greg that's doing a wonderful job downstairs in the belly of this control building. He's obviously listening in to us. And he heard you getting excited about that. And he suddenly flicked towards the battle for the minis. And we saw it. They're coming down towards Camp Corner now. And it is still Darren Duffield that just about has the nod in that fight. And the Zebra 69 car in the middle of the sandwich that Ross Parker, the back part of it. But equally, I thought that Tony Cooper was starting to come back at Adrian Slade for that second and third place fight as well. Yeah, well, they are just passing my commentary box window now. So you've got Slade, Cooper and Gwinnett. They're covered by less than a second, those three cars, I would suggest. Uh, Chris Southcott trying to get past some of the back markers as he continues his pursuit, pursuit of Sean Gover. But, but yes, this battle for the minis, again, it's heading into the S's this time. It's still Duffield ahead of Jensen. And Stephen was saying to me this morning, he was really expecting a much tougher race uh, this time. It's been a, a little bit too easy so far this year, apart from those boost issues he had at the previous meeting. And he's really not able on this occasion to do too much about Darren Duffield. It just sort of follows him through Tower Corner on this occasion. There's, what, four and a half minutes or so to go in this race. So probably about three laps, maybe four laps at the end of this one. Yeah, and uh, just see the, uh, the second, third, fourth place battle going past us. And Adrian Slade, number 40, has managed to pull away from 47 Tony Cooper this time round. Tony Cooper's back under pressure from the red, number 14, Renault Clio. Uh, in fact, you can see up round Quarry there, it's completely changed the dynamic again. The back marker's having something to do. It's like the proverbial piece of elastic between these three, isn't it? Ian? It really is, yes. And there's back markers, well, going to be 
lapping them for some time to come, but it's really nose to tail now as they come through Old Paddock. Oh, and that's a big delay there for the 47 car of Cooper getting stuck behind the 55, which is the uh, Graham Cox Clio there. So he has been delayed a little bit uh, that time. is through now, but uh, that's given Adrian Slade four or five car lengths over Teddy Cooper and Nick Gwinnett, who are still in third and fourth place. We've lost uh, Stephen Jensen from there, and that is Transponder's player now. Uh, I think it's his Transponder, because he's still there, but he has now fallen behind Ross Parker. So uh, he has okay. lost a place, but he is still there on circuit. OK, so hopefully that will correct and TSL will feed him in as the second, third, fourth place fight is just making its way through past more backmarkers. This is enabling Sean Gover, number 15, to start closing in on these guys as well. They're making their way up, even rising towards Quarry Corner with uh, just over three minutes left to go in this race. Gary Preble has just screamed away on his own. He's now 11.8 seconds clear. If anything, I would suggest he's backed that off a little. Oh, he's backed it off a lot, hasn't he? He has, yeah. One sixteens compared to a high one twelve in the early part, but he's doing Ooh. more than what he needs. You're coming towards you. I see Cooper's under pressure. Yeah, he is, and he's got uh, the Gwinnett Red Clear all over the back of him as they come through Old Paddock this time. That's what you're seeing on your screen at the moment. Heading now down towards Hammerdown and Tower Corner. Can Gwinnett in the Clear in different classes, of course. Uh, but nevertheless, they're having a great old battle on track. Can't do anything about him at Tower, so no change there. And that battle is just letting uh, Adrian Slow just get away ever so slightly. Uh, he's about three quarters of a second ahead of Coop at the moment, but 12 seconds behind Gary Preble. Yeah, for now. <laughs> Slady's already are back under pressure as they come down towards us. Gary Preble's completed 14 laps. Black and white flag went out for the 24 car, which is Sophie Morgan in a min, uh, Minitro Motorsport and DH Alley Works Honda Civic. So track limits, I would imagine, there. But Tony Cooper under massive pressure now from Gwinnett in that red Renault Clear. Going up Avon Rise, looking one way, looking the next. Not quite able to wait, find a way through yet, but there's still more backfires to try and get through as uh, Adrian Slade has managed to pick his way through a little bit cleaner through that one. So it's an uh, interesting one. Certainly has. Heading down towards the S's once more. Gwinnett up alongside. That was one of the back markers in a Fiesta, wasn't it? Uh, that he's uh, just clipped a sort of similar coloured car to that of Tony Cooper. Now, Adrian Slade here is being held up a little bit by the number 74 car. That's uh, Michael Bland. We're talking about his appearance off on the Club Racing UK uh, show the other day i think uh, a little bit earlier on well he's just been lapped by that battle for second third and fourth and cooper now is right back on the tail of adrian slade as they go into bobby's this time that's where the fight is then as they go through the left and then sweep out onto the right hander and they'll be back into your sight any moment chris yeah gary preble goes on to start his final lap absolute pure uh, domination chris here. Chris yep. Dillon Duffield is retiring. The mini leader is oh, retiring. No. He's pulling off at Hammerdown. Oh, and we've got a big change. Adrian Slade, second place cars, just ran wide here at camp. He's managed to keep his foot in, but he's just lost both those places going on to this final lap. He's going to be devastated by that. Tony Cooper, 47, goes up into both second and, of course, the lead of Class B now. And, in fact, that unsettled him enough that he's under pressure from Gwinnett, but that's the Class F car. But coming towards you, Adrian Slade's going to kick himself for that mistake. Oh, he will by the sounds, but yes, he's not going to come back from that easy. He's too far behind those two. Yes, Duffield, the mini class leader, he's just pulled off with some kind of mechanical issue. Oh. Again, just over a lap from the end. He's parked right by the solar farms. He's got an unhealthy interest in solar panels, I think. But then Cooper going past me. Now, can he hold on to second place on the road here behind Gary Preble? Of course, the yellows at this part of the circuit now with Duffield off. Down towards Tower Corner, the back into green. And Cooper's still ahead there. And into Bobby's for the final time. He's got about three car lengths in front. But Gary Preble, I think, already heading towards the checkered flag. Uh, yeah, here he comes down. He's about to, to uh, he would nearly about to put a lap on Sophie Morgan, but not going to happen. Lights ablaze, but comes through, takes the checkered flag and a victory. Pure domination. But what about Tony Cooper? Down towards camp for the final time comes the silver 47 car. Second overall. He's going to be delighted with that one. Across the line, punches the air pursued very closely by Nick Gwinnett, number 14, the red Renault Clio. And uh, it does mean, well, Adrian Slade is not showing on the screen, but he's definitely there. Adrian Slade. Ah, and we've got up into smoke has gone. I think that's. Uh, oh, I can see that. 21. From here. 
Yeah, it's the 21 car that's... Joe uh, Dummington, up, yeah. It is. Joe was fighting his way through. But there seems to be a glitch with Adrian Slade because he's not showing us up there. But I can assure you, he crossed the road in... Uh, it's showing him as 17th. That's definitely not where he was. Okay. And I know why that'll have been. That'll have been because he was on the grass um, and it missed him <laughs> probably across the timing beam. But he crossed the line in fourth. And so they're going to have to uh, uh, correct that. In fact, what does it show him as on the screen at the minute? 17th. He definitely mm. wasn't. No. No, he wasn't. Uh, just looking then, Stephen Jensen with the demise of Davin Duffield ha did get the Class E win for the minis in the end. Ninth place overall. And the next car in that class was uh, the Dickinson car, number 95. Um, Paul Dickinson in the Godano motorcycle training entered L53 down in 21st place. Yes. Well, wow. And uh, we've got sort of a slight challenge here with the Joe Dorrington. I think I'm trying to work out that he's tried to go down the pit lane. Yeah, he is. He stopped in the pit lane that went up in big smoke at the end here. And it means that none of these cars can actually uh, get off of the, uh, the circuit as it stands at the moment. So uh, we kind of need TSL to correct the timings in a second, and I'm sure it will do that. And Adrian Slade, number 40, will pop up into fourth. But that means that Tony Cooper, second overall, and wins Class B. So Gary Preble takes the victory in the 191 car. Second num uh, was number 47, Tony Cooper, gives him Class B honours. There we go. It has sorted it out now. Third place, number 14, and Class F winner, Nick Gwinnett. In fourth place, car number 42nd in Class B is Adrian Said. Uh, great job by Sean Govard. Fifth place in the number 15, Peugeot 106. And that gives him Class C victory. Sixth place, 2-1-1, Chris Southcott. Second in Class A. Seventh, number 25, Big Nath Nichols. In third place in Class B. Great return to the track there from number 89, Ross Parker. And uh, it gives him fourth place in Class B. Ninth is number 34, Will Self. That gives him a trophy, third place in Class A. 69, Stephen Jensen. I, I bet to some extent he's probably gutted for Darren Duffield, knowing the personality of uh, Stephen Jensen. But he does take the victory in, in the uh, mini class, class E in that 69 car. 11th and second in Class F goes to number eight, Nick Adams. Uh, I say Nick Adams. I'm just... Uh, Reading the wrong... Yeah, it is Nick Adams. I question myself then. The iTech racing car. Uh, 13th, number nine, is uh, the Wyatt car. That being Mike Wyatt. In uh, Where do I get? What 14th is uh, 117 Clark in the Ford Fiesta. 24, Morgan in the... Uh, Sophie Morgan in the uh, Honda Civic in 15th. 16th is at the moment showing 21, Joe Dorrington. But of course, that stricken car is not going to be there, sadly. Nathan... Uh, uh, sorry, uh, the 39, the MGZR of James Blake is uh, is in 17th place. 18th, number 74, Mike Bland. 19th, 53. Uh, great job there uh, from the, uh, the bright green Peugeot 106 of Paul Bird. Lewis Bird's dad. Uh, and Lewis will hopefully be back out at some point soon as well. They sorted it out on a track day, that car. So that would be good. 20th, number 68, Nick Mizzen. That gives him third in Class C. So Bird was second in Class C. Nick Mizzen. Uh, third in Class C. 21st, 95, Dickinson, as, uh, as Ian said, that's the runner-up in the mini-class. 22nd, number 55, Cox, 113, Deacon, 71, Hughes, 79, Camphor, and uh, then it says 119, Duffield, 12, Waterman. We lost Waterman at the end there as well. 23, Matthew Barrington in 28th, 29th, Clayton in 76, and then the final finisher in 30th, 265, Franks, Right, and I can see already that we've got uh, up there, as I just try to find, where's my mouse gone? There it is. I'm going to bring in, add, add to the, the stream, stream. Josh, Josh Barrett, Barrett, and I'm going to put you up to the full stream. Oh, no, we won't. We'll get, it's only Gary there. We'll cancel that. <laughs> well done, mate. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Chris. Well done, Gary. Another well, no, third win in just over a week in this Civic. How, how was that race for you? Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, I mean, Sam got the got the jump on me on the start. Um, I, I, I set out what I wanted to come here to try and um, 
tackle the lap record, which is which is what my main task was. And uh, hopefully, I think I've just pipped it. I think I've just you, achieved it. In so. one minute, twelve point nine. Yeah, I think that might have just pipped it. <laughs> so yeah, that, that'll do for me. Um, other than that, I just backed it off and controlled the race. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, a fairly new car to you. How, how have you found adapting to it? Yeah, oh, we we got rid of the two hundred five uh, mid season last year and um, jumped into the Honda, and it was. Uh, Somewhat quite a different car to begin with, um, but um, over the period, over the winter, uh, Frank Anderson built us another engine, and um, it's not the most powerful one out there, but it's it's solid. It's it's a little screamer, and it's it's proven its reliability. So uh, yeah, thanks very much to Frank. He's uh, been absolutely brilliant and uh, testament to his work there. And the pace of the car isn't actually that much lower than the saloons either, is it? It's not, no. I mean, we, we tried a different tyre for the saloons um, and I was actually lapping slower in the lay-on with over double the horsepower, <laughs> uh, which is absolutely bonkers um, to think that, you know, a car of like 250 horsepower can be lapping quicker. But just shows it's handling, you know, power to weight and handling is everything. And obviously, you know the circuit very well. So Just a little bit. It, do you have to, uh, obviously, you say about adapting to the two cars. You're racing, obviously, both on the same day. Is that, does it take a little while to get your head around that? Uh, not too bad. Um, as I said, I mean, I'm quite fresh from driving the Honda. I was literally out in it last yeah. weekend at Silverstone. So I've been used to driving the Honda. Um, but, yeah, I mean, other than braking a lot earlier in the lay-on, because, obviously, you carry yeah. a lot more straight-line speed. Um, other than that, yeah, it's just it's just the the Honda's just phenomenal through the corners. It's it's just absolutely on rails, and that's that's what uh, you know that's 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 what gets the lap times for sure. Well done, and I'm sure we'll speak to you again okay. later on. Thanks very much. Cheers, Chris. Um, if we get, yeah, Tony, cheers, mate. get Tony in over now. Tony Cooper took second place in uh, his Peugeot. Go, go, go. <laughs> well done, Tony. I, um, a really hectic race. That was a... the busiest race I've ever had at Coombe ever <laughs> and i didn't expect to be where i was to be fair um yeah it's brilliant um it's a lot of fast boys out adrian's come to join us yeah sean's going really well they had a brilliant start managed to get between the two of them they closed in so there is a bit of damage on adrian's right. car i'm sorry adrian nothing was meant by it and the battle commenced and <laughs> it went my way today but a really respectful bunch of guys to race with there was you know, absolute respect for each other but it was yeah 100 percent all the time and obviously, as well as battling amongst yourself, you have to work your way through the traffic. Any issues there? No, I think, if anything, it played into my favour. So whoever I was chasing got caught up. I was managing to keep the faster line and, and carry that through. So I think that played in my advantage, especially chasing Adrian down. And I think uh, Nick behind me, I think it caused him problems always. He would have gone by. So I couldn't have asked for more, to be fair. Now you're looking forward to the race later on today? No, I've got no energy left. <laughs> I'm not, no. <laughs> I'll let you go and recover then. Well done. And if we get Nick over next, Nick Winnett, who took third place in the uh, Renault Clio. Hello. Nick, you were involved in that battle with Tony and the other guys as well. Enjoy that. Yeah, just waiting. <laughs> waiting. They, uh, just a couple of places, but it was just too quick to make lunges at that speed, so I just sat there and just waited, really. But it was fun. You've raced in other uh, championships before, but now I think doing a couple of meetings here at Coombe. How do you enjoy it? It's nice. <laughs> 20 minutes is too long. <laughs> Drop them down to 15. <laughs> the last five minutes kills. Yeah, yeah. and, and that, I guess that's when the race can be won if you're getting worn out at that point. Of the well, yeah, the, I think the two little 106s, one of them went off pushing it a bit hard. Tires have started to go. It's just hard work. I'd like to see the lap times, but it was... um. I don't think there's much between us, most of it. And I'm looking forward to another battle later. Well, I'll start in fourth, so yeah, I'll be away from him, hopefully. <laughs> well, <Get> well, away. <laughs> well done. Thank you very much. So that was our third place for Nick Gwinnett, second Tony Cooper, and the race winner, Gary Preble. So great to hear them over there, Chris, after a great battle in that race. You muted, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Thank you. That wasn't even this this time. That was because uh, Steve Weston came to talk about it. I was going to say, Josh, thank you for that. And I was, about, I was saying is that from second backwards, Josh, they, they sounded absolutely exhausted. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, as soon as Tony got out of the car, he said, has anybody got any water? <laughs> I mean, it was a tight fight. I mean, Ian, for both of us at either side, it was just incredibly tight fighting. And I'm sure Adrian Slade is kicking himself for that one. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, absolutely. He got himself back up into second place, hadn't he? After dropping down to fourth, he was back up there again. And that mistake, what, just over a lap from the end, that uh, that, that really cost him, didn't it, in the end, which was uh, a, a real shame. And also, I think, disappointed will be Darren Duffield, as we're saying in the minis. Another mini driver that will be disappointed as well, by the way, the car with the bonnet that flew, was that, that was oh, Ryan no. Cook in the 155 car. So, yeah, he was the car that pulled off at the Etsy's. So, uh, a couple of DNFs in the minis, unfortunately. And it is really sad, that bonnet, because I got a photo from his dad, uh, Bob uh, Cook, last night, is that that is the uh, Benjamin Smile, a local charity um, for a, a, a young young boy that has been born blind uh, with some, some brain damage and epilepsy and, and things like that. And yet he's still got this wonderful, wonderful smile. And they're trying to raise money to sort of give him the sensory things that he needs to get the most. And you've got signatures and all sorts over that bonnet that flew up. So it's a real shame that that happened. Yeah, absolutely. Right, Josh, thank you very much for the interviews, mate. We'll see you after the next race. See you then. So that's uh, that's Josh down there. Apologies, I know there's a little bit of feedback because he's got a speaker, doesn't he, to listen to us. But, wow, I mean, what a way to open the activity mm. to, today. I mean, that was electric. All, it's too much for us to even keep up with up and down. And I've got to say, by the way, so many of you are, are, are making comments. And Greg, which is Kev's son, is downstairs doing the cameras, switching it around. And that was the first time he's done it. And he, he did a fabulous job, including uh, listening to us, obviously, I would assume, to hear that we were getting excited about that. Uh, the, 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 the mini fight was at the class E, isn't it? The, yeah. the minis. Um, and suddenly he's following that. So kudos to Kev there. Awesome, uh, awesome job there. No, that was really good. That's really added something, hasn't it? Since, uh, certainly since I was last here. So that's, uh, that's looking really good. And hopefully we can keep that up all day. Yeah, the problem was is that it was down to me to try to do that. But as you know, Ian, we've got so much to try and do in here, haven't we? The amount of times I forgot that I was still on folly while I'm talking about quarry. Multitasking is, is, is not the most straightforward thing, is it? <laughs> it really, really, really isn't. Give me a gin and I can multitask, but we're not allowed it up here, I don't think. So there we go. Um, so that was nice that Scott Woodwiss uh, made the comment saying, uh, all right, Dorsey and Co, love the podium interview set up. Enjoying watching some top club race on a bank holiday Monday. Keep up the great work, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, hence, I say Mike Cotton actually said, uh, well done to, or congrats to the camera operator. Uh, agreed. Uh, Linda Preble says, congratulations, Gary. Uh, Emma's Sean Hughes, 24th epic race. Absolutely. Uh, Sean Hughes in the Honda Civic. That gives him fifth in class C as well there, uh, in fact. Keith Govard, well done, Sean Dad. Uh, absolutely. I mean, that was a, a great class victory as well as a fight in amongst that at all, all stage. Uh, Mod Fix also saying uh, great coverage. Camera controller is doing brilliant. I agree. It just really is uh, wonderful what he's doing down there. Thank you, Greg. You're an absolute superstar, mate. Um, and don't panic about it. There's so much for us to catch up on. So don't don't go stressing down there, mate. I'm sure it's uh, it's kind of worrying. Thinking, well, which bit do I watch? You're doing brilliantly. That's that's all we can ask for as it stands at the moment. Um, there is going to be a very slight delay, by the way, Ian, because uh, the Dorrington car that expired has dumped oil all the way from Westway down. Well, that could be worse. It could be even further than Westway, couldn't it? But uh, That would it, not be pretty, would it? It would <laughs> Through not. Camp. Uh, yeah, I've seen a few oily circuits uh, so far this year. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that, that's just as well that he, he stopped it in the pit lane entrance, really, I think, that, uh, that there's... It's not a bigger slick all around the circuit. Yeah, we were a bit worried that there was going to be a problem uh, getting the cars into the pit lane, but they were able to get past no problem there, thankfully. So they're, they're, there's no problem there whatsoever. Um, uh, I meant to put up is that uh, Gary Coombs uh, made a comment saying, great live stream. Is there a way that spectators can support Coombe? Uh, in terms of physically, the answer is no at the moment, as you know, is that we can't have spectators here. Fingers crossed. Uh, who knows about finals day? I know we've got everything uh, crossed for that one. Not sure yet. If it's beyond that, uh, drop me a line. I'm not sure if that you've got anything in mind, uh, but uh, but let me know. Uh, oh, this is good. We've got uh, Zen Monkey Clothing. Awesome to be here. And that is uh, a great additional sponsor for Matt Hallam, who, of course, won the uh, the Young Driver uh, award thing that we had on last year. 
uh, in the Formula Fours. He's out in the Kevin Mills car, and he is uh, a, a great sponsor to be to the team. I want to find. I got to look that up actually. Zen Monkey Clothing. I'm loving that name, and I got to have a have a check out. We might find if you do, uh, you know, the, some of the corporate stuff with the uh, the Dilly Dilly for the Orange Army and and the Gin for Dorsey, all of that sort of thing. Uh, Mattia Ranieri says hi. Uh, uh, so yeah, Dan Powell saying hopefully we allow spectators in soon. Yeah, we we all hope that we have to wait and see. It's just logistically, it's a blooming nightmare. So whilst there is a uh, a slight delay on uh, on what is going on, I'm just very quickly going to run the odds test because many of you watching especially with the hot hatches that you've just watched there's a lot of people that do the track days and it is very much aimed at those that sort of think do you know what i'd quite like to to get into racing well have a watch of this this is how you get started in racing becoming a racing driver has never been easier with castle coon circuit book your odds novice driver's training course at the wiltshire venue today the easiest and quickest way into competitive on-track action Welcome to Castle Coombe. My name's Alan Cooper. I'm the, the Chief Driving Racing Instructor here at this circuit. We're here today to do the Novice Driver Training Course, often known as the ARDS course, which is the first grade to start off and get your racing driving license. So, no further ado, let's get on and show you what's involved. <music> So you've seen the format. Everyone here today passed their tests and now have their racing license. Who knows, the next time I see them could be as I commentate on them in front of the usual packed house of racing fans here at Castle Coombe Circuit. All you need to do to be next is to visit castlecoombecircuit.co.uk and select Become a Racing Driver under the Racing tab. Becoming a Racing Driver is easier than you think with Castle Coombe Circuit and Motorsport UK. So there you go. As easy as that. And I do apologise. Yes, I know that was my voice again. I am a voiceover artist as well. So get in touch if you, uh, your company's got any uh, any voiceover <laughs> requirements. I've got all my studios set up and everything. But uh, it, it's it's great to sort of see in that that is the way that, uh, you know, the, the, the setup is here to, to sort of get more people out there and racing. Uh, absolutely fantastic isn't it and it's been going on here at Coombe for, for many years and uh, and other venues as well but uh, yeah very important to get through the ARDS test isn't it to, to get your race license but that's only a small part of it isn't it you've got to uh, think about what kind of car you want to drive do you want to get into saloon cars hot hatches formula ford single seaters sports cars and as and when circumstances allow, the best way to do that is to get down to the circuit, isn't it? And and have a look around the, the cars close up in the paddock when we're allowed to do that again, hopefully not too far away. Speak to the drivers as well. Figure out what's going to suit you. Figure out how you want to do it. Do you want to do it on your own? Have you got the mechanical expertise to, to run your own car? <laughs> I wouldn't have. No, um, me neither. <laughs> um, so you might be better off paying someone else to do all of that for you. Um, so, uh, so yeah, there's all kinds of things to think about as you get involved in in racing for the first time. And, yeah, the team here at Coombe do a fantastic job of getting people through their through the license process and uh, qualified to uh, to race on track. And then for those first few races, you have that black cross on the yellow background on the back of your car for for a few races at least until uh, until you can tear that up and you're a fully fledged racing driver. I mean, even, you know, the reason the hot hatch is, is so popular as well is that you've got that decision to make of do you want a championship, do you want mm. a series? And and the hot hatch is so popular because of the fact that it gives people that opportunity to to come in, maybe with a couple of different cars, to sort of dip in, dip out. A championship, you tend to, to commit for the whole year, don't yep. you, every single yep. race, which for a lot of people is exactly what they want. They, they want the thrill of the fight and everything. 
Whereas for others is that that series element, which is why I think the if you looked at the numbers around the country, the series, they're still like oversubscribed championships. Most of them are still doing well, but some are not necessarily quite as high as they would be um, yeah. bec because the people are there going, well, it's, you know, it's less of the season left and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, that's right. a lot to think about. Yeah, lots to think about. And obviously the, the great thing about Castle Cup, if you live within a sensible radius of it, is you can get you get a car and do all of your racing at one circuit. So you've not got that added dimension of having to learn a different track every two or three weeks. Yeah. Focus on getting mastering one circuit, and then I mean, why would you want to go anywhere else but for Castle Coombe? But if you did want to go further afield, then uh, then maybe once you've uh, you've you've mastered this layout, and it's a tough one to master, uh, then maybe that's when you could look to spread your wings. And and various different drivers have done that in the past, haven't they? They've uh, yep. they've you know done that early racing here, and then they've gone on to race in some cases at quite quite high level quite quite high profile championships that have uh, moved on having done the early racing and things like coombe saloons probably before we had the hot hatches yeah the saloons and of course the formula fords definitely sort yeah. of uh, breed some uh, some very interesting drivers and success but we do love the fact that there's so many of them do choose to stay here because they love it so i'm just sorting out my coffee i promise it's not a gin <laughs> it is it is coffee i promise you okay <laughs> believe you thousands wouldn't um true yeah. i can understand that but sadly it is <laughs> right the good news you can see on the image below ian is that the cars are now being released uh what we had is that where they had um the the, the stricken car in the pit lane all the trucks with the other stricken cars couldn't get down we've got cement dust all the way down from westway to the pit lane entrance there the good news is i would imagine the majority of that's going to be offline yeah and, it, and it's not so. a corner <laughs> no no, hopefully shouldn't you know catch anyone out in this next race, the uh, the sports car trophy. It is so. Here we go. The uh, Castle Coombe Racing Sports Racers Challenge uh, is is the official name that we've got for that one. Uh, again, thank you for the uh, the comments that are coming in. Oh, I've gone down. Um, Kev Davies says, "Was I was going out today? Not now. Great stuff. Congrats, congrats to all drivers included. I know the feeling, and thank you for that lovely comment." Uh, one of the Quarry Hardcore Goose says, uh, "Wow, what an improvement camera-wise. Trying to keep up to date, data coverage allowing. So no, not so good in pool. Uh, never ever thought I'd be at a campsite on a bank holiday. Coom always a priority. I know what you mean, mate. I know what you mean." Uh, Stuart Tinkertella says, "Great first race. Action all the way down the grid. I hope the fuffers are as exciting. The Formula Fords." I do love that. That does make me chuckle, that name. Uh, Emma says, uh, great racing, great coverage, nearly a 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Absolutely. And thank you. And welcome to you all. And, and I hope you're enjoying it. And do get involved. Keep these comments coming in. Paul Wiltshire, gutted not to be there today. Put my back out. You're all doing a great job. Get well soon, mate. I'm sorry to hear that. Jay Golden says, good day so far. I saw he's here. Uh, and Formula Fords at 120 is a question from Nick Caswell. In theory... But let me take you through the all-important grid uh, for the cars that have just made their way off on their green flag lap. This is the sports racers. Uh, in pole position, Mike Jemvy, number 35, in his uh, Jemvy Gun TS6. Alongside him, number 73, Alistair Smart, in his Radical PR6. Second row, 206, Nicholas Lindbergh, in his Radical SR8. And alongside him, number 8, a name we know here, David Crayham, in the Speedtech Motorsport Radical Pro Sport. Third row, number six, Richard Gillum in the Gilman, uh, sorry, Gilman, Richard Gilman in the Gilman's Appliance Specialist in his Radical SR3 and alongside him, number five, Neil Harris in the Radical PR6. Uh, in seventh place, number 50 is Norman Lackford uh, in the Radical PR6 and alongside him, number 66, John Gilman which is the uh, Radical Pro Sport. I was just wondering what all the pings were that were coming in. Oh, you're not going to believe it. Darren Duffield in the mini in the last race ran out of fuel. Oh, I've got you muted at the moment, Ian. Sorry, you are... It's all right. I think I've muted myself. Oh, you did. There we go. Well, that's a shame, isn't it? I mean, it, but he was a lap and a half short. It wasn't as if he was even particularly close, no. uh, unfortunately. But, ho well, at least that's something that's easily sorted for the next time. Exactly. He was. He's rather angry. <laughs> as you can imagine i, I, I bet i bet yes, um yes. quick note uh, no number 66 on the back of the good for this race so robert gilman missing and he did four ah. laps in qualifying so down yeah, to seven cars i'm afraid it, it was struggling wasn't it that's a shame so that that's uh, that's out of this now this race is due to be 20 minutes as well 
Uh, I know that uh, it's a small grid, but don't read too much into that because I've always said it only takes two cars to make a race. And these things, frankly, Ian, I'd never bore of seeing the speed and handling of these things around Castle Coombe. Well, they absolutely fly, don't they? Um, fantastic lap times. I know they're just coming up to the line now, so we'll talk yeah. more about that in a moment. Yeah, because it's a rolling start, so uh, we get ready. Mike Genvy in a white car with the red flashes. Oh, and they're all trying to sort of posture and get themselves to position. Crayham's going well, but also from the second row, that looks like Nicholas Lindbergh's dived up to challenge, and he's sweeping round. I think just about managing to take that lead, but we'll need to wait until he comes round to use. The red flashes on the roll bar that tells me that it is indeed Lindbergh that's just, well, he did take the lead, but he's yeah. lost it again. Genvy back up. Yeah, he was on the outside line, but uh, Gen V had the inside line there for Quarry Corner. So he's there uh, in the lead of the race in the uh, two litre uh, Gen V gun, a car that used to race in Sports 2000 originally, ahead of Lindbergh, then who made that fantastic start in the Radical SR8. They're heading off down towards Tower Corner for the first time. You see him in qualifying this morning. Gemma did a 104.328, an average of 103.53 miles an hour. So a phenomenal lap time. And it's good to have these sports racing cars back here at Castle Coombe for this sort of one-off special. It is. I mean, I just adore these cars. I've had the privilege of driving a Radical SR3 round Silverstone GP circuit, and they are just mind-blowing. The speed they'll take through, and it's kind of, uh, you know, looking at the, the SR8 there of Nicholas Lindbergh. I I'm right in saying, aren't I? And he's, he's still challenging, by the way, for the lead. Yep. Genvy's under pressure, but the SR8, they've stopped making, I think, haven't they? I believe so, yeah. yeah Which is I a shame, so. isn't it? But they still keep bringing new ones out, though. Yeah, I'm still a very busy uh, manufacturer over there in Peterborough. Back down the farm straight towards me, it's still the Gen V gun uh, that leads the way of Mike Gen V, but only by two or three car lengths over Nicholas Lindbergh in the SR8. In third place then is the number 73 car, that's uh, Alistair Smart in his PR6. In fourth place is number six, that's Richard Gilman. As the rest of them coming flash flashing through. Uh, and not forgetting Norman Lackford there. Uh, at the back of the field, I think he's uh, got 50 on his car. I think that's celebrating the number of years that he's been been racing now. Uh, yeah, because it used to it didn't it used to be his age. Oh no, that was um, the Formula Four driver. I Pete Dickox, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, that uh, that's nice. Now David Crayham, I'm surprised that he's down in sixth place. He's lost positions in that uh, the grey number eight car, but I expect to see him come back. He's at the back of this secondary trio that's just about to cross the line, and already he's putting pressure on the number five car of Neil Harris. Oh, and he's looking towards the inside, but Neil Harris decided. Well, that there was no inside, and so he closed the door on him there. And so Crayham's still buzzing around, so involved in a great fight. It's like two groups of three, really. Yeah, and uh, obviously Crayham has been racing here at Castle Keem for uh, a long time in various different cars, hasn't he? As, uh, again, Gen V comes past me ahead of Lindbergh in second place, Smart in third. And then this uh, trio of cars for fourth, fifth, and sixth. Just went past me now. They are all together. The sixth car of Gilman, the eighth car of Crayham is now ahead of Harris. So Harris down to sixth place and that's dropping away a little bit. Then Lackford in seventh position. There was that battle, three car battle, just going through shot. That was at Tower Corner. Yeah, so I see that Crayham's actually got past Harris. He's already yeah. pressuring Gilman, isn't he? So he is. it, it, I said that you don't expect him to hang around for long. Now, the, the, the top three have kind of spread out now as was expected and in fact that's a mighty mighty time we got a 105 now remember he did a 104 did our leader gem v uh in in that uh what is it it's the gem v gun ts6 which is one heck of a vehicle he's got there and he's hoping to sort of uh, uh pull that one even lower in the lap times but the other group of three they're kind of equidistant just heading up into quartz quarry now but i think that crayham has got his eyes set to get past gilman hasn't he looks like it doesn't it i'll keep an eye on that as uh Genvy goes past me in the gun and here comes Crayham now down the inside yes he's through he's made it into fourth place there at the S's so a change David Crayham after a bad start to the race really back up to where he started in fourth position now I don't know if my eyes deceive him but it almost looks like some grass in the air intakes if he's had a little bit of an off maybe on the first lap but that could just that? be my eyes deceive me uh, that's Crayham's car 
Have a look ah, when it comes okay. back to you. Just see if you can. It looks like it's almost a bit of bit grass in the air intakes there on the side of the car. Have a look. It, it would certainly make sense because he was uh, coming away. He got a great start and he was challenging at the pointy end for it as the top three already go mm. through. Here comes Cram now. He's clear of uh, Gilman. In fact, Gilman's now back into the clutches of the white number five car of Harris. But I can't quite tell from this side, actually. So, no, uh, it's difficult. A bit tricky, yeah. But it would make sense why he dropped away because you'd expect him to be up there fighting with certainly Limburg and Smart. Yeah, yeah. Now, Genevieve's going past me again in the number 35 car. Most recently, before the season, he was racing this car in the OSS Championship, I think. That's a championship that's sort of no longer... No longer with us, unfortunately, as numbers dwindled. That's fallen by the wayside. So not quite as many places now for drivers of this type of car to, to race, really. So Which I think good... was the idea of this, wasn't it? Really? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Has, has he raced that, do you know, in the Sports 2000s as well? Uh, hmm, I think he did do Sports 2000s at one point, but I don't know. Probably not in this spec. I think this car was rated from Sports 2000 spec from memory. Ah, okay. M maybe Josh will be able to find out about this later on. Uh, when yeah, he that's true. <laughs> yeah, that'll be. Uh, and get the lowdown. Yeah, well, he's already made his way up Avon Rise. And uh, uh, again, a new fastest lap for Genvy, a 105.212. But we know that he's got more in that. What did he do? A 104.3. So he's got another second that he can find from that. Yeah, uh, and he is a talented engineer as well. You'll notice the name of the car is the uh, the Gen V gun, and that's because it's a gun, but it's work, a car that has had the uh, Gen V family and firm hands on it, sort of engineering it and developing it, and very much the same story, what, 15 years or so ago now, in Formula V, where Mike Gen V was a two-time champion in Formula V, developing a Shane, one of the Irish chassis in that category, and it was credit car called the Gen V Shane and that was the car that won four successive championships two for Mike Gen V and then two for Sam Oliveira a couple of years later anyway the back towards you now yeah he's just about to cross the line and he is just pulling away effortlessly now down to 105.0 this time round there goes Limburg in the 206 the radical SR8 that just looks wonderful I, just, I love the radicals I, I love them uh, a little bit different than the Radical PR6 of Smart in third place, but that SR8 in second is is a true Radical-looking car, isn't it, at the mm, end of the day? It is. Absolutely fantastic. And, yeah, most of the grid here today are, are indeed Radicals, and they really have been the sports racing car to have. Mass-built, well over a 1,000 of them produced uh, and, and raced all around the world. And, uh, yeah, that's a... A great-looking car, the SR8. A bit more on the Gen V car, the Gen V gun, apparently, per Josh Barrett. Um, he has been uh, competing in time attack with it this season, which is a sort of single lap, almost like qualifying lap competition that they have for sort of modified cars. So single lap pace, all important for that discipline. Um, but I don't think he's been doing too much racing with it this year. Meanwhile, good fight going on here past me now. I think that's just been on your screen as well. The fifth and sixth, and it's car six and car five. Six is uh, the uh, Robert Gil Richard Gilman car, and five is Neil Harris. They're just making their way out of Tower Corner and back towards Bobby. So that's a good battle for fifth. Yeah, it's interesting how that sort of developed, really, wouldn't it? Because they were split apart with Cray and behind, then in between, then getting past them. And it sort of forced uh, Gilman and Harris in the uh, six and five, the black and white cars, join together down in towards camp corner they come now and that is just a, a, a wonderful fight i'm hoping the feed is okay for everybody because i know emma strawford's reporting that the uh, the audio seems to almost sound like two conversations going across each other um let us know if that is an issue i'm not sure why it would do that but i'm not no one else has made comment and clive woodward has said by the way he did race very successfully in sport 2000 and he was a very quick racer but as you say no. probably not in that exact car not in the current specification, I don't think. But uh, yes, he has. Uh, he has indeed. So we've got uh, we've got David Cram coming past me now. I'm not sure about whether my grass theory is right or not. I can't quite can't quite work it out. It looks a little bit green, a bit of a green tinge in there. And if you if you look at the grass around the circuit today, you'll see that it has been cut fairly recently. So there is the marine grass sort of on top of it. So if you do get off into it, you could be scooping quite a lot lot of that up. Norman Lackford coming past me, seventh position, and he's not far away from being lapped now by Mike Genvy, who is probably the length of the stretch from Old Paddock to Hammer down behind now. 
Um, just uh, again, it was being confirmed by Steve Weston, our competitions uh, secretary, who obviously worked so hard to get these races on. And he was saying that this really should have been a, a very well tried race if it wasn't for COVID, because we'd have had a good eight to ten at least coming over from Ireland from the, uh, the global night, which I'd imagine surely you've had the pleasure of, uh, of commentating yeah. on the those they they tend to bring a big old varied and fast field over as well don't they yeah they do they're fantastic little cars i mean oh we lost you then ian you there Um, oh there you go sorry oh right i'm unmuted again right yeah (laughs) they were um yeah, initially Yamaha powered, weren't they? The Global Light 600cc. I'm not sure if they still are or not. They had a, a a moderately successful championship here in the UK for a few seasons, but they all then um, uh, sort of migrated across the Irish Sea, really, to the Republic. But they do regularly come back and race in the UK in normal times, which, of course, they're not this year. I think anyone who came across to race at the moment would then have to quarantine for 14 days once they got back to Ireland. And I guess for, for club racing, that's just not viable. No, and I see that Chris Dennis also says he's sure that Mike Gemfrey did race the gun in sports 2,000 years ago. He's the son of Mod Sports Lotus Elan ace Richard Gemfrey from the 70s. Yep. Although he's Absolutely. put a question mark at the end. He says, he says, sounds convinced, and then he quotes question mark at yeah, the end. Yeah, no, he, he, that's right. That's, that's <laughs> correct information. I knew you'd know the answer to that one. So across the line, there goes Jemby. With nine minutes left to go in this race. And uh, the Jemby Dynamics uh, Jemby gun is officially a Class B car, which means it's running the same as Richard Gilman and Norman Lackford. But it does show that it's not just about the car. It's not just about the engineering he's putting on that car. But in fairness, Mike Jemby is a darn good racer as well, as as. Uh, Clive Wood has already said. Yeah, no, he's, he, he's very good. And uh, I say, won Formula V back in 04, 05, I want to say, or possibly 03, 04. Um, Again, it's very high quality opposition uh, and a very competitive single seat series as well. Uh, and he's, since then, he has been racing primarily sports racing cars in Sports 2000, OSS, and, and so on and so forth. The, the um, good news is, is that uh, where Steve Weston was saying, obviously, they should have had you know, a number coming over from Ireland, but obviously they're not allowed to come over for Ireland. I mean, you hear even um, Mondello Park, for example, which is where apparently a load of them oh, are very good. Uh, oh. Chris, problems. David Cram is off. Now, he, it looked like he was just parking uh, at the S's, but he's actually clattered the tyre stack there on the apex of the S's. It sent tyres rolling all across the circuit, which Richard Gilman and uh, Neil Harris have managed to avoid. David's getting out of the car. So that was very strange because it was slow. It looked like he was just going to park, but then he's clattered into the tyres. He's climbed out of the car, so he's okay. That's good to see. But the car is now more or less parked on the apex at the S's. I don't know if we've got a camera that will show that. We'll see if we can pick that up in a minute. But it's um, far away, I think, so. Yeah. Yeah, can't quite make it out. No, you can't, can you? Uh, f- f- from oh, there the we go. The... From, from the back, we can kind of see. Yeah, I see uh, what you mean. It's you just on yeah, the apex. Just just right at the top of the picture there, right on the apex of the corner. Um, I would think, therefore, we might get an intervention of some kind in this race. Yeah, I'm keeping an eye on race control to the left of me here to see what they're uh, they're deciding to do there. They were obviously they're looking at the cameras. Oh, we just had that change, I think, as well. The, or was that a back marker getting past one of the other cars? I thought it was the, uh, the white and black cars. I'm sure it is, you know, that we've just had... Uh, Harris, number five, get past Gilman, but no, I think I think that's still the same. I think what happened there uh, was Lindbergh lapped Norman. Ah, Lindbergh. Okay. Got you. Right, an intrepid marshal has got uh, some of the tyres in the middle of the road and rolled them back into the, the wall or a wall um, where they should be. So it is still uh, Gilman ahead of Harris, and that's for fourth and fifth place now with the very strange demise of David Crayham. What have we got left to go? Six minutes left in this race, and Mike Genvy heading towards me here and i think the that the impact has just pushed the tires a couple of foot into the circuit as well so uh, it's making the chicane a bit tired that's one way to stop the formula fords cutting the curbs anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah leave it there leave it there <laughs> yeah. that'll work well the fight that i thought that had just changed and as you rightly said is exactly the same is that the number six car of uh, of gilman goes through Still just about ahead of number five, Harris, but those two keep getting very, very close together. It looks to me almost interestingly, although you wouldn't expect it, but they seem to have weeks in different parts of the circuit. Yeah, which is odd 
isn't it? Given that they're fundamentally uh, similar cars. Um, of course, I guess got... drivers have their favourite parts, I guess, don't they, really? Yeah. You've got the SR3-ish, more powerful 1.5-litre uh, engine, 1,340cc PR6. That's the sort of centre seat position for Neil Harris. What times has Genevieve got down to his... Not improved on this 104 952 from earlier on, and probably will struggle to do now with do so now with the tires well, sort of sticking out into the track. The update on that, Ian, is that this is the last lap. They will okay. bring the check flag out this time, which which kind of makes sense. Um, I don't think anyone can feel perfectly rubbed. We're we're less than uh, well, just sort of about four and three quarter minutes left to go in theory. This fight comes down towards camp, so that's still going to have one more lap to go. But the leader is coming towards it's, you yeah no he's past me oh, he's back at bobby's oh, back okay. to you. he's coming to my site uh, any second now and uh, in theory at least it looks like i'm being told it's gonna be a second. Like, yeah here it is it is ready they are that nicely hidden but he's gonna come through and he's gonna have to take that it'll probably be a bit gutted that there's like a few more minutes that was left in it but they'll know that that car is in a vulnerable place so a great victory there for mike jemby and uh, we wait then for Nicholas Lindbergh, who comes down in his radical SR8 to take second play. As uh, Gilman and Harris come past me, they're still quite close, but I don't think they're going to change around, Chris. No, it sort of spread out a little bit, didn't it, really, bizarrely? Yeah. Which is a shame. Uh, third place there goes to the 73 car, Alistair Smart. So Alistair actually started on the front row. Great start by Nicholas Lindbergh, and he just stamped his authority on that race and took second place. Uh, I say stamped his authority. No one could challenge Mike Jemby. Uh, obviously, we lost David Crayham, so we wait for the, uh, the the black and white cars. They are back together again, but it's still the black car of uh, number six, Richard Gilman in his radical SR3 that's going to take that uh, fourth position just ahead. In fifth is number five, Neil Harris in his radical PR6 and Norman Lackford, number 50, in his radical PR6 has already taken the chequered flag. So hopefully there's not too much damage to uh, Crayham's car so that we can get him back out again. Well, I mean, the collision with the tyres was at relatively low speed and I, I think it's just a stack of tyres there. I don't think there's anything hard to sort of conceal behind them. So hopefully the damage shouldn't be too much. Well, it and hopefully it bizarre. wasn't damaged that caused it because you said it was weird, wasn't it? Well, it, it was. I suppose that's the question. Was there something that's broken on the car? Maybe steering, maybe suspension that... That, that caused him to cough. It just looked odd. So uh, hopefully he'll be back out. Fingers crossed. Um, and I was just getting a confirmation through from Race Control next door to confirm that was why the flag was done. Uh, Chris Dennis, uh, great comment. Great to see Norman Lackford. I agree. Such a lovely guy. Remember him in his red Fiat 850, uh, 850s or 850s in uh, Wendy Wall's special saloons and GTs. I'm not really old. Well, you say that, Chris. That kind of gave us an insight. But <laughs> it's great to see those memories, mate. That's what we love to hear. So the drivers are going to make their way down towards Josh. And at that point, I'm going to take my leave to run down to the uh, to the little boys' room. But uh, Josh is hopefully going to get the opportunity to uh, to grab a word with them. I'm waiting to see the... Uh, the picture of the the van doors bursting open down there with the great setup that uh, Kev from Bristol Sound has set up. And uh, and I know a lot of you are congratulating his son, Greg, who's doing a stunning job down there, uh, bringing the cameras all round for everybody. And again, we, we thank everybody for that. So the cars are down there. And I'm just trying to keep an eye to make sure they do actually stop uh, for that bit. Let's have a look. Having to peer through. Yes, the good news is they have gone into park firm, eh? So fingers crossed the van door will open very soon and uh, Josh Barrett will be able to grab a word with them and I can run down to uh, to, to the little boys' room any second now. So I've got to make sure we click add to the stream as soon as uh, Josh is down there and ready. Next out, of course, is going to be the uh, Castle Coombe Racing Club Formula Fords. And uh, we'll take you through that grid very shortly. That is the Premier Financial Services Formula Ford 1600 Championship. And uh, as soon as Josh has got the doors open, I'm hoping that he is down there because I haven't seen the door open just yet. 
hear the cars have stopped, but and if you can hear me down there, Josh, don't forget to open the door, mate, and hopefully the drivers are going to come and see you. Ah, there we go. There's the main man. So let's put him up to full screen and I'll leave it with you. No need to rush, mate. I'm nipping down to the loop. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Uh, yeah, so the first uh, winner of the sport prototype race is Mike Jemby. Well done, Mike. Uh, good, actually, I guess, to be out in a circuit race for you. you haven't, your car's not eligible for much else at the moment. <laughs> no, it's a bit of a challenge, but we've done a couple of time attack events. So, yeah, just lovely to be racing people again. Had a really nice, nice, I got overtaken, obviously, down towards the first corner. So nice to sort of get that back before uh, anyone settled in. Um, yeah, and just managed to pull out a bit of a gap. It's, um, it's a bit of a challenge with the, the oil that went down in the previous race. It's kind of stuff in your eyes and coming up in your helmet. But it's, uh, yeah, it's really nice once we settle down. And then I think they presume they cut the race a bit short at the end just because of the incident yeah. further around the track. But no, really nice. Car's going beautifully. So really pleased. Tell us a bit about your car. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a bit of a labour of love. So we've had the car for uh, just about 10 years now. Um, we did Sports 2000 in it for many years. So we won the championship twice in that and then we did open sports cars hmm. um for about five six years and won the championship twice in that um obviously they, that's no longer this year so we're kind of just looking around and doing some different stuff this year and i've i've, I've only been to Castlecombe i think twice before once in a single seater and and once in sports 2000 guys and it's uh yeah it's a good it's a good hairy challenge around here it's pretty pretty fast hey you did a one minute 4.9 is your best lap so you're happy with that uh, we weren't pushing too hard. Um, we've got one of. We've just put a new set of tyres on. Treated myself, and, and <laughs> it's obviously spun on the rim a bit or something. And one's just right. a bit out of balance. So uh, we'll try and get them balanced, or we'll put on the old tyres for the next race, and we'll we'll try and get a bit closer, uh, closer to the one hundred twos or something like that. It'll be really nice. Well, we look forward to that. Thanks for bringing the car to Castle Coombe today. No, thank you. Really Can good. Nicola uh, uh, Lindbergh over here. <laughs> Well done, uh, second place there, and you had to get past Alistair at the start. Yeah. Tell us a bit about the pass. Yeah, it would, I, I got a pretty good start there. It was quite fun. And, I imagine that uh, SR8 round here is quite a difficult car to drive. Yeah, it's quite big, like uh, Mike's. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of, quite difficult to get around in, but it's fast corners all around the track, so it's quite fun. So is that a circuit you enjoy? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I'm, it's my second time here. Uh, uh, last time I was here, it was the first time I dro drove here. I think it's two years ago now, so uh, really looking forward to next race. And much like Mike, I guess it's hard to find places to race your car. Yeah, yeah. I, I live in Denmark, yeah. and you can't find anywhere to race <laughs> a car like that. So it's nice to come over here and race. Well, thanks for bringing it, and hopefully we'll see you later on. Thank you. And then Alistair in from third place. Well done, Ali. Third position. Thank you. And the first, I guess, of the smaller engine cars. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean... I, he got a great start, didn't he? he? Went past both Mike and myself, and then, then I was just trying to chase him. So, uh, difficult tall order, but my first time round here, yeah, uh, in that car. Um, I think the last time I was round here was in the Cape from about <laughs> many years ago. So I'm happy with that, um, and hopefully in the second race I can uh, keep up with Nicolay. Yeah, I guess quite a different challenge. We're at Silverstone last week, and it's a very different circuit. Yeah, very different circuit. Uh, guys at RJ Motorsport set it up really well for me, so I'm not having a problem with the car. It's just me and my head, <laughs> and just uh, going a bit quicker. And um, doing bike sports as well this year. Really big grids there. Yeah. Um, enjoying uh, doing a different championship. I think you've done yeah, a lot of OSS in the past. I was OSS two years ago, and that was my first transition into from a pro sport to PR6. And then yeah. this year is a proper proper season in a PR6. Uh, we're doing some proper testing and and you know i'm getting quicker so i'm finding time every weekend and the 750 grid is really big and there's 30 odd cars on yeah <laughs> so no it's good really good fun what's the difference between the pro sport and the pr6 uh night and day yeah it's just the way you drive them the way they set up the engine uh you you can make a pro sport more like a pr6 but you've got to spend a lot of money right okay buy the pr6 pr6 is just edgy you have to sit it on the edge and drive it hard <laughs> and if you don't it it, it it just doesn't give you the lap times and i I haven't quite got there yet, but I'm getting there slowly. We look forward to fact, a bit more pace this afternoon and, and speak to you again later. Yeah, I thanks very much. Take care. So well done to third place, Alistair Smart, second, Nicholas Lindberg, and the winner, Mike Jembian. It sounds like uh, Chris is back and the next car's already on the grid.
Fantastic. Thanks, Josh. Thank you for that. Perfectly done. And we'll uh, bring that down. I'll bring uh, Ian back in again because we sort of uh, did a bit of uh, jiggery pokey there to allow the uh, um, momentarily, at least, that uh, we could have. Let me just uh, check. Allegedly, we can. Look at that. How cool. I can switch the cameras around now. I'm loving it. I've got the news flash. They'd updated that. How cool is that? Sorry, I'm a little bit excited about that. Right. The uh, the Formula Fords, the Premier Financial Services, a Formula Ford 1600 Championship. The grid will be as follows. Pole position, Championship leader, number 46, Luke Cooper. Alongside him, one, two, three, Bryce Aaron. Second row, 44, David Vivian and 26, Felix Fisher. And he is out there, which is good because he had issues in qualifying. Third row, 75. Rob Hall, the 2011 champion here at Castle Coombe. One, two, two, Jonathan Brown. Fourth row, 30, Grant Palmer. That's not where I'd expect him to be. And number 40, Matt Hallam. Apparently, it was the uh, the best uh, uh, lap time that he's done, according to his dad. So, pleased with that. Fifth row, 59, Chris Acton. 23, Nathan Ward. Row six, 43, Kieran Atwood. Five, Paul Barnes. Seventh row, 28, Tom Hawkins. 76, James Colburn. Uh, great to see a great uh, visit from Chris Hodgson, number 77, and he's on the eighth throw. 25, Mark De Rosario. Ninth throw, 960, Bob Higgins, and 69, Alan Slater. Expect them to have a great fight in their Class D cars. Both beautiful, stunning cars. Tenth throw, number seven, Michael Phillips, and 60, Paul Morecambe. Eleventh throw, 91, Bob Hawkins, 33, Chris Warden, and alone on the twelfth row, 78, James Rose. So, Ian, I mean, what a grid. It's fantastic to see, isn't it? 23 cars I think we've got out there in the end. Uh, and it's great to see. It. It's really competitive as well. Um, obviously, this year, the sort of uh, main national Formula 4 1600 championship has been somewhat shortened by the uh, by the pandemic. And I think that's probably meant that we've got the likes of uh, Bryce Aaron and Grant Palm and Jonathan Brown all down here. We perhaps wouldn't normally have seen them here at Coombe, so it's fantastic that they're here, adding some real depth of quality to the lineup that we have here at Coombe already. Um, it's worth saying, it's our first championship action of the day. This is now the second half of the championship season, eight rounds in all of our local championships. This is round five, and probably a difference again for this year is that there are no drop scores, which is great news for you, Chris, because uh, I know they confuse <laughs> you. Um, but it, 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 it does just mean that we add all the points together and that whoever gets the most is the winner. It's, it's easy. I can do that. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so, but it, what it does mean is that drivers can't really afford a dodgy result. We will see the saloons and the GTs later on where people have had some dodgy results. Um, but so far, Cooper's had three wins Phoenix Fisher's had the other. He's got work to do from the second row of the grid um, today. But what price uh, one of the Americans, Bryce Aaron or Grant Palmer, Palmer's a bit further back on the grid getting involved. Well, or David in... Vivian. David yeah. Vivian was like very tiny fraction behind the third place, number one, two, three, uh, Bryce Aaron. So it's going to be interesting to see how that one works. Uh, and the 2011 champion, as you mentioned as well, Rob Hall, back out in a Swift Cooper with whom he won the championship nine years ago. Um, and, uh, of course, Jonathan Brown, last year's Formula Ford Festival winners on the grid as well. We're only sixth on the grid. So uh, lots and lots of quality in this race. It should be an absolutely fantastic 10 laps. Well, and the other thing to uh, note is that out of the four races we've had this year, four different drivers have got fastest lap points. So it, it really it does mix it up there. This is going to be a titanic tussle as the last few cars make their way on to the uh, into their slots. There goes the green flag wave at the back. Already the engine notes are rising, even though it's only the five second board that's showing. We're ready to go for this. Our Castle Coombe Championship for the Formula 4s. One lights, two lights. On goes the third. Up goes the fourth. The engine notes are up. The fifth light is on. And off go the lights and off go the field. And it's as one. But 75 suddenly went a little bit steady at the start there. Rob Hall sort of struggled in the second phase. Luke Cooper has the nod. Now in second... I need to check. It's one of the white cars that's got himself. That makes me wonder whether that's Felix Fisher has got himself up into second place and hounding. But they're going three wide up over Avon Rise and round Quarry, thankfully, cleanly done. It looked like it was Luke Cooper ahead, though, didn't it? In the yeah. uh, in the matter white swift. And I think it was one of the low Dempsey racing cars in second. I can see Felix Fisher's day glow helmet there in fourth position so he's not made up any places so far it looks like it's david vivian that's gone up into second position third place is the one two three car which is that of bryce aaron who started alongside cooper on the front row of the grid 
But Cooper here has about two or three car lengths on the rest of them as they turn through Tower Corner for the first time. It was four tenths faster than anybody else in qualifying this morning. And uh, Cooper, the championship leader by eight points coming into this weekend. Well, he would very much like, if he possibly can, to make an early break here and, and check out away from the rest of them. But they're heading back towards you, Chris. Yeah, and his godsend for this is that the fight behind is great. And up into second has gone David Vivian. I said he was close on that and he was frustrated last time round in the 44 car. Up into second he goes. Third is Bryce Aaron. Uh, Felix Fisher is glued to the back of those two cars. So it is a three-car train with Luke Cooper pulling away. Then there's a gap. And we suddenly then have uh, Palmer, uh, 59 Acton and Brown all glued together. Up round quarry, they come to you. But look at that. Second, third, fourth as one. I think Vivian was up there in the sort of second race at the last meeting as well, wasn't he? But had a spin yeah. back down to 15th position in race two. He had a coming together with Alex Walker as well in race one, which dropped him down the order. Although it wasn't his fault. He's made a mistake there coming out of the S. He's kicked up quite a lot of dirt. That loses him momentum. It loses him time to Cooper. And it means that the two cars behind him of Bryce Hammond and Felix Fisher are going to go either side of him as they go down towards Tower Corner, are they? Oh, not quite. So I think David has just about been able to hold them off the... Wiltshire College Motorsport Lecturer, he is still there ahead in second place, but it is very, very tight now as they head through Bob. As you can see that on the screen, yeah, Vivian's still ahead. Then it's Bryce Aaron, then it's Felix Fisher in fourth, but it's just allowing Luke Cooper to get a bit further away. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, not what uh, Felix Fisher wants to see. He sat there in fourth place. He's not just losing uh, one position to Luke Cooper, his main rival at the moment. He's three places further back, and that cost him in the first race at the last round as well. So he needs to get past Bryce Aaron and David Vivian. David Vivian, of course, is sat there in fifth in the championship, only like a one point behind Grant Palmer. Grant Palmer's uh, sort of down in seventh place at the moment. He just lost two laps, uh, two places on that last lap. Vivian so was really, a bit... Sorry, Vivian was a bit wide there coming out of Quarry Corner, but he's managed to hold on to the position. Still there in second. He's got Aaron and Felix Fisher right behind him. And then it's the next of the low Dempsey racing cars. That's the 122 car of uh, Jonathan Brown, the Formula Ford Festival winner from last year. He's in fifth. Grant Palmer is in sixth spot, but second place fight is where it's at at the moment. And it is now a four car fight because Jonathan Brown has officially latched himself onto the back of that now. They're heading into uh, Bobby's once again. There they are. You can see Cooper with a comfortable lead at the moment. And then four cars absolutely hammer and tongs for second place. Well, Jonathan Brown did the fastest lap of the race last time round, and you could see how quickly he was closing in on that group ahead of him. Oh, David Vivian just shakes his tail feather as he came round camp corner, but stopped it before he got towards the grass on the exit. And it doesn't seem to have compromised him. But look at that. Jonathan Brown, one, two, two, has got a good run. He's got, a, I think he starts from third on the grid for race number two, you know, but he is desperately trying to make a challenge on Felix Fisher. Even worse news for Felix Fisher, if that's the case. He's there seeing the championship leader scamper his way down towards you already yeah and they are spreading themselves out along the farm straight and we're going to get a change for a second no vivian manages to hold on but fisher has lost fourth place now on the way out of quarry corner he lost it he's lost it to jonathan brown and here comes the change for second because bryce allen and david vivian are wheel to wheel coming out of old paddock down towards hammer down they go and it's going to be the inside line for aaron is it is he managed going to manage to squeeze through there i think he's done it i think aaron has done it we'll see on the screen Yes, he has. And it looks like Jonathan Brown's going to follow him through to third place as well. Yes, he has. So it's now low Dempsey drivers, second and third. Uh, and it's just incredible. I mean, we knew that Bryce Aaron was going to make a challenge on it, but Jonathan Brown has found something completely different recently. He's up in there to, uh, to third position. He's the fastest car on the circuit by a while now in that one two, 2 past David Vivian, past Felix Fisher. So those two are down to fourth and fifth, respectively, respectively even. And Felix Fisher is going to be devastated. All of this, of course, is allowing the championship leader, Luke Cooper, to just disappear into the distance in his 46 car. He's got to be licking his lips when he can see what's going on in his mirrors. And look at Vivian there. He was having a look at Jonathan Brown on the inside at Quarry Corner and the two of them are side by side now as they come down Farm Straight and Felix Fisher's going to try and buy into this as well. Fisher goes through because over the grass goes Jonathan Brown. He loses two places. He's down to fifth position. So back up to third goes David Vivian. Fourth is Felix Fisher. And now uh, Jonathan Brown's got a lot of work to do. He's back into the clutches of his teammate, Grant Palmer. And then in seventh place, you've got uh, Rob Paul having his first race here at Castlecombe for quite a few years. So 
Luke Cooper continuing to lead, but the best lap of the race, two brown, as you mentioned, about to go 110.5. That is the best lap here at Castle Cooper in Formula Ford so far this season. Wow, fantastic. Well, yeah, Luke Cooper comfortable in the lead, comfortable at the moment for Bryce Aaron in one, two, three. But now it's the local boys that are fighting it out for the next, the, the bottom step of the podium as it stands. And it is David Vivian, 44, in the blue and white car, just ahead of the all white number 26. Oh, at the back, uh, 26, Felix Fisher. Yeah, Jonathan Brown's fallen away from that. That looked to me as though that was some real local knowledge there from Felix Fisher, knowing that he could throw his car into that particular spot. And I think they've gone side by side. Not quite. Is the switcheroo possibly for Felix Fisher? Yeah, have a look at them on the exit of Quarry Corner. It looks like Vivian is secure in that position at the moment. And Fisher in fourth, Brown in fifth, Palmer sixth, Hall in seventh. And there's a gap back to Chris Acton in eighth, Matt Hallam ninth, and Nathan Ward, our Class B leader, is in tenth place. Class C being led by Mark De Rosario by about five seconds from Chris Hodgin, as things stand. But we're watching this battle towards the front of the field as you can see it heading there through tower corner out of tower and up towards bobby as they then go rob hall you can see in the swift cooper red and white car at the back of that group and he's putting a bit of pressure now on the american grant palmer so they head or back towards you, Chris. They do coming down here. I thought Felix Fisher was lining up a move towards the inside of David Vivian, but no, he just tucks himself back in to take the fast line through onto the start finish straight because that will then carry him all the way through the flat out folly. First corner, all the way up Avon Rise in towards Quarry. And he's got a good run there. But in fairness, so did David Vivian. So I think that's kind of status quo for those two. But again, they go slightly different lines. David Vivian is clearly feeling the need to go defensive up there. And you can't blame him, really, can you? Not at all. Not at all. Because you know, this could be a very important race for the championship as well here. Because this will cost Felix Fisher a lot of points to Luke Cooper if things stay this way. As we say, no drop scores in the championship this season. Ordinarily, this is one that Felix might be looking to discard from his championship campaign. But he's mounting an attack once again down at Tower Corner on David Vivian. But he still can't find a way through. And of course, he's got Jonathan Brown breathing down his neck again because he's reeled them back in once again. Um, but Cooper out front has a lead of more than two seconds. Yeah, he comes down towards us, ready to complete his seventh lap out of this 10-lap race. And, uh, oh, nice slide from the apex there from Luke Cooper. And then second place, Bryce Aaron. Let's not forget, he's third in the championship. Only, what's that, nine points behind Felix Fisher. So this is good news for him, especially when he sees it's David Vivian behind. And Jonathan Brown's got himself right onto the back of Felix Fisher again, heading up Avon Rise. The 1-2-2 two, two car, the low Dempsey racing drivers, got himself towards the outside at Quarry Corner. That hasn't worked there, but surely he's going to try the switcheroo. And he has. He's up the inside on the exit. Yep, yeah, he's going to be alongside as they come down to the S's. He's still alongside, as you can see, and he's done it. He's gone through Ooh. into fourth place. Nicely done there. And this is bad news for Felix Fisher. On the Oh, and off the circuit briefly, there was Grant Palmer. That's allowed Rob Hall to get through into sixth place as well. I was about to say, though, Jonathan Brown on the last lap did another fastest lap of the race, a 1 minute 10.297. Before that, the best lap so far this season was a 10.7 from Luke Cooper in round three of the championship. But uh, uh, it's now Brown back ahead of Fisher. Just incredible stuff, as always. And Luke Cooper had to get past a back marker then that I thought had compromised him for a minute, but it was because the back marker was white and red was the only reason I uh, momentarily paused. David Vivian in that third place with the fighting going on between Jonathan Brown and Felix Fisher in the 1, 2, 2 and 26 cars means that he's momentarily sat there in no man's land. But uh, the speed that Jonathan Brown has got around this circuit in that 1, 2, 2 car is incredible. He is really looking confident, but he's now down to the last couple of laps. So he needs to make a move quickly. And if anything, it looks as though, uh, well, I don't know, it's that elastic between them, isn't it? So I just can't mm -hmm. decide whether to call it. But he has, you know, lapped several tenths per second faster than anybody else here. I think possibly a bit of a the benefit of a toe there. Oh, and off the circuit goes David Vivian. He rejoins quite quickly. That was just by the Marshalls post between the S's and Old Paddock. But that has allowed Brown back through to third position. And can Felix Fisher use his extra momentum over Vivian now to get his car ahead and up into fourth place at Tower Corner? No, he can't. So Fisher stays there in fifth in the TM Racing, Tom Markinson's team, the Radio 06. And that uh, really has changed things around for David Vivian's race. It was a mistake there, just on the grass there, on the by the Marshalls post between the S's and Old Paddock. 
Wow, that is that is uh, quite surprising for David Vivian. Luke Cooper goes on to start his last lap now. Second place, no man's land, one, two, three for Bryce Aaron. But Jonathan Brown up into third. He was about to mount an attack. Uh, you know, oh, going slowly there is Grant Palmer. I think Grant Palmer's just tickled his way across the line and is about to retire. And Grant Palmer had been sitting fourth in this championship, but the leaders are making their way towards you for the final time. Yeah, and we are on course here, I think, to have our fifth different fastest lap setter of the season. Unless perhaps Luke Cooper can pull something out of the bag with no traffic in front of him on the final lap. It's going to go to Jonathan Brown with a 110.297. So he's leading. Aaron is second. Brown is third. Vivian fourth. Fisher fifth. And Hall in sixth. And they have really spread themselves out now with the demise of Grant Palmer, as we were saying. Seventh is still... Um, Chris Acton, eighth. Nathan Ward, he's just got ahead now of Matt Hallam. And uh, it's going to be Atwood up into the top ten. But the leaders back towards you for the final time, Chris. Wow, here they come. Thank goodness we got another race from these guys. Luke Cooper's just been in control from start to finish here in the number 46 car. The Swift Cooper, the Swift SC18 comes through. And he's about to take the chequered flag. Punches the air as well does the uh, Bryce Aaron one two three one two 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 Jonathan Brown so the teammates take second and third David Vivian number forty four with that tiny mistake just cost him a podium place there in Class A and overall comes home in fourth Felix Fisher going to be scratching his head and slightly frustrated comes home in fifth place Rob Hall the uh, two thousand and eleven champion number seventy five comes home in sixth seventh is Chris Acton number fifty nine Nathan Ward number eight great job there eighth overall and the Class B victory he really has come back with a bang hasn't he and i know his dad carl ward down in the media center and mary ward his mum, will be glued at home watching all of this as well chris hallam uh, sorry matt hallam in uh, number 40 comes home in ninth place good job there 10th number 43 kieran atwood then 11th place is uh, is barnes in the number five car that gives him the uh, uh, second in class b sorry for paul barnes in uh, 12th is number 28, which is the Tom Hawkins car. That's another Class A car. Chris Hodgson takes the uh, Class C honours in number 77, just ahead in the end of Mark De Rosario. So Rosario, De Rosario had led that for some time, but Chris Hodgson came through. Not surprising, let's be honest. He's a monoposto champion in an F3 car. It's great to see Chris here racing at Castle Coombe. 15th place, 960. Bob Higgins it, it takes Class D honours in that beautiful Macon 07. He was having a good fight with uh, Colburn and Rose earlier on. But he got the better of them. 16th number, 76. And third in Class C is James Colburn in the Wayne Paul Racing Run car. 17th number, 78, which is uh, is Rose. So that's James Rose in the Goodridge Limited Run uh, Swift. In theory, it's showing that it would be in 20th Grant Palmer. But it's not going to be because he's on the grass in front of us. So actually taking 20th is the number 60 car of Paul Mockham in his uh, Solely Motorsport Run Swift SC93. And then we should have just one more finisher. Actually, did I miss somebody out there? Uh, well, I, th I think, Chris, we lost Chris Warden as well on the uh, uh, final up. Uh, there's a car him. stopped up at Quarry. Uh, I think that must be his car that's up there. I, I missed out on the list, sorry. is that Sorry, so we've got Colburn, 78 rows, 69 Aaron's... Uh, <sighs> Not Aaron, what am I on about? There's somebody else. Alan Slater uh, in his beautiful Nike a MK4. That gives him uh, second in Class B. Then it's number seven, Phillips, 60, Morecambe. So it was the shifting of people going down meant that I missed one. And you're right, exclamation mark across Warden. So that's a shame. Only two lost, though. So we still got 20 finishes. Great victory from uh, Luke Cooper. He just wasn't really challenged, was he, in the race? Although lap time-wise, I think he needs to be wary, certainly of Jonathan Brown in race two. I think so. I mean, I think he'll be disappointed not to have picked up the fastest lap point because really he knows it's going to be a tight fight with Felix Fisher this season. He'll have wanted every point that he can get. If Jonathan Brown can, you know, make a good start to the second race later on, I think we could be in for a real corker there because he has set some times there that, that nobody else has matched this season by a long way in, in race conditions, a, a 10.297. Uh, really good effort uh, from Jonathan Brown. As we say, Ford and Ford Festival winner, so he's got some pedigree behind him. Although I think that was a bit of a shock result when he won that, to be honest. Anyway, sounds like 
We're almost ready to go down to Josh, aren't we, Chris? Uh, not not just yet. Not I can quite. see he's down now, just so that we can see the cameras. Nice one, Luke Cooper says, Drewster Originals. Zen Monkey Clothing, great race. Well done, Matt. Matt Hallam, sponsored by uh, Zen Monkey Clothing, and absolutely did brilliantly well. Uh, Class B winner, Nathan Ward. Lucy Marie Smith, his, uh, his, his better half, I'm going to say, Lucy, uh, uh, supporting there. But uh, as Dan Blake Racing says, fantastic Formula Ford action as ever. And therefore, we need to go down to the victor. A fantastic, fantastic victory, victory from Luke from Cooper. Cooper. Well done, mate. Down to you, Josh. Thanks, Chris. Well done, Luke. Uh, that's probably easier than you were expecting. Yeah, it was uh, a lot easier than the last two here, definitely. <laughs> but I got the gap on the, the end of the first lap and was just focusing on maintaining the gap after that. It certainly wasn't easy, but uh, I was pushing it every lap. But easier than most Formula 4 races. Yeah, because I guess that fastest lap point is always important. You couldn't quite get there because the other guys all slipped through in one another and you obviously had no one to tow with. Yeah, every point counts, but <laughs> taking the win is the most important. And Felix only finished fifth, so for the championship, that's a perfect result, really. Very good for the championship, yeah. And um, lots of racing this in this short part of the season for you, I guess. You've done a bit of national racing as well as yeah, the other cast. Yeah, the first, first round of the national championship. Um, didn't really have the budget to do both, but the second round of the national championship got cancelled anyway. Um, so we're focusing on Coombe and it's going very well so far. <laughs> well, well done. And um, I guess later on, perhaps it might be a bit more of a slipstream in action. Yeah, it's very difficult to break the toe. I was lucky this time where they were all battling. Yeah. It's not going to be so easy in the next one. Because it shows how important qualifying can be in these races. Yeah, yeah. Getting a break is so difficult, but it's really difficult to catch it back up once, once someone's got a break. So well done and good luck for later on. Thank you. If we get uh, Bryce over here. Bryce Aaron, who took second place uh, there, was catching Luke towards the end. But that was that first lap, Bryce, you just let Luke get away, didn't it? Yeah, unfortunately, that's kind of what it came down to in the end. It was, had really good pace. The car felt really good. I have to thank everybody at OTMC for giving me you know, an amazing car. But yeah, unfortunately, at the start, just didn't have the greatest of starts, bogged down a little bit, uh, and fell back to third and had the battle of David for a little bit. And then I got clear, but it was already too late. Still a lot of fun. Because uh, I guess, really, you're still gaining experience all the time. Luke's been racing these cars for a lot longer than you have. Definitely, yeah. Um, gaining experience with every race, especially over here. The competition's very good. So, each, you know, each lap, each session, you know, getting a little bit more experience, gaining a little bit more, and trying to come faster and faster. And I think your first race over here was at the festival last year. Correct, yes. Last October, I did the festival of Old Field. And I guess you're very happy with your progress since then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I've been progressing a lot. And I got, you know, hands down to Cliff. You know, Dan Sue has been doing a lot of driver coaching, Matt Schroeder, James Theodore, Andy, Andy Lowe. Um, it's just been, yeah, I think Saddam have been able to really progress. And then hopefully, you know, <laughs> looking for more in the second race, but definitely enjoying it. What is it that you decided that UK was the place to race? I think after doing 1600s in America, I was looking forward to, like, what, what's the hardest thing I can do? And, like, for the price and budget that I have going to a season. So just looking at the UK scene, I just said, yeah, definitely, you know, competition-wise, it looks really, really good. Um, so that's that's kind of what drove me to decide to come race here. And obviously the season started a bit late, but you've been going plenty of racing. You raced at Brown's Hatch yesterday in the national championship as well. Yeah, so that was a lot of fun. Yeah, we've been doing the national championship. Our first round was at Alton for the national. And then we did yesterday, we were actually at Brands Hatch for, yeah. for the champion of brands on the <laughs> Grand Prix circuit, which was a lot of fun. Uh, and yes, enjoying it a lot. And what do you think of the Castle Coombe circuit? Like it a lot, really <laughs> fast, really quick, especially with the hairpins, you know, you have to be accurate or, you know, the white, which I've learned in my first time here, but, <laughs> uh, but no, I enjoy it a lot. It's really good, um, really fast, which is what I enjoy about it. So well done and good luck for later. Thank you. And then third is Jonathan Brown. John O'Brown took third place. Uh, you did lots of overtaking in that race, but um, I guess you'd rather be a little bit higher up. Yeah, I think unfortunately qualifying we started too far back and then I just got up to third and then made a bit mess of it so I had to make it back up again. But you found some good overtaking spots around the track? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, I like turn one. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. And I think you sound a bit further up later on? Yeah, I think we're starting third next time so hopefully we can run with Luke. I think we had really good pace that yeah, time. You, so, um, you got the fastest lap, one minute, 10.2, about three or four attempts quicker than the others. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll try to use that again. And um, yeah, see where we end up. Back in Formula Ford this year, I think you got uh, the F4 prize uh, test over the winter, but I guess that's too big of a budget from the Formula <laughs> Ford. Yeah, uh, to be honest, I really wanted to do another year in Formula Ford just yeah. to complete the learning process. And, um, you know, the guys, I have a really good bond with the guys here. Yeah. And they, they give me a good, good facilities to race at the front. So, uh, 
felt no need to change it just yet. The last time I saw you race was the Formula Ford Festival, and that went quite well. I guess you'll be looking to do that again in the Water Haze at the end of the year. Well, yeah, we're looking to do it every race. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I want that festival trophy back. <laughs> I want national title. I want, I want the Walter Hayes too. But, you know, it's going to be hard. But uh, we're in a perfect position to do it all. So if everything goes our way, then we'll be walking away very, very happy at the end of the season. Have you raced here at Kane before? Uh, once, like over two years ago. I haven't been back since. So yeah. uh, straight into qualifying today is a bit of a thrown in the deep end. But I think we came out all right. It, it, quite a different track to other ones you've raced at. Yeah, it's a bit more old school. Um, <laughs> it's very different. Uh, you got to carry a lot of minimum, especially through the chicanes. And yeah, the barriers are so close, so yeah, yeah it keeps you on edge the whole time. So. Enjoyable though. Enjoyable. Yeah, no, I really like the uh, the last turn in particular. is very yeah. fast. I like that one. So uh, no, no, it's a good track. It's, it's good for racing too. So it, it makes it hard for us drivers uh, to pull away. Well, well done, and good luck for later on. Thank you very much. So uh, third place, uh, Jonathan Brown. Second, Bryce Aaron, the winner. Luke Cooper, fantastic uh, race there, though, Chris, as we kind of expect with the Formula Fords. Yeah, they never they never fail to deliver, do they? Absolutely. Yeah. It's good to hear the enthusiasm. So thank you for that, Josh, and we'll catch up with you a little bit later. Okay. So uh, you may have noticed it yourself, Ian, is that uh, they've only recently realised that there's oil all the way up and over Avon Rise, oh. round quarry, and part possibly, and I can't remember what he said, but possibly part way down towards you as well. Hmm. Well, so we have a, another slight delay. Yeah. Well, I wonder if that's connected with the Chris Warden car that was stopped ah, that would make sense. then, because I can see the marshals working their way um, down the farm straight, sort of roughly the position where that car had stopped. So maybe that was the one that was putting out oil. I was going to say I don't think there could have been oil out for much of that race because of the times that <laughs> Jonathan Brown was no. doing. <laughs> no, no chance. No, it was uh, incredibly quick, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Right. Well, uh, it was it was brilliant to see. Fair play to uh, Low Dempsey Racing Boys. They were really going incredibly quick there, and be interested to see what they do a little bit later. Um, sadly, we got uh, the the odd little update coming in. Uh, Adrian Slade says he's not doing race two as he's got low oil pressure under braking and he can't risk the new engine. So that's a real real shame. Um, Lewis Bird confirmed that his dad reti is retiring from the second race due to either crankshaft oil seal or gearbox output shaft oil seal failure. Crikey, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Um, so there's one or two that are sadly falling by the wayside. There's at least one that's not in this saloons, I'm afraid okay. to say, and that's Rob Ballard, who got uh, hit off into the barriers, I think, up at Quarry Corner, sadly, and yet he'd... Uh, he'd been going well up until that point as well so doesn't look like they've managed to sort it i think he knew that that was going to be the case the radiator and things like mm. that the front were all damaged from it um but uh, a, a real 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 huge shame unsurprising to see some great support there in the comments coming in and again welcome to everybody if you're just joining us uh, and great to see your support and your comments coming in for your favorite drivers your favorite teams your favorite cars your favorite championships and series that's out there as well and we're only part way through. As you say, that was actually the first race that was a championship fight, wasn't it? Because the others have been either the one-off or a series. This next one is a championship, the uh, the saloons. And, of course, that is the uh, the Samco Sport uh, saloons. He says, as he remembers, he has to change uh, the banner at the bottom. So there we go, the Castle Coon Racing Club 2020 Saloon Car Championship, sponsored by Samco Sport. Uh Let's just quickly. Uh, ah, here we go, Celeste. Uh, thanks for that, Celeste. Much appreciated. That is uh, Adam Preble's better half, definitely better half. Uh, Adam and Gary changed their tyres again. Hopefully, better. Good luck, boys. And I don't know if you heard this earlier, uh, Ian. Is that they both put on uh, different tyres? Look at that. It's Tom Davis. Look, Tom Davis oh, is, is here. the man himself. <laughs> Oh, hang on. What we got here? Let me just be, I'll, I'll pause myself on that a second and uh, see what he's saying. Let me just mute myself just in case. You can't trust Davis, can you? No, it's it's for the best, I think. Uh, yeah, we'll hear a bit more about what the Prevels have been up to uh, in a moment with, with Chris. Um, but certainly Adam is the driver that's leading the championship at the moment. He is three points clear of Mark Sutton. So Adam, who has had two wins, uh, Mark has had uh, a win and two second places within class C, but I don't think anyone really has strung together four results out of four races so far this year, which is uh, 
which is quite something. Chris, you're, you're back with us. I am. Sorry about that. It was that, right. uh, VP Racing Fuels are down there and they're involved with us. And uh, and I've just been given uh, uh, some merch ah. from VP Racing Fuels. I've got to wear that next time because it's great news. This they are. They have uh, stumped up, of course, that new new smell. Uh, <laughs> they are the title sponsor of the finals day in September. Uh-huh. Those two race days. Excellent. Um, and so hopefully, you know, who knows? I'm st- we're still hopeful that we may have spectators watch this space and they'll be selling their merchandise there as well. And it is nice merch, I tell you. It really is good stuff. So I'm chuffed that I've got some as well. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's quite cute is that uh, Tom apologised. He says, I got you a big one, I hope a very large one. I hope that's okay. He's like, I think we're okay. I think we're okay. I locked down well. But sorry, I started telling you, Ian, that uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Prebbles changed to both of them, went on to a new totally different and i don't know the details which is probably just as well because it's plausible de- deniability then um <laughs> it, the different tires right and you'll see that they're in fourth and fifth on the grid have you ever heard of that no no that is quite <laughs> something isn't it so they've got rid of those tires and they've gone back to their previous oh, I'm, ones. i'm so. not surprised <laughs> thank you very oh. much for that celeste much much uh, uh appreciate that uh what, let me just see. <laughs> I'm afraid there's not a lot I can do about this, but Dave Hardiman says, uh, uh, hey, Dorsey, slight lag watching you from the safety car today. I assume he means time-wise rather than it being a lag as in negative, but who knows. Uh, <laughs> if you could kindly try and commentate 10 seconds ahead of the action, it should sort it out. So that's what we got to do now is we got okay. to commentate. 10 seconds before it happens. Is that all right? Oh, there's a chance we might get it right, I suppose. I mean, <laughs> it actually, it may not make much difference, actually, which is uh, sl- slightly worrying. Um, but OK, we'll, we'll do our best. 10 <laughs> seconds ahead. <laughs> That'll get, be good. But... Get my crystal ball out. Exactly, yeah. Ben Hindle says, have fun, saloon guys. Wish I was there with you. And I hear you might be coming back soon, Ben. That would be good. Um, Howard R. M. Burnett. QC. I don't know. That just sounds like a shout of QC on the end of that. Uh, want to wish Darren Duffield a good finish in the hot hatches today, racing his awesome PVE mini from all the Burnets in Western. Definitely. And he was going well until he ran out of fuel. And hence he said, more fuel this time. I mean, he was going amazing, wasn't he? He was. He was going really well. He was ahead of Stephen Jensen, you know, and Stephen's been in great form this season. So to run out of fuel, a lap and a half from the checkered flag, and that's good, especially when you realise that it's probably your own mistake as well that's you know contributed to that. Uh, yes. It's just, that's gutting, isn't it? I mean, I guess you know it's he's he's new to it, so they're probably yeah. learning that car and the fuel. Uh, uh, you know, they probably use a lot more fuel than last time because he was fighting for the lead, so it was good. Possibly so. Possibly so. <laughs> um, Dan Blake, uh, one of our local boys, really, but he races in the uh, Five Club MX5 races. He's looking forward to racing here at the end of September. Full grid of 42 expected. That's under your banner, isn't it? The 750. Yeah, so we've got a few 750 Motor Club races at the next meeting. Uh, I'm not but here. Not you. Yeah. But not me. Josh is here to, to, to look after the 750 side of things. But uh, yeah, we've got the uh, Five Club MX5 Cup. We've got the BMW Car Club Racing Challenge. That will have a big grid as well. We had a full grid of 34, I think it was, at Brands uh, a fortnight ago. And uh, also, they're the low costs as well. They're a late addition because they're ah. meeting at Ang- Anglesey, uh, sadly cancelled because of the restrictions still in place in, in Wales. So uh, uh, I know that Giles, our competitions manager at 750 Motor Club, got on the phone to Steve Weston and Steve said, yeah, I've got some track time you can have. And, uh, and we've got a slot for the uh, for the low costs as well. And they're always great fun around here. So uh, yeah. Watch, yeah, watch out for those in, uh, what, three weeks' time, isn't it? Good to see. Looking forward to that. Stuart Tinker Taylor from the Camp Soft Course says, great first race for the Fuffers. Roll on race two. I think he and I agree with that as well, to be honest with you. Uh, Tim Perry, one of the Orange Army. Hi, boys from post one. Dilly, 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 dilly to the Orange Army indeed. Uh, Peggy Spackman from uh, Slip and Grip Automotive, ready to cheer on Team Spiller. That is because we got Dave Spiller in his mini out in this one. And they are now making their way out onto the grid. So let's take you through the grid for this race as they come out to join us on the circuit. On the front row, pole position goes the way of number one, Simon Thornton Norris with a 112.122. 
Alongside him, the black Volkswagen Golf, number 50, Robert Ellick. Second row, Chris Rawlins in the red Volkswagen Golf, number seven, who did so well on the last race meeting. He'll be hoping for the same. Alongside him, though, is that stupidly quick white Vauxhall Astra, number six, Adam Preble. His brother, number three, loitering with massive intent in 91 on the third row with Dave Scaramanga in the white Volkswagen Sirocco alongside him. Fourth row should have been number six, Rob Ballard, and sadly, he's not there. Another one that seems to be missing, so it's an empty fourth row by the looks of it, should have been number 98, Mark Wyatt, in the very uh, famous round, these ear parts, uh, the uh, yellow Vauxhall Astra, but sadly, he's not out there by the looks of it. Row five. Now, this is good to see that he's out there. 25, John Lannan, because uh, Big John of uh, Rock Valley Automotive said to me that uh, that car had sort of gone up in smoke somewhere on the circuit. But he is definitely out there with a new car to the grid for us here, but not a new name. Number 39, James Blake, and is new to him, Seat Leon. I'm looking forward to this, but not as much as he is because this has been a project for a little while. So that is on the fifth row. Sixth row, one, two, three, Peter Elliston and two, eight, two, Dave Spiller. Seventh row, 26, Mark Sutton, second only to uh, Adam Preble in the championship standings at the moment. Alongside him, 67, Terry Thorne. Row eight is the brothers, 23, Stuart Hignall and number 28, Chris Hignall. And then bringing up the rear is uh, on the ninth row, one, three, three, Lewis Fiddies. And that is how you pronounce it, by the way, because I asked him. Think of plural of fiddy scent. All right. So it's Louis Fiddies and 88 Chaz Riles, in, who is the boss of iTech Racing, actually. And he's out there in one of the iTech Racing MGZRs. So that is the grid. It should have been 18. It's 16 with the demise of row four. But the green flag is waved and they're on the way out. It might not be the numbers that we're necessarily used to, Ian, but my goodness, is it still a one a fantastic looking grid and one that you know is going to be full of excitement. Uh, absolutely right. I mean, some great looking cars uh, on the grid, including some uh, some that are, are new to us, which is uh, wonderful to see. And your intrigue here as well, because you have got the Prebbles starting a little bit further back than they uh, than they normally would do. And Gary's just had. I think one finish so far this year, which he won. That was the second, first race at the, the last meeting. Let's so let's see what he can do from fifth Ooh. on the grid. Look at that, Ian. Look at that. The uh, that's spectacular, that's isn't it? All the way around quarry, isn't it? Yeah. So that's at least the drivers are getting this green flag lap. To sort of notice that that's there. I mean, actually, I noticed that most of them are going nowhere near it. Although Gary Preble is sort of having a good old run over it, isn't he? To uh, um, just perhaps see how much grip there actually is, which is important that's one of the reasons you have a green flag lap it's to to learn where the grip is and get as well as get some heat in the tires and we get to learn where not to panic mm. when we see uh, uh what we think is smoke going up into the air yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, just not. A, it's just a big cloud of dust probably exactly we can we can stay calm <laughs> <laughs> we, we can indeed so we've got simon thorns and norris heading around here i mean he's had a checkered season so far has he two uh class wins and two DNF so far this year. Still leads Class B, though. But uh, nine points behind in the overall championship. I think in fifth position. Equal fifth position at the standings. Twice champion, of course. Um, so, can he hold on in that Class B car up front? <sighs> you can't put anything past him, can you? That's no, the thing. No, not at all. Not at all. I mean, this morning... Logic was... says no, but logic doesn't seem to fit feature in saloon racing, does it, really? <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't. I mean, he was only less than a tenth, I think if I'm right in reading that, faster than anyone else in uh, qualifying this morning. Uh, 0.0, 0.076 seconds uh, ahead of Elick, and then Chris Rawlings 0.2 seconds behind, behind Thornton Norris. Of course, there's the four different classes although i think we've only got chris hignall representing class d today unfortunately just the smallest class yeah i mean but we've enjoyed a couple of good fights between the two brothers although stuart hignall in his citroen saxo team blast motorsport run uh is class c and, and as you say chris hignall in the team blast motorsport persia 106 is class d one's mm -hmm. a 1600 one's a 1400 but they still seem to get involved in fights although i think it's just when stuart's slowed up with a, a slight issue to be fair because that that's a quite a big difference in engine size isn't it to be fair it is it is but uh, yes, they have been even, even in match on occasion this year. So there we are, Gary Preble lining up fifth on the grid. We don't see that very often, do we? 
We don't. I mean, I think that they've got uh, both uh, he and Adam have gone. I've got to learn something, a little bit of patience here, haven't they, to, to come uh-huh. through from that. And uh, I don't know if they know the word, to be fair. <laughs> we'll, we'll wait and see. So the last couple of cars moving into their positions. Chaz Rawls, the last one in the 88 car, just getting into place. There goes the green flag at the back. So we look towards the gantry. Five-second board has been given. And uh, wait for the lights to go up. And engine notes are rising. They're being held. One light, two lights, three lights. There goes the fourth. The fifth light is on. The engine notes at their max. And long hold. Off go the lights. Everybody behaved brilliantly there. Adam Preble's got a great start. He's up into third. He's up into second. Elix in the lead in the black golf. Gary Preble's going slow. Gary Preble's got a problem, as has Stuart Ignor in 23, is slowing. Now Gary Preble's going, but he's now. We thought he was going to be bad from fifth on the grid. He's got to do even more. But Adam Preble into the lead ahead of Elec in the black Volkswagen Golf, but Stuart Hignall is against the pit wall down here, being pushed by the marshals. Uh, that's a shame, but a very good start then from Adam Preble to get up into the lead. Bit of dust being kicked up, as we thought it might be. Let's see what Gary Preble can do as well. At the start of the last race, he had a turbo link uh, pipe problem, which sidelined him there, but he's already made up about four or five positions here. But it's Adam Preble leading. Rob Elec is second in third place. It's the Number seven car of Christopher Rawlings, another goal. Fourth is the pole position man, Simon Thornton Norris. And Dave Scaramanga is fifth. And I reckon by the time he gets to Tower Corner, Gary Preble is going to be back up to seventh place from... He was basically last but one, wasn't he, when they uh, when they left the grid, Chris? But Adam Preble it is that's leading from fourth position on the grid. Great start from him. He's heading back towards you already. Yeah, here he comes with a very comfortable lead now. And he just needs to build that to a point where he can then just click it into comfort mode, I think. But Robert Ellick, well, the two TSR golfs are joined together. Robert Ellick, number 50, in the black one, just ahead of number seven, Chris Rawlins. Uh, Simon Thornton Norris, not looking comfortable there. He's down into fourth from his pole position. Dave Scaramanga in no man's land. But Gary Preble, goodness me, that 91 car, whatever the issue at the start, has gone because he's flying. Although it was a big old pop and bang as he came across the start finish straight hopefully that's just some excited noises from the car <laughs> <laughs> fingers crossed but he's certainly there he's on the farm straight now as his brother adam heads into old paddock for the second time in this 15 lap race adam in the astra twice a winner this season elec and uh rawlings there second and third fourth now is thornton noise fifth is scaramanga but for how much longer because down towards tower corner Gary Preble's right with him, as you can see there. He's going to stick behind him, I think. He's going to try and go around the outside, is he? No, it's too far back to make that work at Tower Corner. So I suspect Gary Preble will try and attack into Camp Corner to try and get fifth position away from Dave Scaramanga. Chris, what do you reckon? Uh, well, I'm looking now. He's coming down, is he? Yes, he's looking up the inside. Here he goes. He's thrown it well and truly up the inside. I think, to be fair, Dave Scaramanga knew that was only a matter of time and he did not shut the door. I wouldn't say he was a completely over to the other side, but he didn't uh, slam that door shut. I'm impressed I said that without sounding camp that time. I normally shut that door, but uh, yeah, he's through. So through goes Gary Preble up into fifth place. And I don't think that Scaramanga is going to have an answer. But uh, Simon Thornton Norris seems to have it cranked back up again on the back of Rawlins, I see. Yep, he has. He has indeed. He's having a look down the inside. But there's not really a gap there on the way into the S's. So he decides that discretion is the better part of valour. So Adam Preble pulling away in the lead. Rob Alec second. Chris Rawlings third. Simon Thornton Norris in fourth. But he carries a lot more speed out of Old Paddock than does Rawlings. And he will try and outbreak him into Tower Corner, but now he's still behind there, so he's still in fourth place. And he's got Thornton also be conscious now that he's got Gary Preble bearing down on him in fifth position. Be interesting to see the lap time this time for Gary Preble when he's, he's had this clear lap, really, um, because the first two laps he's been fighting his way through traffic. It's a big gap between the two TSR golfs now. Uh, Ga- uh... Ellick in uh, second place. Robert Ellick there, comfortably in second place. Chris Rawlins has fallen away. I don't know whether that's a slight issue for that red uh, number seven this time round. He's into the clutches of Simon Thornton Norris. Let's have a look at Gary Preble, a 112.174. Still not where I'd expect to see that car. Wouldn't you agree, though, t- lap uh, time-wise? Uh, yeah, I agree. Not quite there yet, is it? Best lap of the race, a 10.8 from uh, Adam Preble, 10.881. Uh, on the previous lap, and he's coming down towards me now. I can see that Gary Preble's now got his headlamps on, so that's the 
oldest trick in the book, isn't it? To try and uh, scare people out of the way. But I'm sure Thornton, Norris and Rawlings won't be phased by that. As the uh, Sayat Leon hairs past me down towards Tower Corner. Dave Scaramanga is there in sixth. It's a long way back then to seventh position. That's where you find the one, two, three car, which is Peter Elliston. So he's made up uh, a few places from his starting position. And then John John Laddon, you mentioned him in the build-up. He's there next up. And then it's the uh, the James Blake Sat. Nice, bright yellow car in ninth place. But lead us back with you. Yeah, good to see. He's got that car out. He's been trying to get that out for a little while, apparently. Gary Preble looking up the inside in towards camp corner of Simon Thornton Norris. Not quite managing to do it in that nimble car. Just able, interestingly, to get the uh, power on a lot earlier coming out of camp corner onto the start finish straight through Folly, heading up Avon Rise in towards Quarry Corner for the fifth time. But Gary Preble has certainly shown his intent. He wants to get past. And he, he oh, I thought he was about to launch him up the inside there, but three abreast. Sorry, three, line astern even. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, down the farm straight they go. Preble only a line or two back from Thornton Norris here. And uh, last time through, Rawlings actually just ahead of them did his personal best lap of the race, a 112.498. Now, Preble here has carried good speed out of Old Paddock. Can he use this to get effect? Flicks of flame out of the back of that Seat. But no, he can't make a move there at, uh, at Tower Corner. So he's got to wait for another opportunity. Making their way through uh, Bobby's and back towards you once again, Chris. Wow, that's just so quick how they come round to us. Certainly Adam's loving those uh, tyres that he's got on there. I'm just trying to remind myself, what did uh, Adam did a 113 in qualifying. He's now done a 110.8. I think he likes these tyres a bit more, don't mm, you? Looks like <laughs> it, doesn't it? But you would never credit that it would make that much difference, would you? I mean, Gary, I'm sure, is doing very, very different. What did Gary do? He did a 113 as well, and he's down into the 112, so still not fully comfortable. P part of it will be in the setup, won't it? Because they'll have the car set up to run on the tyres that they've been used to and not on some different tyres. And I'm sure, given a bit more time, they would get down to similar kinds of tyres or close to them, but they'd need to change the setup of the car to make it work with those tyres. First and second have gone through, but third, fourth and fifth right together now. You can just see them in shot at the moment. And it's a bit close this time. And Thornton Norris dives to the right. But uh, Th Rawlings covers that one. And Thornton Norris went to the left as well and found his way blocked there. Preble's going to try and go around the outside. It's a long, long way. And I don't think he's going to make that work. No, he's not. As they head out of tower and up to Bobby's once again. It's all single file through that part of the circuit, but they can try and fan out again now, Chris, as they head towards you for the sixth time. Yep, uh, here he's now. They're picking their way through traffic is the key thing to be aware of. And that, Gary Preble launches out the inside of Simon Thornton Norris. That was a bit more elbows out from Gary Preble. He's decided he's had enough of hanging around there. I think Simon Thornton Norris was a little bit caught by surprise on that one. Didn't think that Gary would do it. I think they're so wary of Chris Rawlings ahead of them, trying to work out when's the best place to make a move. I've got, I'm going to be interested with this, is that Gary Preble's probably thinking that uh, Chris Rawlings had a moment with his mate Rob Ballard in the qualifying session. Uh. What is Gary Preble going to do? I don't think he's going to take any prisoners now. And Chris Rawlings got a bad run through traffic, didn't he? He did, he did. So Preble's right with him now. Just say for Dave Spiller fans, he looked to be a bit slow past me. Oh, and now Rob Ellick's got a problem. Rob Ellick right past me has got a problem. I think he's been struggling to get it into a gear. He's got it back into gear now, but that means that he's lost a, a couple of seconds. And now Rawlings has Preble. Does he get Gary Preble down the inside? Not quite, but uh, certainly very close between those three. But just ahead of them, it's uh, Rob Ellick, second place man. He was, I think, struggling to find a gear briefly past me in the old pallet commentary box. And there you can see the gap from second to third does appear to have come down, Chris. Yeah, I mean, he's done well to make, to manage that, hasn't he? As Adam Preble crosses the line for the seventh time, that he's not under pressure yet, but it certainly has got a lot smaller. There he goes through there. I can't tell whether there's an issue there or not. Chris Rawlings in that third place. He's going defensive all the way through Folly. He know that Gary, Gary Preble and Simon Thornton Norris has got a good run through Folly. They're heading up Haven Rise towards Quarry. And I thought that Simon Thornton Norris was going to have a bit of an issue, a, a bit of a challenge there. But in fact, they're all trying to close in on poor Chris Rawlings there in the red, who's not showing on the screen. So he's obviously got a transponder issue. Yeah, looks like it. But uh, back down towards they come. Alec, about two seconds clear 
of uh, the third, fourth and fifth place battle. Different lines being taken by the drivers through Old Paddock. Thornton Norris almost has to dab on the brakes there, coming out of Old Paddock to avoid colliding with the back of Gary Preble. It was carrying that much speed out of the corner, out of Old Paddock, was Simon Thornton Norris in the car, but it still looks so unwieldy, that little Mitsubishi Colt, but it is an absolute rocket, isn't it, that car? Out of Bobby's they come. Back towards you again, Chris. Yeah, and Gary Preble sniffing one side, sniffing the other of Chris Rawlings. Chris Rawlings just keeps himself in the middle of the circuit. Gary Preble's not been able to put up the inside. That suddenly compromises him slightly. Simon Thornton Norris trying. Chris Rawlings goes tight on the exit there. Gary Preble towards the left as they go towards Folly. Simon Thornton Norris is trying to stick behind Chris Rawlings. They get past the back marker that probably just panic, thinking, how do I stay out of the way of this? Gary Preble's done it. Is he going to hold it up over Avon Rise in towards Quarry? I think. But then Chris Rawlings has got the inside. He's not been able to come back at him. Gary Preble's up a place. Yeah, up to third position then. And don't forget, he was pretty much flat last as he left the grid. But he's uh, well and truly in this race now. The thing is, he's got 2.8 seconds to make a problem. Elec, who again is struggling for a gear at this part of the circuit. So I reckon he's got... It wasn't just a one-off issue. It was a definite gearbox issue that he now has because he's really struggling for a gear, certainly at this part of the circuit, on more than one occasion. And Gary Preble is very near the back of the black golf now. What are we on? Lap number nine, so more than halfway through this race. Gary Preble could certainly go for second here, but he's, what, seven seconds behind his brother Adam at the moment. Yeah, I think uh, that's got to be a big ask, and uh, they just need to see it through. But, yeah, already Gary Preble closed... Not quite onto the back of Alec, but uh, that black golf. Oh, a big understeer through camp corner there. The front end just did not want to steer, and that has compromised him all the way onto the straight. Folly now. Gary Preble trying to find a way. He's carried that speed onto the straight. Great move. He's side by side with Alec, and Alec's going to have the inside line for Quarry Corner, but surely that's going to be too big an ass with the speed differentiation up into second. There goes the two Prebles leading the way. And Thornton Norris not too far behind, getting fourth place away from uh, Chris Rawlings there either. So Adam Preble leading past me on lap 10 of this race. He's done the best lap of the race, a, a 110.881. That's the best lap of the season so far in this Samco Sport Castle Saloon Car Championship. Second is his brother, Gary Preble. Third is uh, Chris, uh, is, uh, I beg your pardon, Rob Alec, number 50. Fourth then is Chris Rawlings. He's in the number seven car. And then fifth is Simon Thornton, Norris number one. Dave Scaramanga still sixth. Uh, just to let you know, Class C being led by John Lannan. Class D, of course, by, uh, by Chris Hignall. Lead us back towards you, though, about to complete lap 10. Yeah, Adams across and done it. Gary Preble in that second place. Alex still with him, to be fair. But again, massive understeer through camp, which then compromises speed all the way down the straight, all the way up to quarry. Simon Thornton Norris has got a good run, looking towards the outside at Folly. Now the switcheroo, but Chris Rawlins is doing a fabulous job, is that he just comes out and sits in the middle. He doesn't move and go defensive. But again, Thornton Norris looking to what's going to be the outside. He's got him. He's managed to power past him, heading up Avon Rise. Great stuff, that, from uh, Thornton Norris. Of course, he's leading Class B anyway. Not got too much opposition there in Class B, but he's up to fourth place overall now as well. Meanwhile, Adam Preble has just lapped the 10th place driver. That's Dave Spiller, who is still circulating, although he's maybe just not quite looked to be at full chat today, but he's still there in 10th position overall. Second now behind Adam Preble is Gary Preble. Third is Rob Ellick. Fourth is Simon Thornton Norris. So I guess Thornton Norris here, we're looking to get an overall podium out of this. If we can get past... Another golf. There's uh, Adam Preble already out of Bobby's, I think, Chris. He is. He's starting to come down towards camp now. The thing I love about Simon Thornton Norris, he doesn't care about the it being Class B, so being sensible. He just wants a race. Uh, uh, Alex, a long way back behind Gary Preble now, falling into the clutches of Simon Thornton Norris. This is where we've seen him understeer massively. And he is. He's now go. Oh, and he just stops before the grass there. But... The handling on that golf does not look great. And you can imagine, Ian, is that the speed that he loses, sort of like drifting wide with, with massive understeer. And in fact, Simon Thornton Norris is going to get him because he's a sitting duck all the way up to quarry, really, isn't he? He is. Yeah, he's done it. So uh, and he's now about to lap that Dave Spiller mini as well. That's still there in 10th place. And of course, Thornton Norris is... Just, well, about to go past him now. But they've all gone past the mini. So then you've got the two golfs. 
neck and neck. No recurrence of those gearbox issues, if that's what they were for, for Rob Ellick on the last couple of laps he's been through uh, through our paddock. So he's still there in fourth place. Just looking to see what other battles we might have. Actually, everyone else seems to have been reasonably good at separating themselves apart from uh, from their opposition. So the best battle is the one that's still on screen there, I think, for third place. Uh, potentially, it could be another battle because uh, Dan Blake was the first one that notified me of this, is that Adam Premble's lap time's considerably slower. And uh, you may notice that the lead gap is down to just two and a half seconds between Adam Preble, number 66, the championship leader, don't forget. So he needs to keep this. Gary Preble, 91, in second place, is closing in on him at an absolute rate of knots. Absolutely. 2.5 seconds the difference. And that is despite Adam Preble, we think, getting the lap record. We think that 10.881, more than 10.881, is more than a second underneath the previous lap record. So that, that could be something to keep an eye on. But now it's Gary that's flying. He's done an 11.6, his personal best lap of the race, to get to within two and a half seconds. They're turning their way through Tower Corner. What have they got? Uh, two laps to go at the end of this one. I reckon that unless there's a, a problem for Adam, Gary might well just run out of time here to uh, to get through. But he's certainly giving it his all, which is it's really been quite something. It is, uh, but they're picking their way through traffic uh, where Chaz Riles has got past Chris Hignall now. Those two are having a great fight. Chaz does a good job staying out of the way of the first preble. Now the second preble. That gap is down massively. That did not look quick from uh, from Adam Preble. He's back to 113s instead of 114s, but bearing in mind he's done that 110. What has he got left? Two laps to go. So this is his penultimate lap, but Gary Preble has closed right in on the back of him. You know there's going to be no brotherly love of going, well, no, I'm not going to get involved. Not a chance. Look at these two coming to towards you glued together and if anything possibly Adam Preble's Astra does have a problem because he as you say has been slower he's been nearly two and a half seconds or so slower than he has been in the early part of this and Gary Preble just slides up the inside there he's gone through old paddock through he goes into the lead can Adam try and fight back he's not going to give up here they're back alongside one another as they go through hammer down it's going to be Adam Preble on the inside line to the right hander at tower corner <laughs> can he go back through yes he can Adam <laughs> Preble retakes the lead from his brother he lost it at old paddock he got it back by tower corner this race has got one lap left to run Chris and it is not over yet <laughs> oh my word I mean that looked like a, a, you know a problem for Adam Preble's Astra and what a fight back that is now what is going to happen here down towards camp it's still Adam Preble that's done it has he sort of just realized oh my gosh that is uh, that's Gary coming back at me he's there sort of nursing that along there's some pop bangs I couldn't tell you which one that was from but they're both looking quick bit of a puff of smoke as they turn right from Gary Preble's car which can't have been a lockup so I just wonder whether the bodywork just as he sort of compresses to on the left-hand side to, as he flicks right. But at the moment, Adam Preble's got it by about two or three car lengths, interestingly. He has, but uh, they're heading towards Old Paddock. This is where Gary got it on the previous lap. But this time there's traffic. There's Mark Sutton, who keeps well out of the way. And I think, is that John Lennon as well? No, it's one of the other one of the other cars. And Preble's done it. He's gone around the outside. Gary Preble, that is around the outside of Adam there at Old Paddock this time. He's gone back into the lead. And Adam Preble is a few lengths behind. I think he possibly does have a bit of a problem because this time he's not able to fight back. He's about four lengths behind as they go through Tower Corner. And it looks like Gary Preble flicking flame from his exhaust as he goes. He's going to win this one, Chris. Out of Bobby's for the final time. Well, it certainly keeps the championship alive, if, if nothing else. Simon Thornton Norris in third. And as Dan Blake said, look at the smoke coming out of Simon Thornton Norris. So he's got to nurse that Class B leading car back. But here comes Gary Preble from stone last after a problem at the start. Takes the victory. Punches in delight. Adam Preble just, just got, crosses the line ahead of Simon Thornton Norris. Definitely a problem for that Astra. A 116 that last time round. But Simon Thornton Norris may have had smoke. But in fairness, he's still matching his best times or be sort of like half a second in it. That doesn't tend to be an issue. In fourth place, a great job there for number seven, Chris Rawlings. Where is Elick? He has crossed the line. Car number 50, he has crossed the line. I, and Adam Preble's actually pulled off onto the grass at the end of the pit lane here, by the way, Ian. So definitely an mm. issue for that Astra. There we can see it on the left-hand side of the picture. What a shame. Yeah. Well, it was, wasn't it? And you do just wonder if, because he was battling with his brother 
uh, Gary there that he was even more determined to keep going and maybe there's a problem with the car that was, was showing its hand a little bit earlier on and let's just hope that he's not risked any further damage to that car for the second race by uh, by battling on with brother Gary there but uh, it was a great race a great drive from Gary we know he's capable of that kind of thing but uh, to come back and get past his brother twice in the closing two laps uh, that was really quite a race although we do think the Astra had a have some problems towards the end there definitely we got like you say we got to hope that he's able to get that back out mm. again the last couple or the last car is it the last car it's thorn number 67 because the others were lapped takes the checkered flag so it is 91 gary preble in the seat leon cupra takes the victory which also of course gives him class a honors just ahead of his brother adam preble number 66 nursed it home into second place despite a valiant fight back or attempted fight back but it just couldn't last that half a lap extra. That's all he needed. Third place in Class B honours goes to number one, last year's champion, Simon Thornton-Norris. In fourth, number seven, great fight there from Chris Rawlins, just ahead of the his teammate, number 50, Robert Ellick, who clearly also had an issue in that black Volkswagen Golf. Hopefully they can get that sorted. Sixth, car number two is Dave Scaramanga. In seventh place, the Class C winner, number 25, John Lannan. Great job for the uh, Rock Valley Automotive run car. In eighth place, number 39, his first time out in that Sea Leon is uh, is great to see James Blake. He'll be delighted with that one, and he's got a growing confidence. Ninth, number 123, Peter Elliston in his Volkswagen Golf GTI. Hard to miss that one with the day glow orange against the black. Great job for the 282 car of Dave Spiller. The Mini, he comes home in 10th place. 11th, number 67, and second in Class B for the uh, Fiesta of Terry Thorne. Mark Sutton, second in Class C. So he was second in the championship run-ins, but that is probably a bit frustrating for him to come second in Class C. Third in Class C and 13th on the road, Chaz Riles, number 88. Stuart Hignall, 14th in number 20. Uh, sorry, Chris Hignall in number 28 and takes Class D honours. And a great uh, debut there, number 15, number one through three, Louis, Louis Fiddy. Uh, Fiddies, sorry, in his MGZR. So what a fantastic race. And we get to do it all again uh, a little bit later. Uh, well, ho hopefully all of them do anyway. <laughs> we do indeed. And actually just looking at those lap times then. So as I say, uh, Adam Preble, 10.881, uh, smashes the lap record there. But Gary Preble was under the old lap record as well, 11.6. And so too was Simon Thornton. Obviously did a 12.125, which is under the overall lap record. And just checking... Yeah, that's nearly a second underneath his own lap record from Class B as well. So some really good lap times there today. I guess it is just about perfect conditions. It's dry. It's cool. Ideal conditions for lap records this today. Yeah. I mean, the temperature's dropped, if anything else, I can tell yeah. at the moment. Gerald Howe says, fantastic race and fantastic coverage. Great substitute for not being there. Great work, guys. And Paul Wiltshire makes a great point. Who needs F1 racing with racing like this? Don't say that to Gary. He'll love that. But he is down there ready for the race. <laughs> so, Josh, down to you. I haven't got long, Chris. Come on. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Gary, that race was a little bit more dramatic than the hot hatches. Oh, yeah, I mean... Uh... I don't know what happened off the start. I just could not engage second for some reason. Um, ended up with a bag for the neutrals and uh, and then managed to click it into third. And, and obviously everyone saw I lost so much time. And then, um, yeah, I mean, Chris, Chris Rawlins was dangerously all over the place, to be honest. Uh, too much weaving. But um, managed to pick him off and, and get through and chase after Adam. But I'm, I'm guessing he, he must have had a... A slight issue because he didn't seem to have any power off the corners and uh, one, one in particular lap was sort of gave a good nudge um, out of Bobby's and uh, gave, gave him a little boost but um, I picked up I don't know it felt like a puncture um, we, we need to look at that there was a hell of a vibration and a shaking on the left hand side almost as if I had a flat tire so um, we haven't got long to turn it around the boys need to have a quick look at that and of course, you've got another race to do in the middle. Another race to do now. We've got to get back and get in the Honda. Well, congratulations. I'll let you go. Lovely. Thanks that. very much. Cheers. And uh, Simon Porter, Norris, the second, um, one past B, I should say, was third. Obviously, we haven't got Adam Preble as he's stopped. Uh, Simon, third position there. A very quick race, too. We had the lap record go uh, from Adam. And I think you were uh, going well, too, obviously, to get third. Yeah, that was hard work. Uh, fighting with the tyres for most of the race. They were too cold to start with, then they were too hot uh, rear end is coming around to me all the time i've got gearbox oil pouring out the bottom of my car right now <laughs> but we'll look at that in a bit but yeah good fun really good some very 
not dodgy moves, but some very close moves where you, you had to yield, otherwise you're both going to be in the barrier. So, but you know, apart from that, it was still clean. So, yeah, good fun, enjoyable. And sometimes in the saloon car race, you see the dap times drop away, but certainly you and Gary were flat out all the way through. Yeah, well, I mean, my car was getting really bad towards the end, lacking grip, uh, rear end coming around, just understeering into tower badly. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're not as consistent as they were last time, I don't think. But yeah, we were still pushing on as hard as we could. I was, felt I was closing to Gary and Adam and just needed a couple more laps. But in fairness, if I'd had a couple more laps, I'd have a <laughs> DNF with a pool of oil under the yeah. car now. So, yeah, it finished maybe at the right time. Well, well done. And hopefully we'll see you here back later on. Thank you very much. Uh, Chris, I've got time. There's class winners down here too. I heard the cars have gone out, but uh, if we've got time, hey, I'd like to talk to some more. Uh, go for it if there's another one now. We'll probably only get one more, I'm afraid, I'd imagine. Uh, we've got John Laddon, who won Class C. So we get John over here. Hiya. Uh, well done, and Class. Josh, Josh, yeah. just Josh, quickly got to say is that his victory uh, last uh, week at uh, last race meet meant that he actually proposed and got the answer yes from his now fiance Sophie. So <laughs> congratulations, John Lannan. Thanks, Chris. We're already planning. 2022 is the date. <laughs> do you do any uh, music? Do you do any live songs? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a similar story today though because uh, in qualifying the, the oil poured out everywhere and John's literally been spent another two hours solid getting it back together to get us out for the race again so basically almost a carbon copy of last time but an enjoyable race though out there for you yeah um, it felt good uh, a little bit slower than I probably should have been but right. yeah it felt good car felt good it's got to work out where there's probably like maybe half a second off what I probably should be but yeah, felt well, really good. Um, so, yeah, just happy that it got to the end of the race. <laughs> well, good luck for later. I hear the cars are already going out for our next race. We'll head back to Chris. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Well done. Thank you for that. Yep, they are. They're making their way around. And I do apologise. We got a message from John Potter. says, aspect ratio makes the ARS, whatever that is, look three feet wide, unwatchable. Apologies. I hope you enjoyed the little bit you watched, but we'll all stay enjoying the racing. And I hope it's good enough for you. Remember, we're not trying to do a TV feed. This is to try and keep as much going for you guys as possible so that we can bring you the action. And uh, with racing like that, what a way to do it. Chris Pearson sent me the photo saying, what a crazy race. Crazy race, wasn't it just? Right, the grid for this, and I need to do it quick because it's a rolling start. Front row, pole position, 41, Oliver Ball. Second, 112, Kevin Jones. Second row, 27, Bradley John. And great to see 23, Nigel Mustall here again alongside him on that second row. Third row, 21, Dominic Shepard, although we need to check if he's there because he damaged the front end. And 138, Sasha Kaka, driver of the day last race meet. He's there on the third row. Fourth row, 24, Tony Bennett. 56, Alan Hamilton. I know Team Hamilton will be watching. Fifth row, 241, Lucky Kerr, fresh off some great... Great racing in the Ferraris at Donington Park over the weekend. Number 20, Tim Woodman alongside him. Row six, last year's champ, 99, Jamie Sturgis, 81, Neil Greenland. Seventh row, 40, Jazz Sapra, 8, Kevin Bird. 175, Martin Thomas, and 458 in a Ferrari 458, Alistair Fazikas on the eighth row. Ninth row, 86, Jeremy Cook, 73, Michael Parsons. Eight, tenth row is 33, Paul Arbor, and 59, Del Brett. And then on the 11th row, 124, Sonny Gill. And one, two, three, Alexander Baldwin. So what what an array of cars, Ian. Brilliant lineup, isn't it? Fantastic uh, to see so many cars. I think we're going to have a really good race here. Lots of different types of machinery up front. Um, Dominic Shepard, I don't think he is there, unfortunately. Uh, you uh, mentioned that I damage he picked so. up. It was good to see that car back out in qualifying. A spectacular machine. It really is, yeah. Sadly, just sort of uh, missed his breaking point, apparently. He told Josh and onto the marbles and lost it at Tower. Safety car is out of the way, and we're about to get this race underway, and it is going to be Oli Ball's going to lead us across the line. Here he goes, and the Noble, though, gets a fantastic start. Kevin Jones sweeps around the outside for now into the lead by the time he gets a folly. Nigel Mustel up into third, just ahead of Bradley John in that big black with the blue and red stripes on that Mitsubishi Evo 9, up in towards Corey for the first time. What a great start there for Kevin Jones. F fantastic stuff, wasn't it? A great getaway from him. He's ahead then of uh, Ollie Ball as they head down towards the S's for the first time. It looks like Nigel Mustill there in the third position, I think. Then Bradley John fourth. And then it's uh, Tony Bennett in fifth place, the white, red and blue car. Then it's the 138 car of Sasha Kakad, the uh, Audi RS3, turning their way through tower for the first time. Then and it's uh, Kevin Jones with a good few car lengths lead over Oliver Ball. 
football who has won each of the last three rounds of the championship. Uh, of course, uh, overall and uh, within Class A as well, Kevin Jones, uh, not within the same class though. No, and it's good to see Kevin Jones back again with that beautiful noble. And it looks like he's been doing some work on that car because that is quick. Ollie Ball has been setting the pace. Tony Bennett's about to make a move up on Bradley John now up the inside, which means he's got ahead of Sasha Kakad. Those two were joined together in some amazing racing last time. And Sasha Kakad's actually got a good run there and is going to get past Tony Bennett. It's the usual thing with these GTs, Ian, isn't it? Strengths and weaknesses at different mm. parts of the circuit. Oh, such a variety of cars as well. That's inevitable, really, isn't it, that that's going to happen? You've got some real lightweight cars. You've got the Catrum type cars. You've got the Westfield of Alan Hamilton. You've got some much more heavyweight machine. You've got the, the tube frame car of Ollie Ball, which is just going past me now in second position. And he's certainly not given up the fight on the outright lead here because he's chasing Kevin Jones down towards Tower Corner that time, as you can see on the picture. Nigel Mustill in uh, third place in the Nissan GTR as well big red that's a heavy old car i shouldn't wonder and then you've got bradley john in the mitsubishi evo in fourth position out of uh bob as they go and back towards you for the third time second time even I tell you what, keep an eye on a great fight that's taking place there. Lucky Carer in the uh, orange, white and grey BMW and uh, last year's champion Jamie Sturgis out there in the Seat Leon. Those two are both battling out first and second in Class D and I know that Lucky Carer was looking forward to that fight. He asked me, is Jamie Sturgis in the race, in the entry field tomorrow? And when I told him yes, he was uh, really looking forward to that race but they're trying to fight with Tim Woodman and Alan Hamilton as well at the moment. Again, the variety is wonderful. <laughs> so is. So Kevin Jones back down towards me, Class C car, uh, and Class A behind him in the shape of Oliver Ball, who leads the Class A championship, but it's uh, Tony Bennett who has had uh, an almost perfect record so far this season. Uh, stopped one point, one fastest lap point within Class B. So he's at the top of the championship with 27 points, Oliver Ball's 24. Squeal of tyres from behind me, I think, was from Neil Greenland's car as he was coming through. But, uh, yeah, such is the pace leaders already back up towards you at camp for the third time. And it just uh, Joe's just messaged me to make sure I remember we've got to pick a driver of the day as well. So as we go through, sort of keep a mental note of who has really impressed you in this uh, so far in our local championships. Okay. And, and that does include the hot hatches as well this time, so you know. Okay. Uh, but Leader's already making it up. And Ollie Ball, I feel, is possibly starting to crank it up. He's not quite as quick as Jones, but you just feel that he's winding that thing up again. Yeah, he got down into the sixes the last meeting, didn't he? 6-2 in round three of the championship. He's not got into the sixes yet today. Best lap of 7.2 so far. Only a few hundredths slower than Jones. Those two really close together. And a great fight as well, actually, for fifth place. Uh, we'll perhaps pick this one up in a moment. It's between, in fact, we have picked it up. It was just going through shot there. Tony Bennett in the Catrum and Sasha Kikad in the Class C Audi. Absolutely together. One car, probably two and a half times the size of the other. But Tony Bennett's little Catrum winning out at the moment. They're having a real good fight. It's, uh, it is amazing, isn't it? Because we were watching that both races here last time. I know you weren't here, Ian, but it is what we uh, we loved here uh, last time out. Uh, front two are together because suddenly half a second taken out by Oli Ball, the 41, the uh, white and orange uh, Vauxhall Tigra silhouette car. Nigel Mustoy in third, uh, second in Class C, is uh, sort of in no man's land at the moment, as is Bradley John. I'm not sure Bradley John's car is going as quick as he'd like at the moment, you know? No, I think he had problems at the last meeting as well, didn't he, from uh, from what I remember reading about it. Uh, so we've got the first bit of Lapry going on, or about to go on here. You can see on your screens, that's uh, Alex Baldwin in the Honda Civic Type R, just keeping out of the way of uh, the Noble. And indeed, the Vauxhall Tigra silhouette, Jeremy Irwin's car, being driven by a few Ollie Ball. And flying past me goes that battle we're talking about between Tony Bennett and Sasha Kakad, and actually Alan Hamilton, second place within Class B, is reeling those in as well. So that's one to keep an eye out for as well during the course of this race. And then you've also got the Ferrari flying past as well. That's uh, Alistair Fazekas. 
Yeah, and that means that Michael Lyons is here, an incredible racer, and uh, he's he's coaching him and running that car technically as well, or mechanically, or whatever I'm supposed to say. So it's good to see him here out in that car. Here comes Tony Bennett across the line with that big Audi number 138, Sasha Kakad. Last time out was his first time circuit racing for Sasha Kakad. Uh, he's done some rallying from memory. I think it was rallying rather than rally cross, but I might be wrong. But he is absolutely all over the back of that. I mean, it is that little and large, and you almost feel sorry for Tony Bennett. It there, don't you really? You do, don't you? Because the size differential must feel quite intimidating. Yeah. Meanwhile, the two leaders have gone past me and still very close together, but no real change in the order threatened. We might get a change for third, though, because Bradley John now is right with uh, Nigel Musley. It was 1.8 seconds behind at the start of the lap, but he's right with him now. So that's for third and fourth. And then you've got Bennett and Kakad fifth and sixth. Uh, Alan Hamilton seventh. Tim Woodman. Uh, eighth in the cage from seven. Lead us back towards Ooh. you, though. And I just noticed on the camera, and it's coming to my view now, Nigel Mustel is now under massive pressure yep. from the fourth place, Bradley John. That's a C versus A car. C for Nigel Mustel. It's such a monster, that uh, big uh, Nissan GTR. But uh, Bradley John, we know that Evo 9 is quick. Look at that, Ollie Ball, fastest lap of the race, 117, uh, 107.026. But as you say, he's done a 106, and I've got to say that Jeremy Irwin has said their target is 105 this year, and you can't discount the possibility, can you? Well, well not at all. The lap record in GTs is a 104.959, set by Craig Dolby in that Volvo yeah. S60. As we've had the change for third at the S's, uh, Bradley John's gone through ahead now of Nigel Mustill. So that car, the black Evo, goes through ahead of Mustill now, but then... It's all about fifth and sixth and a better exit from the S's that time for Sa Sasha Kikad. But the more agile Caterham of Tony Bennett able to keep Kikad at bay. I almost wonder if Kikad's almost holding up the likes of Alan Hamilton and Tim Woodman behind him. You can see them there on screen as they head through Old Paddock. Nick Lucky Kara in the back of that shot as well. He's broken away from Jamie Sturgis now, hasn't he, Chris? Yeah, quite comfortably, hasn't it? The lead two were picking through a couple of uh, battling back markers there, which momentarily bought them. In fact, it has again. They're coming come into your eyesight now, Ian. Very close together, the front two. Yep, they have. And they were sort of either side of a back marker there down the farm straight. But it's still Kevin Jones leading in the Blue Noble from the orange and white uh, tube frame Vauxhall Tiger with the familiar flirtations uh, advertising down the side of it. A head down towards Tower Corner. And again, it's still really close between these two, but no sign yet of uh, of any move being made by Oli Bull. What are we on? Lap eight, so about halfway through this race. He's still got plenty of time. Maybe he's just picking his moment. Yeah, you wouldn't put it past him. I mean, uh, it, it, at the end of the day, the times that uh, Jones is putting in at the, the, the front, you know that Kevin Jones is, is, is keeping him honest. Across the line, he comes to complete the eighth lap in his 15-lap race. So they pass that halfway mark now. And they're both absolutely flying. Both down in a 107. Bradley John is going to be coming round camp as we speak in that big Evo. He's down in a 108. But are we going to see more from him towards the tail end of this race? He's not going to put undue pressure on it. Nigel Muster, who apparently just ran across the grass uh, somewhere that lost him some time. But that car is now lapping down in the 111s, I see, Ian. Yeah, absolutely right. As the leaders are back towards me again. So best lap of the race so far to Bull. A 107.026. You do wonder if you can get past Kevin Jones. If we could just go a little bit quicker than that, even. But it needs a clear lap to do it, which isn't always easy as you get to this stage for Castle Coombe GT race, because the wide variety of cars and differential of pace takes effect. Muster really is dropping back now as I watch the Bennett Kakad battle once again. They're coming up towards uh, the back of Delbrett's Porsche to lap it. I suppose one thing here for Oli Ball there in second place, Chris, is that he is leading his class and it's all about class points in the GT Championship, isn't it? It is. He doesn't need to, but both of them have just gone down into the 106s. 106.606 uh, for Oli Ball and 106.641 for, uh, for Jones at the front. So both of them are now pushing this and they're pushing each other, I would say, as well. Yeah, looks like it. So that's 606. Yeah, it's not quite as quick as he went at the last meeting because he did a 6-2. But as you say, the five's the target, and definitely that looks like a possibility at some point 
not perform much longer. They're gonna Lucky Kira is about to make a move on Woodman, by the way, ahead and up Avon Rice. So keep an eye on that one, Ian. OK, will do. I was just watching uh, Alex Baldwin being lapped as well by the leaders. Uh, waiting for Lucky Kira to appear into view. And, oh, yeah, there he is. I think he's in the same place, isn't he? Behind Tim Woodman as they uh, as they head down towards me. Paul Arbor goes past me in the kit cart. Sasha Kukan having another go at Tony Bennett there, but not able to make it through. As the, uh, as the light changes on some of the cameras, I know that it's a little bit hard for you to see the track on a couple of them, but the sun is kind of coming back into their glare, which uh, I'm afraid, you know, bearing in mind that uh, Kevin, everyone has done an incredible job there to, to get these static cameras out there to bring us some pictures. But uh, uh, Mother Nature is sort of having a little bit of a say in it at the moment. Nigel Mustill comes on to start finish straight to complete the 11, uh, the, his 10th lap, and that car definitely seems off the pace and it's difficult to tell Ian because you think it sounds different but of course it is a throaty sound from that Nissan anyway isn't it, it yeah it is and uh, I was wondering the same thing myself a few moments ago uh, leaders have just gone past me and they've just lapped another car I think the Sunny Gill BMW in actual fact and Bradley John now very much out on his own in third place there's the leaders going out of Bobby's and back towards Chris for the 11th time just going to watch the battle between Bennett and Kaz come through because that's a very busy part of the circuit now with back markers ahead of them. So this could be where Kakad could strike and they're going to try and go alongside one another. Kakad's got his, well, he was briefly alongside, but actually in a straight line that Caterham was a little bit quicker and Tony Bennett able to hold on from Kakad down into Tower Corner. So still there in uh, fifth position. And I see that Lucky Care has got past Woodman, and it's basically they're all picking their way through these back markers, which is compromising them, isn't it? I think that is that uh, Kevin. No, it's not Kevin, but that's a golf that they're getting past first, isn't it? And the yellow BMW there is Sunny Gill, as you say. And so it's compromised quite a few of them. But uh, all of a sudden, that means that Tony Bennett has pulled away from the Audi of Sasha Kakad. So that settled that one down. But uh, now that Lucky Care in 241 BMW has got past Tim Woodman in the orange number 20 car, he is already reeled in Alan Hamilton, would you believe? Wow. So what have we got left? Four laps to go for him to try and uh, to make a move. That would put him into seventh position. And it's not for class position, of course, because Hamilton's in class B. And he's second in class B behind Bennett at the moment. And Kara leading class D. Down towards me, they come at the S's, those two. They've just got past that golf, as you mentioned. And they've got the uh, the Cook BMW to, to pass, the Jeremy Cook BMW to pass as well uh, momentarily. Kara trying to put a bit of pressure on Hamilton there down into Tower Corner. And he's almost alongside him there as Hamilton trying to get up the inside of that back-marking BMW. I think Kerr is having to follow on behind in the end. And they're on screen, the leaders, Chris. Yeah, they've just gone past you, haven't they? And they're yeah, still they have. glued together. Oli Ball means business without question. But this great fight that is a three-way fight. Alan Hamilton, Lucky Kerr and uh, Tim Woodman, 56 2 4 one, 20. Line astern as they come across the line. That is actually enabling Jamie Sturgis, I think, to close in on them a little bit. So need to be wary of that one. But we look into uh, the distance and coming down towards camp, ready to start the penultimate lap. It is Kevin Jones after that fabulous time start from the rolling start. Number 112, that glorious noble. So good to see one of those out here racing. And he is leading the way, but has never been able to relax because Ollie Ball, 41, and that Tigre silhouette, number uh, 41, he was never going to let him take a breath of fresh air, was he? <laughs> not at all, not at all. Now, one thing to watch here is whether Nigel Mustill might be caught for fourth place because over the last few laps, Tony Bennett and Sasha Kakad have been really in the big Nissan. So we'll see if we're going to have a change there. But as you say, uh, oh well, two laps to go for them, a lap and a half to go for our races. Now, we're still absolutely nose to tail. It's not changed the order throughout, really. Um, Bull is though, running out of time. He's going to try and make a move down towards Tower Corner. Still the Noble ahead. He's not really put a foot wrong with this race, as far as I can see, Kevin Jones. It's been really good up there into what? Bobby's. Someone who must have made a small mistake on that last one. Alan Hamilton's lost two places. He's uh, lucky Kira's passed in that BMW and gone off into the distance. Tim Woodman is also just ahead of him. So I'm not sure what happened that. 
that does suddenly mean that he has lost a place in Class B because, of course, second up to second now goes Tim Woodman. Uh, yeah. On to the final lap, though, goes our leader. So that is an interesting fight for second and third coming towards you now, the orange and blue cars for yeah. Class B. Yeah, watching those. And th the reason, well, one of the reasons that's interesting is because in every race so far this year, the top three in Class B has been Bennett, Hamilton, Woodman in that order. And it might yet be this time because Hamilton is alongside. They've got the Alex Baldwin caterer that they're lapping, but Hamilton has made it back through. He's back up to second place. So uh, if it stays that way, Chris, it's going to be the same order uh, for the first five races this season within Class B. The leads have just gone past me for the final time then. And it's still Kevin Jones leading. They've got back markers still with themselves as well. The through tower corner. They've both made it through safety, but uh, ball is about four lengths back as they make it into Bobby's for the final time. You can see them apexing Bobby's now and sweeping back onto Westway. So back up towards you, Chris, for the final time. It's going to be Kevin Jones who is going to win for the first time this season. Yeah, here he comes. They've just got past Jeremy Cook's BMW. On to the start, finish straight. They go. Kevin Jones takes the checkered flag and a great victory and class C honours. Second place on the road goes to number 41, Oliver Ball. But it still is good for his championship aspirations because he has also got the class A victory. Look towards the distance for the big black Mitsubishi Evo. Here comes Bradley John. He's going to finish third place and second in class A. So that's still a good haul of points for him. Down he comes towards the chequered flag. Just to say, in Class B, Woodman has got back ahead of Hamilton for second place. Uh, that wow. happened, must have happened up at Quarry Corner because it was uh, Hamilton ahead over the line. So I'm just looking to see if Alan Hamilton can get back ahead in the final couple of corners. Through Tower Corner they go. This is for second place in Class B and eighth and ninth overall. Doesn't look like he's been able to do it yet. And they're heading back into your site, Chris, as they come out of yeah. Bobby's. And Nigel Mustel, 23, held on to fourth place and second in Class C. And uh, just ahead of Tony Bennett, who finished ahead of Kakad. So Class B victory to Tony Bennett again. There goes Lucky Kara finishing in seventh place. And it was the 20 car of Woodman that uh, finished second in Class B, eighth overall, just ahead of Alan Hamilton, comes home with still a third place in that Class B. Jamie Sturgis just behind them, second in Class D in the 99 car. Uh, Jazz Sapra has already taken a chequered flag in the number 40 car. That's given him some silverware as well because he's third in Class D. 12, 4, 5, 8 for Zikas in the Ferrari. So well done for him for that one. That's fourth in Class C for him. So a great first drive here at Kazakum. Uh, at Still getting used to that Ferrari 458. And so good to see it out here. It says 455 on the screen. I'm sure it's a 458. Uh, 13th place is uh, an addition to the program. It was the number eight car of Kevin Bird in his BMW. 14th, 175 Thomas. Although I assume it's Kevin Bird rather than Chab. I didn't actually notice. I might be making a wrong mistake there. It just says Bird. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, 14th, 175, Thomas, 15th, 81, uh, Neil Greenland. That gives him fifth in class, considering he was third in the championship standings. That's probably not what he wanted there. Uh, Jeremy Cook, 86 in 16th, 17th, number 73, Parsons, 33, Arbor. Uh, Sonny Gill in 19th takes class F honours and 20th and final finisher, Del Brett in number 59. We did lose the uh, 1, 2, 3, Baldwin into the pit, sadly. So a bit of a problem for that car. So they're now queuing to try and make their way in. And they're going to go down towards Josh very soon, which is good because, again, I need to run down to the uh, to the loo, I'm afraid to say. Uh, Stuart Tinker Taylor says, great tigerish race by the Tigra. I would agree. That kind of summed that well. He was desperately trying to, uh, to do it without taking any undue risks. And I think that was some sensible racing for the two class leaders. So uh, they made, made the good work of that one. It will be the hot hatches next. So I'm actually going to uh, flick down to Josh now to bring him into camera so that uh, I can then run downstairs. So, Josh, I'm bringing you in now and it's over to you, mate. Hey, thanks, Chris. I just got, as you can think, see in the background, Kevin Jones and uh, Oli Bull, the top two. And hopefully we get Kevin out of uh, the Noble and we have a chat with the winner as the rest of the uh, pack head to uh, back to the paddock to prepare for their second race of the day. We've got Bradley John in the big Evo making its way in. You can see how much higher uh, roof level that car has got. Kevin just getting a, a bottle of water and hopefully we'll get him over here uh, in a moment's time. He just turned the engine off on the, uh, the winning car. 
And then after this, as uh, Chris said, we'll be having a second run of uh, all our races that we've seen already this afternoon. So uh, Kevin Jones just having uh, uh, some water and then we'll get him uh, over here. Can we get um, Kevin over here, please? So we get uh, our winner. Well done, Kevin. A, a really tight race there with Ollie in the box. Yeah, that car and Ollie have come on from last year. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no way was there to leave him, especially that's, with the traffic as well. I guess that's a, a big part of these races with such a difference in cars out there. Yeah, there's a hell of a difference in speed. You know, some cars you're lapping four times, you know, so uh, it, uh, yeah, makes it interesting. <laughs> I just hope they see you. And with him right on your bumper, you've, oh. got, you've got no time to rest. There's no, he's one section out the back. He's quicker than me. Um, and uh, it's all I can do to hold him in that section. And I can pull the rest of the track, but he's always quicker through that one bit. So great driving on his part. And the two unique cars to yeah, fundraise yeah, in Yeah, absolutely, it. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tell us a bit about your noble. Um, car I bought brand new. It was a yeah. road car in 2003 on my wife's birthday. She constantly <laughs> reminds me. Um, and gradually I ran it as a road car and then gradually we developed as a track car and to what it is today, a full race spec car. But it's right. great to see you and you obviously drive it well too. Thank you very much. Well done. We get Ollie uh, in now to speak to us uh, who was chasing Kevin all the way through that race but couldn't uh, quite get past well done well done Ollie uh, a really close race over Kevin that was it was really close I mean he got the jump off the start which was fair um, and then sort of gauging it in the first few laps and we were pretty equal um, I think I was maybe a bit deeper on the brakes he had a little bit more on the exit and so um, you know it was to and fro and then it was sort of okay well an opportunity presents well I'll try I tried to box him in some of the traffic um, but I you know with with the slower traffic you don't want to cause a three car shunt and no. so you know you if you take an opportunity if you see it but you know we didn't quite there nearly in the last corner yeah. but then last corners are never good places to <laughs> overtake so um yeah I mean um it's a shame didn't didn't come away with a win but it was a great race hopefully everybody enjoyed it and um and yeah, really pleased we go on for the one this afternoon. For anyone watching at home that hasn't seen your car before, tell them a bit about it. So it's a Vauxhall Tigra silhouette, which means there's no Vauxhall and no Tigra in it whatsoever. <laughs> but it, it resembles the, the shape of it. And it's got a 2.3 EcoBoost turbo um, from the Focus RS, completely modified um, sequential gearbox and a live back axle. So pretty simple. Um, but yeah, when it's when it's on it, it's really on it. And we're just not not quite got the edge today, but we'll see for the second race. Well, great uh, driving. We look forward to it later on. Thank you. And in third place was Bradley John. So we get Bradley uh, in to have a chat in a very different car, much higher car than the uh, two uh, GT cars in front. But the third place got past the GT3 Nissan. Yeah, yeah, very proud of it. To be honest, um, we had a few issues this morning, but I've got got across those issues now, and it seems to be running fine. So I'm just happy to come back with a third, really. Yeah, it's a car that perhaps you wouldn't expect to be able to take it to the GT cars, but uh, you managed to do that. Yeah, no, it's um, it's certainly a car that's uh, com competable to be number one up there. Yeah. Uh, just really got to get used to it. Again, much like these guys, uh, quite, I guess quite a bit of work gone in to get it where it is. Yeah, well, there's been a five-year project to get where it is now, and you know, there's still always things that we can imp increase on and improve on. Um, but yeah, it's just great where it is. Well, and uh, looking forward to the race later on now. Yeah, can't wait. But look forward to seeing you there. Well done. Thank you. So third place there, Bradley John, second Ollie Ball, and the winner, Kevin Jones. So that brings the end to the uh, GT race, and we'll be going uh, into the hot hatches next, so a run of everything that we've seen again earlier on, Chris. <laughs> I wish I had that Not sure if Chris is back, therefore. Sorry, but, yeah, I am. Yeah. I am. Sorry, mate. He is. I'm back. Um, yeah, I'm just looking. We've got a few of the cars are not in the right place. Um, and even Steve Weston's just gone, I don't know. So uh, thanks, Josh, for that. We'll get you through this grid as it should be, at least. And we'll take it from there. So, uh, yes, there's a, there's like a few gaps and there's some people that have kind of stolen backwards and forwards. So we could have a few penalties. They're off on the green flag. Let me read it as it should be. 
Front row pole position goes to Gary Preble in number 191 with 881. Sam Stride, who interestingly is back out there, which is good to see, Ian, because we know he had an issue, so he is out there. Second row, 15, Sean Govard and 14, Nick Gwinnett. Third row, 25, Nathan Nichols. Should have been 169, William Oakley, but with the fire you described over there, it's no surprise he's not there. Fourth row should have been number 40, Adrian Slade. We said earlier about the oil pressure that he's feeling and therefore he has decided it is not uh, appropriate to, or, or it's a bit too much of a risk to take that car out there. So he hasn't. Fifth row, 81, Tim Ad Oh, sorry. Uh, Joe Dorrington is also not there on the in the 21 car. That one went pop in the pit lane as well. Fifth row is 81, Tim Adams, 69, Stephen Jensen's. Row six, 47, Tony Cooper, 34, Will Self. Row seven, hopefully with enough fuel this time, 119 Darren Duffield and 89 Ross Parker. Eighth row, number eight, Nick Adams, 211 Chris Southcott. Keep an eye on him come through the field. Uh, ninth row, number nine, Mike Wyatt, 117 Lewis Clark. Adam Perrett in four, 12 Lee Waterman. On the 10th row, 11th row, Graham Cox and 24, Sophie Morgan. Row 12, 155 and Paul Dickinson. 13th row, 79, James Camphor, 113, Sean Deacon. 14th row, 987, Mark Pope, 39, James Blake. Row 15, 74, Mike Bland, 68, Nick Mizzen. Row 16, should have been 84, Steve Bracegirdle, but that mini was damaged in qualifying. And 76, Dean Clayton. 17th row, Matthew Barrington in 23, 53, Paul Bird. And on the 18th row, 71, Simon Hughes and 265, Gary Franks. But uh, towards the tail end of that, uh, sadly, there was a, a few gaps that people had sort of stolen up through. Um, and I think they had enough time to rearrange them at the front where a couple had done that, but not so much towards the back. But hopefully it won't cause too much of an issue. I guess the thing is, is it's a series rather than a championship. So it's probably not too big an issue, I guess, in principle, Ian, at least. Well... Yeah, that's, that, that's a theory, isn't it? But uh, it's still very closely fought and very competitively thought, fought even. Um, we had a lap record earlier on as well to Gary Preble, a 112.931. Uh, two tenths underneath the lap record that was previously held by Josh Harvey. He set that last July, 113.125. So new lap record to Gary Preble in the hot hash earlier on and to Adam Preble in the saloons. Wow, fair play. They're doing well. It does seem very quick out there, doesn't it? That's for sure. It does. Uh, hello from Post 3, Fran Elson. Sally Slade confirming Adrian Slade not out low or pressure under braking. Uh, I like this from Chris Dennis. He said, uh, some great racing and coverage. Just thinking aloud, how about a historic special saloon car, uh, class in the GT race? Maybe a trial class for 2021 working with the classic sports car club who do run a small series for these old cars. I do like the sound of that one. But it is the Hot Hatches, and of course it's the Hot Hatches sponsored by EBC Brakes, and they're out there, and uh, and again, not so much into the right places towards the rear, but it doesn't matter. Let's uh, let's go racing. We'll leave that to the officials to sort out, and uh, and and if anybody needs penalties, they'll be dished out during this race. But uh, for now, we're going to go racing. Remember, this is a 20-minute race, which a couple of them said was a bit long because it was some heavy fighting. Five-second board has been given already. The front two are desperately trying to uh, wind their civics up. They're looking towards the lights. Nothing yet. One light, two light, three lights. There goes the fourth. On goes the fifth. Up goes the engine notes. Long hold. And off they go. And initially, Nick Gwinnett got a good start in number 14, but then suddenly stalled. Nathan Nichols, what a fantastic start in the uh, number 25 car. He's up into third place already. The two Civics, though, off the front row, absolutely side by side. Sam Stride's trying to power it around the outside, but surely Preble with the inside in towards Quarry is going to make this one count. I need to wait to see them switch. What are we going to see? Gary Preble, but only just. Yeah, pretty much side by side between the two Honda Civics then, but Gary Preble with his nose in front. He won the earlier race, of course, by 11 seconds in the end. Sam Stride there in second place for the moment, and then I think it is uh, Nathan Nichols in third position here. Nick Gwinnett in fourth. Sean Govard fifth, Stephen Jensen up to sixth place in the mini as well. Could start from him because he started uh, back in, well, nominally 10th place, but we had lost a couple of cars, of course. So Ad Gary Preble is that's leading by about five car lengths as they head into Bobby's for the first time. Everyone else trying to make their way through Tower. Uh, Sam Stride second, Nichols third, Gwinnett fourth, Govard fifth, Jensen sixth as they head towards you. 
Yeah, I'm hoping we're not going to have an issue. The medical car seems to have broken down on the infield here. It is out of the way and it's on the start finish straight. So it shouldn't, in theory, be an issue. But of course, it means the yellow flags are waving here as that uh, the 4 by 4 is uh, is on the grass on the infield here. But everybody else carrying on through. Gary Preble from Sam Stride. Nathan Nichols, great start there up into third. But Nick Gwinnett with his, he got a good initial start, but the second phase just bogged him down. Well, he's put that behind him and he's now all over the back of Nathan Nichols. Yet again, it's going to be a good fight involved in that Class F car. Yeah, Gwinnett's got a good exit, though, out of Quarry Corner, down towards the S's they go. And yeah, the Clio's through up into third position at the S's. So Gwinnett third, Nichols fourth, Govard fifth. Then we'll Gary Preble getting away out in front here. As far as the minis are concerned, well, Stephen Jensen with that great start, he's well clear of his nearest class rival. And that is the 119 car of Darren Duffield, who earlier on today uh, ran out of fuel a lap and a half from home cruelly meanwhile preble it is that leads out of bobbies for the second time uh, the good news is the medical vehicles managed to find some driving is tucking itself away now to where it would normally go but gary preble comes down towards us to complete the second lap and he's got a comfortable lead now sam stride looks slow now is that particularly slow was that an optical illusion no, 116. I don't think that's where Sam Strider would expect to be. He did have the issue in the first one. Up into third, as you say, Nick Gwinnett, number 14, in that red clear. And in fact, Sean Govard, number 15, has got that uh, Class C car absolutely wound up all over the back of Nathan Nichols, who's in turn leading Class B. It is a, an incredible dichotomy about knowing whether to actually have the fight when you are leading your class. But I'm afraid they enjoy their fighting too much, don't they? <laughs> oh, I, I think I think they're doing. The classes in this are so mixed up as well, aren't they? They um, You've got the A's, then an F, then a B, then a C, then an E. So you've got five different classes, I think, in the first six places. So really, it's every man for himself and the classes are a, a little bit secondary, dare I say it. Sean Govard now in... Uh, Class C lead is trying to take the fight to the Class B leader, Nathan Nichols. The two of them overlapping as they head into Bobby's that time. They're going to be side by side, and it's Govard that's gone through. Yes, Govard's gone through to fourth place there. Back ahead of uh, Nichols then, and up into fourth position. But Gary Preble's already passed you. He's just gone past, and uh, Sam Stride is under some huge pressure now from Nick Gwinnett. That car is not healthy. Something's not quite right. I can't remember what lap time we were getting out of Sam Stride earlier, but Nick Gwinnett, the red Clio, is looking to try and carry the speed up, even rising towards quarry. Sean Govard is trying to stretch his legs ahead of uh, Nathan Nichols in that uh, number, 20, uh, number 15 car. Now he's got past number 25. As they go up round there, uh, he's... Uh, it, it, it's, I'm hoping it's not too much of an issue for Sam Stride. Yeah, of course, he retired from the first race. He only did sort of one flying lap. And that was a 15-9 in the first race. So he's, he's actually gone a little bit quicker than that. But that was on the base of only one flying lap in the in the first race. He's got Gwinnett right behind him, though. Gwinnett last time through did a 14.9. It's a good lap time from him. Uh, what did he do? He did 14.8 in the first race. So he's got a little bit more in the tank. The good scrap just came past me now, and this involves the Fiesta and a couple of the Hondas. So that's being headed at the moment by the 117 car, which is the Clark, Lewis Clark Fiesta. And that is for 13th place. Oof, yeah, I just saw that one come through the picture there with uh, Sophie Morgan just behind, I think, isn't it? And is that, who's that just behind? Uh... Is that Adams, isn't it? It's uh, it's Adams in the number eight car just behind them. But uh, leader's already up round Quarry Corner. And this time, Sam Stry's managed to stretch his legs. And he's down sort of at least on a par with his quickest lap time. So maybe he's managing to clear the throat or at least manage whatever the issue may be for that car in second place. Excellent. So uh, just watching Preble come past me now on, what is he, lap five already. Uh, it's a 20-minute race rather than a time race. We've got 16 laps out of it earlier on. Then you've got Sam Stride in second with Nick Gwinnett still right behind him. Second and third. Sean Govard fourth. Nathan Nichols fifth. Stephen Jensen still sixth. Then it's the 81 car, the Adams, the all-white Civic. And then uh, Chris Southcott and Will Self, the two red Peugeot 205s. Yeah, I don't know the answer for Chris Southcott as to whether that is a new car or just a new livery, but... 
I'm I'm going to venture that it's a new car to him because he's yeah. not where we would expect him to be, is he either? No, not at all. So Usually. leader's already. Sorry, mate. I was going to say leader's already through, and uh, you know Sam Stride. Actually, he's just done a one fifteen point four personal best, and he qualified at a one fifteen two. So actually, he looks like he is about where he would expect to be. But yeah, Chris Southcott's normally one of the pace setters, isn't he? And I was expecting a fight between him and Gary Preble today. Yeah, of course, he won the first two races of the season, Chris Southcott, didn't he? That was in the wet here. At, and then uh, it went bang last game. time. Yeah, it did. He got the fastest lap in the first race before it expired um, during the first race. Sam Stride also had engine issues at that meeting. Oh, and Stride's got problems now because he's got his left-hand indicator on and his, yeah, he's going to pull into retirement. I think he's probably going to coast it back to the pit lane, but uh, Nick Gwinnett has gone through to second. Sean oh, Govard no. will go through to third and it's not been a happy couple of meetings for Sam Stride, I'm afraid, has it? No, I mean, I just ironically said that he'd done his personal best and he was back to around about his best time, so he would clear the throat and it would appear not. It looks like, uh, is that Southcott getting past uh, Stephen Jensen? It yeah. is. That's not yeah. a class fight, but that is important to allow Southcott to progress forward a bit more. But there goes Gary Preble in the lead. I've just noticed that Tony Cooper's in 10th in position so it's interesting how the uh, the second fastest lap time put him a bit further down and he's not been able to pick up the fight that we adored in that first race. He comes here just behind uh, Stephen Jensen, actually, who's still trying to come back at the red 2-1-1 car of Chris Southcott. It's intriguing stuff all the way through this field, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, what's Cooper's best lap time? A 15-8, so he's lapping faster than several of the cars ahead of him. So he has got the pace. But it's not the track position as Preble goes past again. He and Nick Gwinnett now, both rather lonely in first and second. And for that matter is Sean Govard in third place. All three of them leading their respective classes, as is Nathan Nichols in fourth place. But then, then you've got a battle because you've got um, Chris Southcott and then you've got Tony Cooper. He's got past Stephen Jensen now, so he's up to sixth position. He's going to fight with Chris Southcott here. I'm wondering if that's not his regular car because it has got a novice cross on the... Well, we know it's not his regular car, but uh, it has got a novice cross on the back of it, which um, <laughs> Chris, Chris Southcott doesn't, doesn't, doesn't need. No. Uh, <laughs> he's a bit more experienced than that. But he's, now got that he's, put, he's put a ringer in, one or the other. <laughs> one or the other. But he's got Tony Cooper right on his uh, hatchback now as they head back towards you. Which is interesting because Erling Jensen was coming back at them, but Tony Cooper's got a good run down in towards camp as they got past one of the back markers, but not quite able to do it. Chris Southcott knows better than that. It was Franks in the mini they got past as uh, uh, Stephen Jensen goes past. Again, Tony Cooper looking at Folly up the inside. He's, de he's desperate to try and make that move up past Southcott. That's a B versus A, and they're both sat second in their respective classes, but they don't care. Their skis have rolled up and they're having some. Certainly are. What's well, the ten and a half minutes to go? So just coming up to the halfway mark in this race. Stephen Jensen in there as well. He is in seventh place. Eighth is Tim Adams, who only made his UK racing debut here at the last meeting, um, what, four weeks ago. And he's got Will Self right behind him and Ross Parker too in the uh, EF model of Civic. And that's the fight that's uh, capturing my attention as they go past me. It was just going through camera shot there. I think Parker actually getting alongside Self now. So the Civic and the Peugeot alongside one another there. But Self holds on to it. And he was trying to thread it down the inside of Tim Adams as well. But no, it's still uh, Adams in the white car holding on for eighth place. Oh, it's gone straight on at Bobby's, as I say that. Oh, oh yeah. So he's going to pick his way through the tyre chicane. And uh, he's lost two places because of that. Nicely done, though. But here is that fight that we were talking about. Chris Southcott and the red 2-1-1 at Peugeot with uh, Tony Cooper just behind him. Tony Cooper again looking towards the inside wall. Oh, no, Chris Southcott goes, not on your life, and snaps across his nose and makes sure there is suddenly no gap by the time they get to the business end of the right-hand folly, which, of course, is largely, well, I think not largely. I think it is flat out as far as I'm aware. So uh, you have to have the, uh, the big boy pants on for that one, I think. <laughs> Past me goes uh, Matthew Barrington in the Clio. He's about to be lapped by third place man Sean Govard in the little Peugeot 106. Nathan Nichols still there in the 25 car in fourth place. Teddy Cooper now is in fifth and ahead of Chris Southcott. So that's changed on this lap. 
and he's pulling away actually from Southcott as they head down towards Tower Corner for the ninth time. Can Genson make a move past Southcott as well? Not yet, it would seem. Second place in the mini class, Darren Duffield goes past me as well. He's in 11th place overall, Jensen 7th. Well, of course, in the, uh, the first race, we got uh, 16 laps completed and uh, Gary Preble and Gwyneth, the top two, have just completed nine laps so far, eight minutes, 20 left to go. And uh, still, there's just so many mouth-watering, intriguing fights. But yeah, Cooper up into fifth position now in that silver 47, which is, hasn't gained the position in the fight. However, how far away from the... 4.655 seconds, but Tony Cooper is actually lapping three quarters of a second quicker than Nathan Nichols. So that's not done in practice, yet, isn't it? No, it's going to take five or six laps to get there, isn't it? And we've probably got six or seven laps left to go in the race. So it's going to be touch and go whether Tony Cooper can, can do anything about Nathan Nichols in the uh, fourth position overall and the Class B lead, of course. But Cooper just trying to stretch his legs, still away from 2 1 1. Chris Southcup. Oh, uh, Gary Preble's picking his way through a lot of traffic at the minute, but he's done a good job there going through, across the line to complete his 10th lap. And uh, it, basically, I've always said it, is that one thing worse than back markers is battling markers. And there's probably about half a dozen of them all together there. And he's picked his way through there as if there was nobody really there. Mm. And you know, you know, do the same, but might be a bit more struggling because it's a Clio and could get easily mixed up as being one of the sort of other cars, really. Yeah, I guess uh, I guess so. Could soon get lost there. So that possibly plays to Preble's advantage. Although I noticed that Gwyneth's got his lights on now. His lights are blazed to let the slower cars know that it's coming through. But he's got one, two, three, four, five bat markers ahead of him between himself and the race of Gary Preble. As we've Just got point out, Ian, coming down the straight towards you now is Nathan Nichols and uh, Tony Cooper in the Silver 47 is closing incredibly quick. Yeah, it's 2.8. It was 4.6, was it, the lap before? 4.5? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's come down quite a long way then. So give it another couple of laps and they'll be together, I reckon. And that's Class but B lead, isn't it? It is. So this is the perhaps the most significant battle on the racetrack. But going with Tony Cooper is Chris Southcutt now. They both did similar... That's us, in fact, Southgate did his personal best lap on the previous lap, a, a 116.2. Best lap of the race, still to travel and surprisingly, a 113.1, but not as quick as he went in the, in the earlier race. Gwyneth's just gone through in second. Getting through, oh, getting through this traffic. I thought one of the back markers at Folly was just going to slap a cross on him. There, but thankfully, at the last minute, saw it. And here comes 15. Over. Over. He's doing a great job there, leading Class C as well as third on the road. There's Nathan Nichols. There's Tony Cooper. That was how quickly they crossed the line there. The gap is 1.017 for that Class B lead. So this is absolutely alive as they head up. Someone's obviously locked up. It looks like it was only a lock-up because no one's off up there. There's no yellow. But Tony Cooper is going to come out of quarry now, glued to the back of Nathan Nichols. This is part of the yeah, they're heading down the farm straight, more or less together. We've got... Uh, is that Gwynnett that's pulled off down here? I think it might be Gwynnett that's pulled off down here. Oh, and Cooper's all over the grass. So too, though, is uh, Nathan Nichols. Cooper's got ahead of him but they were both over the grass under yellow flags. I wonder if possibly there's some oil being put down there so for, to have them both skating off like that. Cooper's gone through ahead of Nichols now. It's up to third place. Then it's Nichols. Then it's uh, Southcutt. But Gwyneth, I think it is, that stopped down here, Chris. Oh, wow. So what's that as at the S's? Oh, yeah, we can see yeah. it there now uh, that uh, he, he's just stopped there. The camera's slightly out of focus, unfortunately for us. And I don't think there's a lot we're going to be able to do that because you can see that's right by the side of the track. But you can just make out the car stop there and uh, and out of it. And yeah, that, that although none of the others seem to be squirreling under, uh, under the oil, do they? But also I noticed, by the way, Nathan Nichols has lost the place to Chris Southcott as well. So that cost uh, Nichols more, not just the Class B lead, but down to fifth place overall. Fourth Southcott is the Class B class. It's not the end of the world, although he's actually coming back at him, heading up Avon Rise, because he wants to get back at uh, Tony Cooper, doesn't he? He does indeed. Nick Gwinnett's um, out of the car. He's just looking at the left front wheel or the suspension. And he's realised there's nothing you can do, so it's going to get over the barrier now, which uh, will please the marshals down there, no doubt. So it's Preble leading in Class A, Gover second, leading Class C, and Tony Cooper third, leading Class 
uh, Class B. Then it's Chris Southcutt in fourth place, number 211. And fifth is number 25, Nathan Nichols. Sixth is Stephen Yenton, but only just he's hanging on, really, from Chris Self. And, uh, well, Self should say. But Jensen here having a much stronger race than he did earlier on because he's a long way clear of Darren Duffield this time, who is still circulating. He's got an another two or three laps to go as Duffield to uh, make it to the, end, to the end this time. We've got the uh, the meatball flag going out. Simon Hughes from the 71 won the Civics. Obviously got something wrong with that car. But, uh, the officials. Uh, Nathan Nichols has got past Chris Southcott, uh, but he can see that silver car disappearing off into the distance, much to his frustration. And yeah, there's Will Self. And uh, Stephen Jensen. So Self has got past him. Down to seventh goes Stephen Jensen. Doesn't change the class honours. And uh, and again, a great job being done by uh, by Parker as well, because uh, Ross Parker sat there in third place in class B. First time back out again and first time in that car. Yeah, no, he's doing really well, having a really strong drive there in uh, eighth place overall. As I watch Nathan Nichols, he is back ahead of Southcott then, but only just Southcott in the 205 looking to try and fight back. Nose to tail through Hammer Down towards Tower now. Nothing you can do there, I don't think. Big screech of tyres that comes from the number 81 car of uh, Tim Adams, who's there in ninth place, just ahead of Duffield in tenth. But uh, we're into the last two minutes of the race now, Chris. Yeah, we are. Uh, let me see. I've lost track of where uh, where my leader. There goes Sean Gover. Uh, he's now in second place. The leader's with me at the moment, Gary Preble, on his it's own. Really, it's not. There's not too much traffic here at the moment. Okay, so Treble has gone through, and then it's a long, long way back. 25 seconds back is Sean Gover. I think he's just heading down the farm straight now. And then third place is going to be Cooper. I'm looking for him. And he's, yeah, he's not a million miles behind Govard, actually, but he's got three back markers still ahead of him. Gary Preble, back with you. Uh, yes, here he comes. So what have we got on the clock? we got one minute eight, one minute seven. So he goes on to his final lap this time round. Absolutely in control. And like we saw last time, Ian, is that he's back down into the 16. So three, three and a half seconds off of his best time. I cannot, it, it won't be any issue, will it? He just sort of goes, well, there's no point stressing the car anymore. And, and I already am. Well, absolutely. He's uh, using that car as we know in the 750 Most Club Hot Hats Championship uh, too. So he want to keep it uh, in good order for that. I think the next round for that is going to be Mallory Park in October from the top of my head. So a little while away. But he's passing me now then for the final time. Gary Preble looking to well, do the double as far as Hot Hatch is concerned and, and go for a third win in the day, of course, as well, having won in the Saloon Car Championship early on. He's just turning his way through Tower Corner now. A couple of slower cars ahead of him. He probably doesn't really need to pass them particularly because he's got such a big lead as he heads into Bobbis for the final time. Yep, so we wait to see our leader coming to our site. Is he going to try and get past these cars? Here he comes into my site. Uh, no, that's very slow for Gary Preble. He is still coming down, but that is an incredibly slow pace. He's coming down here. Um, bearing in mind, he was doing 116. So he just crawls it across the line. 121 in that last lap, Ian, instead of the 113 best. And I wondered if he was going to pull it off. So I know that we said about taking it easy, but that looked to me as though some kind of issue may have suddenly reared its head again. He's struggling to get it up even lives by the look of it. Second place coming towards us. Great job there in the number 15 car. Sean Gover, brilliant job there. Thumbs up as he crosses the line. He's going to be delighted. And I know he's got a lot of family watching this race. There goes Tony a great fight. So sure as well, they're going to down in 10th place that he's up there finishing in third and takes Class B honours. So, first place, Preble, Class A honours. Second place, John Cover, Class C honours. Third place, Tony Cooper, 47, takes Class B honours. Brilliant job, brilliant job. 2-1-1, Chris Southcott up into fourth place. Nathan Nichols with a problem, just creeps across the line as well. 
And he actually means that he lost a step on the Class B because uh, South got, as I say, in 4 2 one, one. That's Class A. Stephen Jensen in fifth place takes Class E honours, and he did finish ahead of Will Self. Those two were dosi do your partners through the entirety of that race. But Will Self, number 34, finishes in sixth, which gives him third place in Class A. 89, Ross Parker finishes second in Class B. Great job. Eighth, number 25, and third in Class B. Creeping across the line is Nathan Nichols. Then it's the 81 car of, uh, of Adams, that, uh, that being because we've got a couple of Adams out in there. And, and, of course, the 81 car is Tim Adams in the Class F on the Civic. So he takes Class F. Aaron Duffield, 119, second in Class E again, 10th on the road. 11th is number 8, which is the other Adams. And that car, Nick Adams, the iTech racing uh, uh, Honda Civic, was fighting back through the field quite well. Second in Class F in the end in 11th. 12th, number 24, uh, Sophie Morgan, third in Class F. 117, Lewis Clark in uh, 13th. 14th, number 9, uh, Mark Wyatt. Ma uh, sorry, not Mark Wyatt, is it? It's um, I've got Mike Wyatt. Mike Wyatt, thank you very much. I know it was very close. Uh, <laughs> then you've got Mike Bland, 74 in 15th. 16th is number 68. And second in class C is uh, Nick Mizzen. Adam Perrett, number four in 17th. 18th, 113, Sean Deacon. That's third in class C as well. 19th is 95. And third in class E, the minis, is uh, Paul Dickinson. James Camphor in 20th place. 21st is number 76, Clayton. And Matthew Barrington in 23rd hughes 71 we possibly lost at the end there at honda civic show i don't know whether it's taking a checkered flag but frank's 265 the mini uh in 24th place but what another great victory there for uh gary preble it, uh, it, it was an issue at the end edge was he still creeping when he came past you well, the problem is he's not come past me. He's stopped on the farm straight. Uh, there's a marshal in attendance. So you were right, I think, Chris, that there was a, a problem there for Gary Preble right at the end. His car has stopped on the farm straight. So I don't think he'll be talking to Josh Barrett this time, unfortunately. I know. Um, we don't even to find out what the issue was. That that cut that no. photo. Uh, by the way, is uh, is not uh, me uh, is not him stopped on the <laughs> photo. That's Chris Pierce. Uh, although, sorry, where I've zoomed in, that it means that we've lost the CPE photo. So, if you're going to put a watermark, if you can move it nearer the car, Chris, that would be great because I feel bad that I've robbed it just because I wanted to zoom in on the photograph to see it uh, a little bit better. Let me just uh, zoom out so that we can. There you go. There's the uh, there's the watermark CPE photo. Um, great that he's out there taking these photos and then pings them through on Messenger for me, so we can see a photo when I get the chance on uh, Messenger. Right, I can see that Josh is all ready to uh, get himself involved on this uh, stream. Are we bring him in? And the drivers are still just on their way in. But sadly, Josh, you probably heard you're not going to have the victor with you, I'm afraid. No, we heard, um, didn't we, earlier that Gary Preble Foy had problems with the Sayers at the end of the uh, his earlier race, and now problems with his Honda too, but he still won every race he's competed in so far. So we've got Sean and Tony over the other end of uh, Park Fermo here, so I'll try and attract their attention. Yet Sean, who's now uh, investigating his, his car as well, so we're, hopefully all is okay uh, with his Peugeot. So now he's getting his team to take a look uh, too. Sean, you like for a chat? Yes. Yeah, Sean's making his way over now. Uh, second place uh, there for you, Sean. It like if there was another lap, you might have won it overall. Oh, Gary, I promise you. Yes! <laughs> it was actually me driving the car, not Will. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was. Uh, I had a great battle with Nathan to start with, and I thought that was going to be it all the way through. But. Um, I managed to get past him and then uh, just kept my head down. Um, I could see Nick getting away. Um, and Gary, obviously, he was gone. And then I saw Nick pulled over. Um, and on that cool down lap, then I saw Gary pull over. So, so yeah. With these cars doing two races in a day, they were quite highly strong. A few issues. Obviously. Yeah, my, mine at Touchwood at the moment is um, <laughs> we had more issues in the first race. Tracking was out a little bit. Right. Had a puncher on the rear right uh, with five laps to go. So it was a little bit of a handful. Um, so that time it was uh, it was much better, much better. Thanks to Will and his crew. Yes, it's quite a lot of work that goes into the car to prepare it before a race. Yeah, season. definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, Will's worked his uh, his butt off, <laughs> keeping it on the track, and uh, I've helped him obviously. So um, yeah, it's been it's been well worth it. Good and, and obviously, um, I guess originally a road car, but lots of um, 
stepped up since then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the previous car I managed to, to bend, so this right. is a, a new shell. Um, and it's coming good, yeah. So it's obviously a lot of money spent, but I think everybody's in the same boat. So. No. And now we're looking forward to the last meeting of the year. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I've got um, all my wins now, so I'm just uh, hoping you know, I keep it going to, to the next round. Well, good luck. Uh, see you Thank back you in a much. few weeks. Thank you. And then Tony Cooper took third. We gave it Tony uh, over two. Another podium. Uh, but a very different type of race there for you, Tony, because you had to work your way through the order. Yeah, I went out there with no expectations because I didn't get a second fast lap in the qualifying. Um, so my aim was to pick off, uh, I think it's Jensen's, Jensen, Steve Jensen, Steve, I think, yeah. in the Mini and the Honda to my right, which kind of happened and then just drove as fast as I could. <laughs> and I didn't realise there was a few retirements, so again, I shouldn't really be here, but I was <laughs> expecting to be here. But the car was brilliant, there was no pressure, I just enjoyed it. And doing now two races every uh, day, you said the last time about being worn out. Is that more difficult than perhaps one race uh, in the day? No, I prefer two races. Yeah. I wish they were 15-minute races because <laughs> physically 20 minutes in these little cars, you're working really, really hard. Um, even the young guys are, so let alone us old ones. So I think 15-minute races. Because it's a new series still, so I guess then that sort of input can be put into the racing club and the drivers and perhaps yeah, that might get changed. Yeah, the guys think the same purely because you're just waiting for that checkered flag, especially if <laughs> pressure, but it is physically hard work. I didn't think I'd have the energy to come and do the second one. From, from some guys didn't come out, so I don't know if that's the reason or not, but either way, that was a nice race. It must be great to have so many cars on the grid as well. Mm, yeah, it's brilliant to see. It's, it would be nice for the spectators, but the online, you know, the live guys, because there's something they can probably relate to at some time yeah. in their motoring history. <laughs> Civics, Minis, 106s, Saxos, so um, yeah, all attractive colours and stuff, so and a nice Bridge, you can't ask much. I'm um, no. sure some people at home have probably got a car that they could easily convert into this no, series. It's not easy, well, but it's possible then. It's more than possible, and there's loads of help within the club yeah. and within the hot hatch guys. And um, there's a few new ones out this weekend, and they're all doing fine. So, yeah. It's growing all the time. Let's hope it continues into the last meeting. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, so only makes it competitive and good for us. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much, thank and you. good luck uh, later on. As um, as Chris and Ian been saying, in three weeks' time, the final uh, event for all of these uh, series and championships, but uh, still plenty of races to go to, uh, today, Chris. Yeah, there certainly is. Thank you for that, Josh, as I uh, try to find my mouse and leave you to break. Thank you for grabbing those. So uh, that's Josh. We'll shut the van door and... Uh, the mighty orange army is it's, it's the men and women in orange they look like they stood there like the men in black don't they and they're going to be uh, welcoming the uh, the sports car trophy or the uh, the, the the sports car challenge as uh, as it's also being called as well uh, i hope as well ian has been noting down the, uh, the 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 drivers that are standing out for him at the moment and of course josh you need to be able to do that as well uh, we we are uncertain. Peggy Spackman's just messaged saying no race dates in October anymore. Only the uh, the October is the Autumn Classic, isn't it? The last ra we were hoping to put an extra race in that got canned of a month or so two ago. Sadly, that they just Steve wasn't able to get any take from that. Sadly, which is a real shame. So uh, yeah, the September is the uh, the closeout of the season. Uh, thank you to Emma's that said great race, good stuff from the Castle Coombe circuit. Uh, definitely lo loads of entertainment. Howard R. M. Burnett says, well done, Darren Duffield, for having enough fuel this time. Absolutely. And he finished second in class. Again, a brilliant job uh, for his first season. He really is a, a, a very impressive driver this year as with wins and second places in his mini. Uh, great to see this. Uh, Deborah Humphrey just had a message from, uh, from Hubby and Diff is in. And Mark Wyatt, the yellow Astra, will be out in the saloons for race two. Well done, Interceptor Racing. Uh, good job I was home and able to take down spare parts, definitely. Uh, and thanks to Mark for meeting me halfway to save me making the whole journey so I could get back and watch the live coverage. I'm glad that we feature on your priorities there. I say we. I know it's not we. It's them. I know. I know. But it's so good that you rush back to uh, to watch the, uh, the the live stream. And uh, thank you so much for those getting involved with all the comments coming in. It's great to see so many of you enjoying the feed. And uh, and again, great job by Kevin, uh, and of course his son Greg, that's doing an awesome job down there. 
which is not an easy job following this action because he's got to try and pick where to put those cameras when there's so much going on. And, and Ian will, will confirm this is that because we've been enjoying the uh, the coverage of this. And, and frankly, and there's just so many different places that he could choose to, to focus on. And, and he's having to pick one. That's right, isn't it? But but why not pick Castle Key? Why, why not? Pick, no, I uh, meant around the circuit. No. Don't say that. Oh, right. Oh right, he's got okay. the cameras picking oh, right. which camera to focus on, and he's okay. And, and you know, there's there's been stuff going on through the entirety of the field. It's been amazing. There has, yeah, no, there has, there really has, and it's quite difficult because I don't know sometimes whether I should be looking at the uh, at the feed in front of me or just looking out the window, which is what I normally do, of course, here at uh, Castle Coombe, and very often it is actually showing me the same thing, um, which is useful because then I can talk about what you are seeing at home or on a campsite in Paul or wherever it is that you <laughs> happen to be watching us from or well, Cape Town, I think we had as well, didn't we? we so, did, uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, he's, he's doing a really good job. Uh, and it's, that's really added something, hasn't it? So, uh, yeah. And Roly Hamblin has messaged saying, tell Dave Hardiman to take his hands out of his pocket. Definitely. Uh, it's got to be done. Oh no, this isn't necessarily good. Uh, Alan Hamilton says, hi, Chris, disaster in race one. New clutch that I fitted a few weeks ago started slipping again when I was fighting with Tony Bennett, etc. Same thing happened in the last event. Ah, oh, so that'll explain that sort of fall down through the order from Alan Hamilton, won't it? It will, because he fell behind uh, Tim Woodman as well, didn't he? Uh, yeah. In that first race, which was the first time that he'd been been beaten into third place this season. So does Alan indicate if he'll be back out for the second race or, or not? Yeah, he doesn't yet. Um, oh. Let me just put a little message uh, for that one. He's got a bit of time. So we'll wait and see whether he's going to. And again, don't forget that we we got to make some notes as we're going of uh, of drivers that are standing out from you. And I've got a pool of about five so far. I think. That's okay. Uh, but, and then between us, we got to pick a uh, a driver of the day, uh, and so many are, are deserving of it. Uh, Stuart Taylor, Stuart Tinker Taylor, sorry, is uh, looking at the back of that camera shot he's seen there. I can see where I should be watching from. I know the camp soft core. Uh, oh, and uh, we're talking about further afield. Lulu Tupu, uh, thank you, Castle Coombe, from France. Welcome from France. Bonjour. Bonne de douche. <laughs> what, what's wrong with that? <laughs> fluent, I, know mate. Learnt, I know where you've learned your French, Chris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fluent, mate, fluent. Right. Uh, we are missing the number six car. Ah, and I'll tell you why that is that 66 is out now, but is the number six car, if that makes sense. It's not the blue one, it's Same the black car. one. So they've switched drivers, basically. Um, let me just go to this one. So the grid uh, is or should be as followed. Front row again, 35, Mike Jemvy, 73, Alistair Smart. Second row, 206, Nicholas Limburg. See if he gets as good a start again this time. And David Crayham. He is out there. That's good to see. Number eight, David Crayham. Row six should be six, Richard Gilman. But it's not. That gap is, is sorry, there's a gap there, Neil uh, Harrison, number five on his own. 50, Norman Lackford, which means that it will be, he says, I've just uh, realised I've not got that there. It will be John Gilman that's going to be out there this time in the 66 car. But, of course, he's had to start at the back because of the change of driver. Yeah. OK. So we've got them on the rolling lap. Just coming past me now. Thirty one, Mike Genvy took the win by 19.5 seconds. Did a best lap of 104.952. Let's see if we can match this. We've got uh, seven cars, as we did for the first race in the end. Not quite getting the, the full eight that we were hoping for. But they're heading around Tower Corner now. Mike Genvy then very much the hot favourite for, for this race, but he didn't make the best start in the first race. He was jumped off the line by Lindbergh, wasn't he? So we'll see what happens this time around. Someone has asked, what's the fastest lap record currently held at Coombe? And I've lost, forgotten what that actually is now. Well, I know that Josh looked earlier on and he looked at the OSS lap record, which was in the twos, um, which I, uh, I've lost that message, but I'll find it again in a minute. Um, because I guess that might be the kind of time that Mike Jennifer might be gunning for. Tommy yeah, because I twos. think it was an F3, wasn't it, that did it from memory? I know Greensaw had it before the chicanes, but uh, obviously it was a bit different. Yeah, right. anyway, here we go. 
Here we go. Yep, and it is going to be Genvy's going to lead them away, but or oh, just timing it about right there. I think was uh, Crayham number eight. He's going to go around the outside, but he's being swamped now, and it's back into the original order. And uh, I think I'm just pausing because I think Limbo's got a cracking start yet again in the Radical SR8. And as they flick right, I think he's had to settle for second. Though, so Genvy is in the lead. Yep. And he certainly is. They head back down towards Mill, down towards me for the first one in this race. Lindbergh in second place. And who is in third at the moment? The answer to that question is that it is the, uh, the 66 car then of Gilman. Then in fourth place, it's number 73, Alistair Smart, who was on the podium in the first race. Turn their way out of Tower Corner for the first time again it's a, it should be a 20 minute race this time we had, we had about 15 in the earlier race though because of the uh the david Crayham car that was stopped in a dangerous position yeah the david Crayham car that got a fabulous start there but just uh sort of checked out a little bit in the end but uh interesting to see that Limburg at the moment is keeping gem v honest but i think we saw that in the early stages in the first race as well gem v just sort of gradually gets that thing wound up i say gradually what's he done a 108.428 what was his fastest lap in the first race do we know it was a 104.952 gem v so, yes, he's still got some time to find in that thing. Limburg is going for it, isn't he? In the early stages, though, to be fair. And up into third has gone the 66 car of Gilman, that time, this time being John Gilman. Yep, down towards me they come. Through the S's goes Jan V. Lindberg just trying to go with him, stay with him in the early laps, maybe put him under a bit of pressure. And, uh, yeah, John Gilman third, Alistair Smart fourth. David Crayham there in number eight in fifth position. Sixth is number five, which is Neil Harris. And seventh is the number 50 car of Norman Lackford. Rounding out the field already, Mike Genvy heading out of Bobby's and back up towards you. And I've just had the answer. Thanks, Peggy Spackman. It was an F3 car. It was Dan Clark in uh, Riken and Robertson Racing in 2005. 59.387. Wow. Went off to race in the States, didn't he, Dan Clark, in uh, IndyCar for a, for a bit, as I remember. He did. Lead has already gone through, and uh, I, I'm wondering whether – I'm just going to check the times. No, it's an optical illusion. I thought that Crayham uh, – in fact, Smart, sorry, I thought was closing in on Gilman, but an optical illusion. Keep an eye on that, then. As, uh, Genvy, yeah, he's pulling away now from, uh, from Lindbergh. 2.3 seconds the gap at the beginning of that. He's done a 4.487, so he's already gone faster than he did in the earlier race. Let's see if he can maybe even get beyond the 64-second barrier at some point in this race. So he's about five seconds outside uh, Dan Clark's lap record. Driver from Yorkshire originally, Dan Clark. There's uh, Gen one hell of a lap time, isn't it, as well? It is absolutely phenomenal um, for Clark to have recorded that. Um, what, 15 years that, ago now? I know that uh, uh, Richard Fors is desperate for his son, Alex Fors, to come here in his current F3 car that he's racing in the F3 Cup, which is a, a, an ex Valtteri Bottas Formula 3 car. And he reckons that, that he can really challenge that outright. But he'd love for him to be able to have a crack at the non-chicane ones as, at that record as well, because he reckons that could uh, go great guns around here. Because, of course, an F3 is, is nimble as well as, as being incredibly fast, isn't it? So Absolutely. I'd love to see that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure I'd be wanting to stand too close to the Barry's old paddock with, uh, <laughs> with, with, a, with a car heading towards me, having he hurtled straight down no. from Quarry Corner. No, it'd be a bit different, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would. I've got uh, Crayham heading past me once again in the number eight car. Out on his own, really well clear of Neil Harris in number five at the moment in the little radical. And Norman Lackford completing the fields, of course. Well, Gen V goes through to complete his fourth lap. I know we've got Kev Davis has said all motorsport fans should lobby uh, bonkers Boris to let spectators back into circuits. Unfair. We're in a field, ultimate social distancing. And it's like, well, that 
isn't the description of social distancing. Social distancing is keeping your distance. And if you've seen the spectator banks here at Castle Coombe, there is no social distancing. That's the challenge we have here is that uh, it might be outdoors, but close together is the social distancing. So it isn't as straightforward. But I can assure you, Kev, we are all hoping that we can get some spectating back because we love this place. But I hope you're enjoying what we are bringing you at the very least. Yeah, I hope so too. Genf has gone through again and well out in front. He's into the threes, 103.937. So he did get below the 64 second barrier. I suspect that might be about the limit of his ambitions today to get into the 64s. Just to put that in context Lindbergh's on a 66.6. So it was Gilman. Smart in the 67s. Cram 69s. Now it's 70s and a lap for the 73 second lap. So, well, the Jim black really 66, the 66 car is actually closing, isn't it? On Limburg, the, the SRA is not lapping the same speed as the uh, the 66 car, which of it's course not. was the six car originally. Um, was the same last time, yeah. Look at that 106.8 for the third place car and uh, trying desperately to close in on Limburg, and it's down to 1.8 seconds now. Yeah, took about eight tenths out of uh, Lindbergh that time, did uh, did John Gilman. So we'll see if we can catch him. We've still got 13, nearly 14 minutes of this race left to go. Genv is checked out, really. Well out in front in the, in the gun that uh, he's been very successful in. He did give us that rundown of what he's done in that car. A couple of championships in Sports 2000. A couple of championship in RS as well to... Out to his two Formula V championships as well. So, I mean, not many drivers can say they say that they've won six championship titles over their racing career. Something for, for Mike Jennifer to be very proud of. I just realised I'd put the wrong banner up, so I've just changed that one now. But the lead has gone through. But what of this battle? 206, Lindbergh and Gilman. It was 1.8 last time. It's down to 1.5. So actually, it's kind of woken Lindbergh up again. He's back down into the 106s. So all the top three are lapping 106s, which means that Jemby's actually clicked it down a bit there by about three seconds, hasn't he? So he's taken it steady. Yep. Do what he needs to do, though, isn't he? That's uh, all that matters. That's all he needs to do. And again, he, he won't want to stress this car on Julia, I don't think. So there's the second place called Lindbergh going through. And yeah, visibly, um, Gilman in the number 66 machine, the SR3, looks uh, a little bit quicker. That time through is two tenths faster than Lindbergh. I think it's another personal best lap time. There they are, heading through Bobby's. And back out onto uh, onto Westway, coming through to complete lap seven here, Chris. Of course, John Gilman would have been out in the 66 car that was actually a blue Pro Sport, Radical Pro Sport, whereas he's out in the Radical SR3 this time, which is is the car that I've been out in and, and got to uh, to drive. And it is just mind-blowing. I've got to tell you, in the feeling of going through maggots and beckets in one of these things, is just ridiculous because you can't slow down otherwise the downfall doesn't work so you've got a disengaged brain and grip it and rip it yeah you've got to uh, uh and that's why it's such a challenge to drive these things right on the limit i guess you've got to have you know a good deal of uh, of faith in the car haven't you really because as you say you're probably doing something that's a little bit counterintuitive if you if you're not someone who he races cars and drives cars at that speed all of the time. Yeah, I mean, I know that, uh, what was it, only two or three weeks ago at uh, Donington Park, we had a great victory for Bentley in the British GT at, at Donington Park. And that was uh, Nick Jones, who, of course, is very uh, well known to us here with his links with uh, Kevin Mills Racing and the like, and Scott Mulvin. And I know that mm. those two piloted a radical. So there was a reason. Oh, there's smoke coming out of a car heading up in towards and round quarry keep an eye on that one it's just come out of quarry i don't know which car that was ian i think it might be norman lackford possibly yes it is it is yeah. and i've just seen it on the screen billowing out there sadly. yeah it is pulling I'm... pulling off onto the uh onto the old circuit there so oh, what a shame yeah. um but yes those two actually raced in the radical uh championship uh, for a little while and that involves scott Mulvan on board to to coach nick Jones. 
and I remember having many a conversation with uh, Nick Jones really struggling to, to get to terms with it. Of course, he'd had, uh, uh, you know, many a year racing in the Formula 4, which has mm. no wings and slicks, as we know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very, very, uh, it took him a long time to get to grips. And, and they had to study all the onboards and the cameras to see where Nick's brain was sort of telling him to slow down. And, and Scott Malvern having to say, no, go, go, go. Don't slow down. Go. Yeah. It's counterintuitive to, and, you know, again, I think as well. Absolutely right. No, no, that, that's uh, that's right. And I think that's probably why I would struggle, to be honest. Yeah. Racing to to sort of uh, I don't know. Uh, you, you've got to train the brain to behave in a in a different way than it normally does, and just ignore almost what uh, what your the, the normal signals are telling you. Uh, I suppose. Jeff is coming into the yellow flag zone where we've got uh, protection for the marshals who are trackside dealing with. Norman Lackford's stricken cart. But Janfi coming through now to complete his, well, not complete, but get halfway around his 10th lap. Still, Close was, second third, isn't it? It is now, yes. And um, <laughs> seven tenths between them at the start of the lap. It's perhaps gone out a smidge uh, on the first half of the lap. They're just heading, as you can see, through Tower Corner now and on towards Bobby's. Yeah, there's, there's a word we don't use enough, Ian. Smidge. Well, there you go. Word of the day. But <laughs> uh, well, uh, it's come down a smidge, I reckon, there, uh, Chris. Because yeah, I think uh, Gilman's getting closer to Lindbergh again. It's come down a smidge more than a smidge, I think. Actually, oh, this right. time, yeah, definitely. What was it? Two point smidges, six. maybe. Yes, point six nine two last time. Yep. Point five seven five. That is only a smidge, actually. I think that's oh, one right. smidge, not two. Yeah. So you were quite officially. Yeah. <laughs> <Shouldn't> <laughs> down to the <laughs> Eight and a half minutes left to go. Gen V is just in control. I mean, he's lapping in one tens, whereas he's done a one hundred three point nine three seven. What did you say he did in lap uh, race one? Four point nine earlier. Did a three point nine in this one. I mean, wow. the thing he's got to watch for here is if he slows up too much, the the cars behind him are lapping three seconds a lap faster than him at the moment. Yeah, well, we and need only... to check not a problem then. I suspect if. Uh... Gen V checks in his mirrors and he thinks, oh, hang on, those are a little bit closer than I was hoping they would be. Um, I, I reckon he might got, get the clog down again and uh, just put a bit more daylight between them. You could but, be right. Yeah. yeah. It, interesting to see that the number five car of Harris isn't up to the speed that they had in the first race because, of course, the, uh, he had a, a great race with the number six car, didn't he, uh, originally? Yeah, he got down into the low one minute nines in the earlier race, but his best lap in this race is a a high woman at 10 and is lapping down the woman at 12s or well, these two are together coming across the line by the way 0.251 is the official gap that's uh 206 Lindbergh and the 66 car of uh john gilman up oh, even rise they actually spread out so it would appear that Lindbergh in that sr8 has got a bit more grunt than the sr3 which i guess is probably not surprising and the sr3 is a bit smaller and therefore more nimble yeah down to as they come, and it's the SR8 still ahead of the SR3, but only, what, two, one, half a car length in it. Gilman lining Lindbergh up here through Hammer Down. Left-hand kink down towards Tower Corner. See them there turning into Tower. And out of it again. And look, as they go into Bobby's, possibly... Could there be a chance? No, he's not quite close enough to make that work. They have to go th single farm through Bobbis, but maybe down to Camp Corner, Gilman can make a move because he's right there in the toe, Chris. He is coming down towards us, but again, the SR8's just able to pull away, even on that much of a straight down towards Camp. But is he able to take the speed through? Again, the 66 car of Gilman, the black car, closes in on Limburg, but now the power's going to kick in. Round folly up Avon Rise. But then it's going to be as they throw the anchors out the back that Gilman, number 66, and the SR3 surely is going to close a bit. Then the SR8 will pull away heading towards you. But, you know, it's interesting through the S's, isn't it? Certainly is. They are on the way back down now towards the S's. Uh, that time through, Jeff did a one minute six, by the way. So he did a, sort of get the message and he's extended the gap again, hasn't he? Here comes that battle for second, though. Lindbergh and Gilman pass me. And a bit more daylight between themselves, between the two of them, than there was a lap earlier now. And yeah, so it's looking like he's got this pretty much in control. 
Lindberg for the minute. What's he got left? Five and a half minutes to go. So probably about five laps to go, I would think. Yeah, because we only did 14 laps in the first one, but that's because the checkered flag had to come out a bit earlier with the stricken crayon. That's right. Time, isn't it? Yep. And here they come towards us to complete their 13th lap because Genvy's already uh, up round Quarry Corner uh, after completing his 13th lap with, as you say, five and a quarter minutes left now to go. And it, I wonder whether Lindbergh's just suddenly gone, well, OK, I'll manage that. And he's kind of maintaining that at quarter of a second, isn't he? Yeah, it's pretty consistent for the last couple of laps. As has Genvy been, he's in another woman at six, hasn't he? So he's doing what he needs to. Almost getting alongside down the farm straight there. Oh, it looked like it from my angle, but I think there's a bit of daylight between the second and third place cars. Alistair Smart, by the way, number 73, still in fourth place, a little bit further behind them. Down through Hammer Down towards Tower they go for the 14th time. And yeah, still Lindbergh ahead. He's it's so good, though, isn't it? Gilman. It is, and again, he's, he's closer again. He was. A little bit further back here, but he's gained a couple of lengths again as they make their way out of Bobby's. Back up to you once again. And I noticed that Genvy's decided to have a bit of fun again. He's back down into the 106s. He's still not the 103s, but bearing in mind, what have he gone out to? About 110s, hadn't he? And we yeah, said he yeah. needs to be careful of the, the pair behind. Well, he's having a bit of fun again past the back marker. Limburg Gilman, through they go, out to half a second this time round. Up Avon Rise, and uh, I, I don't know. You just sort of sit there and think: Is the uh, the Class A uh, SRA of uh, Limburg car number two hundred six? Is he kind of just playing with Gilman a little bit? I just can't call it. I got to be honest. No, it's difficult to know how this one's going to go. Again, the gap looks to have gone out a little bit around the first half of the lap. Pass me there, come in the old public commentary box, and it is. About four car lengths between them, but we've seen before that does narrow. See them heading towards tower there. There we go. Watch them head through tower. There's Smart behind them. Is he closing on them? Um, last lap he did. He was a second or two faster than the two cars ahead of him. So we could have a three-car fight here before the end of the race if it carries on like this. That's smart really? making his way up towards you. Yeah, I reckon so. Yeah, you yeah, know, good spot. He is, absolutely. I mean, he shouldn't be. He's done for fast at that time. He's not as quick as these two. But, yeah, I mean, you can't, it's interesting because you can't say these two are slowing them each other up. No. But they are down in, well, 107s that time, but a personal best. That suggests to me that Smart suddenly realised it as well, hasn't he? And he's suddenly putting a personal best of 106.8, which was just under a second quicker than the cars ahead of him. So he smells blood. He does indeed. So he's got them in sight now on the straight. As Genvy goes past me with two and a half minutes left to go, he's lapped number five, Neil Harris now as well, by the way. And past me comes the battle for second and third. And you can see how close they were on screen that time. Down towards Tower Court, a bit more difficult to see because of the lighting there, but that's just because of the, well, they're racing into the sun. That's an overcast afternoon now here at Coombe. Still Lindbergh. Oh, and we've got yellow. Oh, I think we've got Smart off the circuit there, have we? Yes, you can see the yellows waving. I think Smart's gone off chasing them at Tower Corner. No, no, no. It's the 66 uh, car. It's suddenly slowed, actually. So uh, he has. Uh, Gilman, yeah, has just pulled off. Uh, we just the cameras there on the exit of yep. Bobby, but I could see why Smart looked like that. Where did that come from? There didn't seem to be any great issue there, did they, for Gilman? And they were driving within themselves the last couple of laps. So Limburg's off the hook, other than yep. Smart smelling the possibility to reel him in. I'm just trying to work out why we've got a yellow on the at hammer down there for. So I think there's one up at Tower. Uh, there must be. Um, but yes, you're right. It's not smart because he's there. There must be something off at because There's a green on the exit of town as well. So if we get a shot of that in a minute. Now, on one of the, the feeds, actually, I can see something early on. Now, who's gone missing? Oh, and the 66 car tried to get going again and has then stopped on the start yeah, finish the, rate. So. It's double waved yellows there at Tower. I can't see where the car is, though. I can see the medical car down here is about to find into life as well. Yeah, I can just see the back checkered of something flag. on one of the cameras. Yeah, there goes the checkered. So there is, I can just see the back by the looks of it, uh, of a car on one of the, uh, on camera seven that I've got where I've got a multi-feed. And I can see it in the distance now on the feed that we're looking at there for a second. Uh, and I think it may be 
Harris, you know. Yeah, it is. The yeah. number five star of Harris. Okay, so that, it must have been being lapped, I would think. And, uh, uh, yeah, he was just uh, he was going off probably at the same time as the leaders. The medical car, which was briefly poised to leave, has stood down. Although I think now the race has come to an end, it probably will head out onto the circuit anyway. So hopefully all is well with all, with all of the drivers. But, yeah, so it was Gilman then that we lost right towards the end, and that did promote Smart into third position when the chequered flag came out. Yeah, Gilman's directly in front of me on the grass, still sat in the car, was trying to sort of, like, get it fired up. And he obviously did get it fired up when he was uh, um, at Bobby's. Didn't feel the need to come into the pits, but then when he slowed down for camp and tried to get back on the power again, it died, and he's just on the grass on the exit. In fact, i tell you what I'll do is I'm going to put me up to full, not because I want to show me. Oh, nearly dropped the camera, but you'll see he's just down there, look, on the start-finish straight. Oh, yeah. There he is. So he, he got those back his ground to a halt there, which uh, was was a shame. So not sure what uh, what happened to him, but he obviously felt confident enough he got it uh, resolved, and then it wasn't, which was a shame. Just there we go. Put that back to to this one. So checkered flag has come out for that one uh, early again, sadly, wasn't it? Which is a real shame. Um, although we weren't far off, I don't think. We managed 17 laps for them this time. Yeah. And it is, of course, number 35, Mike Jemby takes the victory. Second is the 206 car of Nicholas Lindbergh and his radical SR8. In third place, he'll probably be disappointed. Alistair Smart was coming on strong in his radical PR6, number 73, finished third. But, of course, they're all class winners, those top three, B, A, and C in that order. Fourth place, number eight, David Crayham, second in class C. And that actually was the final finisher because we lost... Uh, Gilman in 66, Harris in five, and of course, Norman Lackford with the smoke coming past uh, out of the back of his car at the rear. So the uh, recovery will go on for that car up at Tower. That just the, It's sort of slightly out of our angle that we can't see it well enough, but it looks like it's potentially locked up going into Tower and basically gone straight on unless mm. it was into retirement i can't quite tell if it's dislodged barrier and tires and everything so we could have some rebuild work to to do on that one but it's uh, it's a shame uh, again thank you very much for everybody who is joining us and uh, and i know it's sort of brought in the conversation about um spectators thankfully the majority of you have kind of gone look it's not castle coombe's fault because i sit here wishing it as well but the circuit of doing everything they can um i know it's mixed around the country but it, it, it is what it is everyone each circuit has got their own challenges and own insurance they can put in place potentially etc so it is what it is and we uh, are enjoying your your company here for this and we thank you for it we do i, I do enjoy this extra uh, interaction that we get though Ian from these race days it kind of brings something extra cool I find yeah it does doesn't it and we're getting bits of extra sort of information as well that that are, that are coming through about parts being delivered and yeah. know, running out of fuel and, and perhaps things that we wouldn't normally have a chance to pick up even though we do sort of monitor the social media feeds perhaps people think it's a, a bit easier to interact with us on uh, in this format um, which Could it probably be. is it probably, probably is, yeah, although we do have, obviously, our social feeds going. I yeah. can see that Josh is ready to go. The driver's still getting himself out, but I'm going to bring Josh in now. Hello, Josh. Hello, Josh. Hello Chris. Um, I spoke to Gary Perrell after the last race. Oh, yes. Uh, he uh, ran out of fuel as well. No. <laughs> That's what he's hoping the problem is anyway. He said the car started jumping on that last lap, and he just made it to the end. <laughs> Fair enough. That's uh, one way to do it, but uh, fair enough. Let's put you up onto the main one there. So uh, I'll leave you to uh, grab the interviews, mate. Thanks, Chris. As you can see, uh, Mike's parked his car perfectly, so you can have a good look at that on the on the live feed. Well done, Mike. Another win and a bit quicker than the earlier race, going to the freeze. Uh, yeah, I didn't. We were being obviously we got we got a good sort of a good gap early on, so we we're a bit cautious. We still got something, some vibration on it. But yeah, car was. Uh, Car was amazing, so thanks to everyone who supported me. So uh, Mike, James, and Matt who have been with me today. Uh, no, really good. Just nice to get a couple of wins and a, a nice, reliable run. Yeah, um, Ian was saying earlier. Obviously, you started out with thinking Formula V. Um, these cars are a lot quicker than that, um, and you've adapted, I guess, over the years. Yeah, well, I've been racing quite a while now. <laughs> so uh, yeah, obviously won the Formula V Championship twice and Sports 2000 twice and OSS Overall Championship twice. So. Um, yeah, been racing for a few years, but I've only been here, like I said, I've only been here two. There was actually a third time I remembered. Um, but yeah, it, it's uh, it's quite a shock, especially after the layoff. 
um, coming here. So, uh, no, really, yeah, really good fun, really good fun. Just is that problem of being in the lead and then not, and then just starting to worry about stuff. Sure, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, really pleased. So, thank you. Are you st uh, sticking with the time attack for the rest of the season? No, so we've right. done, we, we did a couple of rounds of that just because we wanted to go to Cadwell Park. Um, <laughs> which I've not been to for ages. And this is a, obviously a beast around Cadwell Park. So we were within 0 0.2 of the outright lap <laughs> record. Um, so we'll go again with them next year. But I mean, that's an incredible series as well. They've got some sort of thousand horsepower yeah. Mitsubishi Evos who were only a couple of seconds off me, amazingly. Um, but no, I think we're going to go and do, hopefully do the sports prototype cup at Snetton in yeah. three weeks time. And then hopefully do an all comers race at Brands Hatch. Um, hopefully some of these guys will be here as well, yeah. so we can <laughs> we can race them again. And that's the beginning of October. Yeah, it'd be quite interesting that sport prototype cup because uh, you know I was with them at Brands a few weeks ago. They're in the forty sixes, and I suspect you're not far away from that. Uh, or maybe a bit quicker. <laughs> I think we've been in the forty fours. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So in theory, we're a bit quicker, but we we've only done the cars being developed for twenty minute races for the last. Yeah. Uh, six years it's a half hour race we've got to fit a new tank in the next three weeks all oh, right <laughs> um yeah so it's a bit of a challenge um so yeah i'm sure i'm sure it'll be good fun i think there there's a, an amazing caliber of drivers in yeah. that as well um so yeah so really 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 excited about that um nice to come away from here with a car all feeling good <laughs> well well done great to sit here at castle king thank you very much indeed uh, second was nicholas lindberg yes, a good battle you had in that race, I think, with the SR3, Radical. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was quite fast in the, in the corners. And he, uh, I only was a bit fast on the straight. Hmm. And he was just gaining on me every single corner. So, <laughs> fun race, I would say. And Genvi was just, yeah, gone, unfortunately. <laughs> but that's just happened. What's it like to drive the SR8? I know you know, some people say they're quite difficult to drive. It's a bit... Uh, I haven't been training that much in the corona time. So, my neck is a bit sore yeah. right now. You can really feel the G when you take the corners and stuff so in the, in the in those high speeds so i gotta go home and train <laughs> is that the first race you've done since last year yeah the first race in the last 10 months yeah <laughs> so <laughs> especially like lots of downforce on these cars and lots of quick corners around yeah exactly it's like a big go-kart with like 400 horsepower <laughs> it's nice and what any more plans for the rest of the year maybe to get one more race in in the radical yeah. and then uh, find a new car maybe old maybe new i don't know yet no, no then, decision yet <laughs> yeah just and come here in england and race and then what makes it um, what makes you want to come here to england to do your race the tracks in denmark are just a bit small yeah and you don't get uh, as much track time so yeah it's just uh, and it's cheaper as well yeah so much more fun uh, britain you think has the best club racing would you say england yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> i would say that <laughs> Great to hear it. well done and thanks for coming here Thank this weekend much. And then Alistair Smart was third uh, again, but uh, you had to work your way into third this time. Yeah, it's an awful start. And I had about three cars go past me. And then just chasing chasing down Nikolai and then one of the Gilmans. And I don't know what happened. I mean, I, I, I inherited third, to be perfectly clear. But I was catching them. We were, yeah. we were starting to bunch up. It would have been interesting if, if we'd had a couple more laps to see how that would have unfolded. But no, it's good. Yeah, the other guys seemed to be dropping their pace off while you were getting doing your personal best in the race. Yeah, so no, it was you know for me it's nice to be out here. You know, it's nice to be in the seat uh, yeah. of the car and uh, yeah, just getting track time. I guess you're off to Alton Park next week. Alton next weekend, yeah. So up, up there for testing on Friday and then we we'll see how we go. Again, I haven't been there for a long, long time, no. so it'll be a bit of a journey of discovery. We'll see where we go. Another quite difficult circuit for these types of cars, I guess. Yeah, uh, I mean, the twisty stuff's great for me. Yeah. It's just when we get onto the, the straights with these cars. I mean, in class, I'm fine. Mm. You know, we're all matched uh, with the engine sizes and the weights. So, yeah, these cars, I mean, I can't get out. <laughs> Trying to get past near but Mike is, with, with it is interesting, but, you know, it's a quick car. Uh, and now, like I say, looking forward to the rest of the Bike Sports Championship. Is that your, all your plan for the rest of the season? Yes, yeah, yeah, I'll be in every round for the rest of the season, so it's good. Well, good luck for that. Thank you very much. Take care. So, third place, uh, Alison Smart, second, uh, Nikolai Limburg, and Mike Jemby, the winner. And great to see the sport prototypes back at Castle Coon, Chris. Uh, it really is. And uh, and I think I was saying earlier is that uh, whilst the, the numbers aren't what were planned because the, the guys from Ireland couldn't get over, sadly, that would have been another eight or ten at least that they'd have brought over from there. But the, the discussion is to, uh, to to sort of try and do this again next year. Possibly, it's not out of the question of having like a, a mini series for these, because I think, Ian, you said it earlier, didn't you, that 
you know, they 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 kind of want somewhere to race these, and and all three of us would love to see more of that. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've had a sort of an open sports racing series in the past, which hasn't necessarily attracted the numbers, but now um, the OSS Championship no longer exists. I guess there might be a bit more of an opportunity for for something like that. So we'll have to see. And if if the, if the Global Lights from Ireland can get on board with that next year, then absolutely. that'd be good stuff. Well, just to update, you still a bit of clearing up to be done down at Tower, yeah, by the way, Chris. Uh, still got uh, the rescue trucks. Fortunately, truck I've here. got it on on camera at the minute, and I can see they've hoiked it up onto the flatbed, and I'm, they don't seem to be having to do too much to the barriers, and it didn't look like an awful lot of damage there, thankfully. So I think he went in and wasn't able to get back out more than anything else with a bit of luck. So thanks, Josh. That was a bit unfair. I kept him there waiting, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. Uh, right. Let me just uh, switch that round and put that up as the main one, because you can see that we're now unleashing the Formula Fords. And I think all three of us have been looking forward to this one because it was such an epic race earlier. So let me take you through the grid. It will be as follows. On the front row, pole position, again, Luke Cooper, number 46. But this time it, it is what was his closest rival in the championship. I'm not really sure what impact we've had. Uh, on the standings at the moment, but it is 26, Felix Fisher alongside him. Second row, one, two, two, Jonathan Brown. His speed in that first race was just incredible. Alongside him, his teammate, one, two, three, Bryce Aaron, with a great second place in that first race. He'll be hoping to move up through from that fourth on the grid. Always interesting when you get these second fastest lap times creating the second grid. It really does throw a few curveballs up. Third row, 44, David Vivian. He was looking so good for a podium and he'll be hoping to get himself back up into those positions. And he's got alongside him the 2011 uh, champion of uh, Castacoon Formula 4 Championship, number 75, Rob Hall. Fourth row, number 30, Grant Palmer. Not what we've been seeing so far from Grant. He was fourth in the championship when we arrive here today. He seems to be battling something out there this time, but he'll be hoping to move forward. And he's got uh, the star of Formula Ford uh, winner last year, number 40, Matt Hallam. Fifth row, 43, Kieran Atwood and 59, Chris Acton. Sixth row, 28, Tom Hawkins, five, Paul Barnes. 23, Nathan Ward, who won Class B earlier uh, on row seven with James Colburn in 76 alongside him. Eighth row, 77, Chris Hodgen and 25, Mark De Rosario. That's uh, those two fighting it out for Class Honours as well. Ninth throw, another one for class honours is the two class D cars. I say two, we seem to only have one of them out there. I'm sure I saw both of them earlier, but we've only got Bob Higgins in 960 and no 69 Alan Slater. I thought I saw him earlier. He's definitely not out there. Tenth throw, 91 Bob Hawkins does not appear to be there either. The yellow number seven car of Michael Phillips all on his own. Eleventh throw, 60 Paul Morecambe, 33 Chris Warden. And 12th row, 78 James Rose, and it should have been 84 Steve Bracegirdle. But I think uh, with uh, the the impact in the mini earlier, he's uh, he's had to sit this one out. Sadly, once you get anything like uh, potential for concussion, you you tend to be told you're not allowed to race. So I'm suspecting it was uh, that kind of thing. Doesn't mean he's got it, but if you hit your your head, they're very protective these days, understandably so. Uh, Richard Forrest says, "Great to see a good grid of Formula Ford 1600s." with uh, some making the trip after racing at Brands Hatch yesterday. And I forgot that fact. They were indeed there. Yeah, that's commitment that we love. And, and so do we, uh, Darth Vader Soma, Salman. The sun's <laughs> come out. The sun has come out. It's not been appearing for the last three hours or so, but uh, it's back now. You've got um, an old poop call dude on us, though, eh? I like well, it. So, sort of. <laughs> I was just looking at the points, actually, Chris. Uh, and Luke Cooper, extending his lead, obviously, he's got 113 points now. Uh, Felix Fisher, 98. He's second. Bryce Aaron, third on 93. And David Vivian, fourth on 80 points now. So he moves ahead of Grant Palmer, who was a non-finisher earlier. So Cooper's lead now 15 points with three races left to go. Yeah, so it's, uh, position. It's he does. He looks like he's in control, but, uh, um, you know, you can't discount anything, especially in Formula Ford racing, and, and uh, especially with Luke Cooper's luck tends to be very topsy-turvy at the best of times. It does, doesn't it? Um, but he's had a good run now. Four wins out of five. Field coming past me. Looking absolutely magnificent. Nathan Ward's car, that's a lovely... Beautifully turned out machine, the Swift SC92, Kevin Mills Racing Awning is the one that it's run out of. 
And uh, obviously, Nathan came close to getting the overall championship here a few years ago, didn't he? Uh, and then you've not seen him for the last couple of seasons or so. Yeah, I do have a whole host of notes. Apologies, Nathan. It's so manic here that I haven't really had a chance to, uh, to to sort of see. But I know that it's all been things like, uh, uh, I think I'm pretty sure it's job changes. And uh, uh, oh, there we go. He says, R real life caught up with him. Bought a house in 2017, which is an amazing life goal, but a nightmare for motorsport budget. Had some very loyal supports and sponsors over the last few years. But the majority of my racing is self-funded. So on I went to a sabbatical it was never going to be long-term thing motorsport is my passion and there is nowhere i'd rather be and that includes his dad who's just had a very major operation and he's down here at the circuit again already before time and uh, his mum mary and his good lady uh, the, obviously the two of them bought the house together uh, lucy will be uh, I, I don't think she's here so i'm assuming that she's glued to this stream uh, to to sort of watch how that one's going to go. So Nathan Ward, who got a great Class B victory, and they'll be, he'll be hoping for more of the same. But this uh, this grid on the top eight really is sort of topsy-turvy a little bit, isn't it, really? It is. Very close on the second fastest times as well. Only 1.6 seconds covering the first eight. And we saw in the earlier race that uh, behind Luke Cooper, anyway, it was almost anybody's race. So if Cooper doesn't get away at the start of this race like he did in the earlier race, then I think we're in for um, a, a real close contest. Sun's going wasn't, again. Yeah, <laughs> it's your fault. He wasn't expecting to get the same sort of uh, uh, free ride almost to some extent no. compared to normal this time, was he? Right. Five second board is on. The engine notes have risen long before we've had any lights come on. They are ready for this one. You can tell it. One light, two light. On goes the third. The engine notes didn't have much further to go, but they have. All five lights are on. Off go the lights. And Felix Fisher gets a good start, as does David Vivian trying to get away. One, two, three. Bryce Aaron has to slot across because his wasn't great. But into the lead, is it going to be? I thought that uh, Felix Fisher, the white car, number 40, uh, sorry, 26, was going to jump into the lead. But I think he had to wait before he moved over because Luke Cooper was totally there on his inside. But I'm not sure. It looked like Felix Fisher had possibly done enough. No, it's Luke. Cooper's battling it out round the inside. Yeah, Cooper ahead then. Well, it's pretty much side by side down the farm straight. It's Felix Fisher trying to go around the outside. But no, Cooper holds on into the S's for the first time. And then you've got two of the low Dempsey racing cars sort of bustling around. David Vivian as well. It's the 122 car that is through first. So that's Jonathan Brown that slotted into third place ahead of David Vivian. Bryce Allen in fourth place. And now it looks like Brown is attacking down towards tower corner as well that's vivian isn't it around the outside of um jonathan brown in fact to try and get third place back and i think he's just about oh. Oh, on contact and a spin and into the tires which go absolutely flying all over the place don't they oh, does everyone manage always... to avoid those no. there's two cars in off isn't there uh, I can see... At well, it's the... going to be Jonathan Brown, isn't it? Because yep. those two tried to go into there and it was never going to work. That's a one uh, follow your leader through uh, through Bobby's, isn't it, Ian? There's no way yep. you can go side by side through that bit. So there's going to be frustration over that bit. And the fact that uh, David Vivian's rear wheel was flicked is that he'll feel that he had that in there. It's difficult for us to tell him the good news is we don't have to. We're not judge or jury, so we can let that one go. But he went backwards into that tyre barrage, which went across the road and it sort of went in everyone's way but somehow well, i think everyone else got has, away with it has felix no felix fisher is is well a red flag which is unsurprising uh, but i couldn't uh, see that, felix fisher come past me yeah he, he came across the line in second place so... yeah he's not come past me though oh, um really? uh, yeah he's, he's a, come through in about 15th in the order so something must have happened after they what, crossed the line actually, as well what's, what's going on up there and there is a um, one of the low Dempsey cars as well, Grant Palmer's car, also well, well down the order. I could have sworn I can see up on the circuit someone that's that looks more like potentially a driver up Avon Rise there, but I cannot see a car that has stopped, so it might not be. It might have been a fire marshal just gone on there's, to grab something. There's one car off, and it's just around the sort of corner of the barriers from me. There you can see it on your ah, yeah. stream. So that's, that's an not exit Felix, quarry. Though. It's not Felix. 
who is it? But the problem is, into the pits has also come James Colburn um, with wheel damage. So that would have been from collecting a tyre, I'm pretty certain. So that was absolute pure mayhem. I, I'm sure that David Vivian is going to be very, very frustrated. I think that was probably just a lack of, of, of local circuit knowledge that meant that Jonathan Brown sort of felt that he could keep his nose in there. And it's like, not really, not through Bobby's. That is a follow my leader section, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty much single file. So you've lost... Vivian and Brown there from that. And as I say, Cooper, when he appeared at Quarry Corner at the second lap before the red flags came out, um, uh, he, he he was well ahead. And uh, just a report is that there all the cars are stopped. Um, sort of, if you look at the camera we're showing you at the minute, if, if it was towards the left, they're all lined up, not going into the pits, not going to start finish straight. But Felix Fisher has come down the pit lane. Now, which way is he going to go? Is he going to go paddock or pit lane? I'm waiting to see which way, where am I going to see him appear from? Right, he's down the pit lane, so that would show that he's clearly not comfortable about something. I cannot see any damage on that car. All the wheels seem to be in the right direction. Now, he'll have been ahead. He'll have been ahead of that mayhem, wasn't he? Because he was running in second place. So he, uh, well, well, he might have been caught by a yeah, tyre, I guess. Well, but no, he was second over the line, wasn't he? And yeah. He, then that he was the he didn't appear behind Luke Cooper at Quarry Corner, so well, something I'm trying to make then. sense of, of of Uphaven Rise, but the problem is with the the sort of glass on glass through my binoculars. No, I just think that's uh, that's another one of the marshals that they're they're looking at something on the circuit just before the sort of crest of Avon Rise up there. And and initially I thought it was a driver, but there's definitely no car off up there. Into the pits has also come the number thirty car. Now, that, of course, is Grant Palmer. He dropped down well down the order as he crossed the line, down to 13th place. So he'd lost six places. Now, having a look at that, so I suspect that he's... Although, no, that looks... They're taking the bodywork off the back there to look at a, a mechanical issue, which I said it looked like... It's, it felt like it was a down on pace compared to what we'd seen previously, didn't we? You did. Uh, meanwhile, Josh has done well. He's grabbed a couple of screen grabs from the, uh, the live stream and he's sent them to me. And you can see on there, you've got brown... Well up the inside of uh, of Vivian, probably halfway alongside. It's difficult to tell from the oh, really? perspective on the way into Bobby's. And then another screen grab from a, from a little bit further on when basically as Vivian tried to take the first apex of Bobby's, the the gap had disappeared that uh, that Brown was was previously in. Um, so yeah, I think I mean, what happened just... was inevitable. Yeah, well, quite. I think, uh, you know, the point being is that others probably know not to keep your nose there. The bad news is Felix Fisher has jumped out of his car and is at the back, although he is, of course, mechanically minded. So he's actually helping his team there. Uh, Bodywork is off the rear and they're looking at, as if there's some kind of issue mechanically with that one as well. So that's him and uh, Grant Palmer both had rear bodywork off. Fingers crossed we can get them out. Also, we had in, of course, as I say, uh, James Colburn, the blue 76 car. Um, but that, and in fact, that looks like Wayne Paul Racing have been flat out getting that front right repaired amazingly. Would you believe that? Down in the pit lane, potentially got it repaired. Such is the team spirit down here, though. Kevin Mills and uh, Brian Soul just sort of walking away from those cars. So they've clearly been over to see if there's anything they could do. And they're just walking away, still chatting amongst themselves probably with a, a degree of frustration of what's happened. We, you know, we're going to have to rebuild the, the the tire stack, aren't we, on the apex of Bobby's as well. Yeah, that's going to take a moment or two to, to get that sort of, because the tyres did go absolutely everywhere, didn't they? Yeah. But one and two li truly uh, scattered. Now, the car that was off at Quarry has been collected. It's on the back of one of the trucks now, so I think that's going to drive past me in a moment, so I'll see who it was that's on the back of that one. Well, suddenly it means that on the front row, we've got uh, Luke Cooper on his own because Felix Fisher, uh, Fisher is in the pit. Oh, where's he just gone? That car has disappeared now. Now, which direction did he go? I have a horrible feeling that he has gone into the paddock, which is a real shame if that's the case, that he's not coming out to rejoin this race. And, and it'll be a, a real gutter if that's the case. Second row on his own is one, two, three, Bryce Aaron, because, of course, Jonathan Brown is uh, is a strict car up at Bobby's. Third row, 75, Rob Hall on his own, because, of course, David Vivian uh, is up there stricken as well. Fourth row, Matt Hallam, number 40, on his own, because Grant Palmer is in the pit lane here. And that looks like he's about to be pointed towards 
the gate to get straight back into the paddock as though there's an issue with that car that they don't believe they can sort. Also, Colburn 76 is aiming that direction, despite the work that they've done. Now, I don't know whether that means that they're going to be able to sort of bring that car down to the assembly area, if you will, and then uh, bring it back out sort of under the Avon Bridge. Mm. I don't know which way they're going. I don't quite know what they're... Yes, yes, down that way. So that looks like... Uh... So, yeah, there goes 76. There goes 30. They're just being stopped because the recovery vehicle's gone. But that suggests to me that Felix Fisher, sadly, has gone back to their uh, their awning and they're not going to be able to get that sorted. That has given uh, his championship ambitions an almighty slap in the face. Well, especially as, as we've said earlier, no drop scores this season. It was 15 points behind Luke Cooper already. So, I mean, if Luke gets a win here and Felix uh, doesn't score, then Luke doesn't need to do very much at the final meeting to, to wrap things up in the championship. Uh, Chris Warden, by the way, was the car that stopped at Put Quarry, uh, as he did at the ah, end of the first okay. race as well. So, oh, uh, right, yeah. And in fact, I've only just clocked it, is that that's new that was probably the same car that did it is that we've got oil all the way up, uh, sorry, cement dust all the way up from halfway up Avon rise. So that'll have been what it was a Marshall looking at the track, realizing that there was probably some fluid, but making sure that it was something that needed treatment rather than left to evaporate. And they're obviously comfortable. It isn't going to evaporate. So cement dust all over it. Mm, and uh, I fear the same thing may have happened with that car in the earlier race as well, uh, with the same result. Such a shame, that. Really, really is a shame. Um, and I'm just looking to see what's happening. They're, the marshals are sort of like being waved. Now, I'm wondering, I, I've got a, a, a feeling Chris Hodgins' car, he's out of his 77 car as well, and they're pushing that down as though there's an issue with that one. But I was just watching the marshals that were sort of almost waving some people down as if they were sort of saying, oh, you know, come down here. But we've got quite a few gaps out on this grid now, surprisingly, and that's unusual for Formula Fords in reality, isn't it? But uh, it we, is. have, we have lost quite a lot. Yeah, Chris Hodgins, sadly, limping away in that 77 car which is a real shame he'll have come down from the uh from the northwest to race with us uh, a great guy and someone i class as a friend these days when we managed to catch up with him uh stuart tinker taylor says hooray it's the fuffers again well you you've come in late there mr taylor because uh, it's a red flag and we're rebuilding some things over there and in fact uh, it's going to be a complete restart original grid as we would expect it to be um and I don't know about you, but I'm going to take that opportunity. I'm going to put a uh, an advert on, and uh, and then I'm going to run down to the loo again. On that note, by the way, just quickly, uh, is that uh, referring back to our notes, that we need to make sure that we also mention uh, the title sponsors, obviously, Samco supporting the saloons, EBC The Brakes, Premier Finance uh, on the Formula Fords, Reese Insurance, Reese Motorsport Insurance sponsoring the GTs as well, and also the additional circuit sponsors, Honda of the UK Manufacturing that supply circuit vehicles, including the Civic Type R, Safety Car, and the CRV Medical Response Units, Kia Motors supply the Seed Course Car, Volvo UK for their supply of vehicles, Avon Tires, of course, Simply Sweepers, and Wiltshire College. Don't forget, we got uh, car track day, so you can take your uh, own car on the circuit, £175, additional drivers, £25, although I think that's got to be within your family bubble as it stands at the moment, open pit lane format, uh, 18th of September, 9th of October, 23rd of October, any dates before that are fully booked already. Gift vouchers can be bought for car track days and are valid for 18 months from the date of issue. So even if you're not certain, get the gift uh, um, the gifts of gift vouchers for car track days and uh, whoever you're gifting them to will be able to use them any point within the next 18 months. So a great opportunity. Bike track days as well. You may have seen Rob Jones on our Coombe TV, a fantastic interview he was. And uh, he uh, gets involved in these. Take your bike on the circuit motorbike that is of course 135 pound date 7th of october 14th of october and 27th of october team of highly experienced instructors on hand to give advice again gift vouchers available go to castlecombecircuit.co.uk for that of course the next race meeting is the grand finals weekend on the 19th and 20th of september which will also include and this is great news Ian, it includes the return of the formula ford carnival after a few years off 
Yeah, that's something to look forward to as well. I think that's going to be on the Sunday, isn't it? With the, uh, the main championship action on the Saturday, I think. Is yeah, the... that would make sense. Um, it sort of doesn't interfere with that is the idea, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so Saturday features the Saloons and Formula Fords final round. Sunday features the GT final round and the Hot Hatches last races. The official line as it stands at the moment, no spectators currently being allowed at this or any event, but who knows? Everything is constantly evolving, so we'll have to wait and see. But assume not at the moment, and uh, and we'll have to sort of develop it from there and see where we go. But uh, that is the announcements. I'm just looking. Hopefully, we're not actually that far away from going. So I'm going to play. Um, an advert and I'm going to come back up in a second uh, unless you've got anything else that you want to add in steady and are you happy with an ad uh, you, you go with an ad but just before that I'll say that it's a broken suspension mount for Felix Fisher oh That's no the Felix Fisher so it looks like uh, he won't be back out unfortunately which could well have been the issue that we saw earlier then that would yeah. be a shame yeah Okay, I'm going to play the odds one again for now and I'll be back in a minute. Becoming a racing driver has never been easier with Castle Coon Circuit. Book your odds novice driver's training course at the Wiltshire venue today. The easiest and quickest way into competitive on track action. <laughs> Welcome to Castle Coon. My name's Alan Cooper. I'm the, the chief driving racing instructor here at this circuit. We're here today to do the Novice Driver Training Course, often known as the ARDS course, which is the first way to start off and get your racing driving licence. So, no further ado, let's get on and show you what's involved. So you've seen the format. Everyone here today passed their tests and now have their racing license. Who knows, the next time I see them could be as I commentate on them in front of the usual packed house of racing fans here at Castle Coon Circuit. All you need to do to be next is to visit castlecoonscircuit.co.uk and select Become a Racing Driver under the Racing tab. Becoming a Racing Driver is easier than you think with Castle Coombe Circuit and Motorsport UK. Video one is about the reasons and benefits of public speaking or presenting. Well, let's think about this another way. Why on earth do we exercise? It takes some serious willpower to get going and it's all too easy to talk yourself out of it. But we know the benefits will be significant, so we push ourselves to do it. And once you get going, it becomes addictive, including the battle of wills to keep going. The same applies with public speaking. It's easy to psych yourself out if you let yourself, but it lets you share your knowledge, point of view, passion, emotion, etc. You have the opportunity to inform, motivate, win over and persuade an audience. What a buzz and an honour. I have the same addiction to the battle of wills, adrenaline and achievement with public speaking. So turn around the way you see it and relish the chance and opportunity. And it hurts a lot less than exercise. You're not wrong. <laughs> It hurts an awful lot less than exercise, I can tell you. Right, I timed that and I'm back and just managed to run both of them. I can see they're still up there working on getting the uh, the tyre stack uh, replaced up there, which is uh, is a shame, which reminds me I can now do that and bring us in as well, Ian, back, uh, yeah. back to this. Um, Indeed. Yeah, it's one of those ones that you'd like to think wouldn't take too long to sort out, but that 
that really did absolutely destroy the tire stack there on the apex because I think he went backwards into it, didn't he, and threw it. Mm, I think I think that was effectively what happened in the end. Um, certainly, everything's clear at Quarry now, so that's good. I think the work has been done there to address the fluid that's gone down there. Uh, another doubt on Felix Fisher definitely won't be out today. Possibly not for September finals day either, which would be a real shame. Is the the news wow. from Josh down there in the paddock? Uh, also on David Vivian's car, he's got a broken right front right corner, which makes sense given that he yeah. was on the left hand side of the circuit. Uh, the exhaust has also now been um, f- sort of uh, flipped into a vertical position. Chris Hodgson, as we noted, also back in the paddock. Uh, and on an unrelated note, uh, Adam Preble had fuel pickup problems in the uh, earlier race so which would show the inter uh, confirm the intermittent nature that we spotted wasn't it yeah yeah fuel so, pickup uh, can be intermittent can't it so it can yeah so so that, those are the updates from josh down there in the paddock he's been busy finding out what's been going on but but yeah it's looking a bit of a threadbare grid now isn't it that that grid with a few gaps on it uh, it is which is Ooh. a shame what and they are see? done by the looks of it up at Bobby's. All the vehicles are away from it, so they're comfortable that that has, uh, is, is sorted sufficiently. And all <laughs> the massive uh, uh, maintenance vehicles are here, so they're clearly going to get themselves ready to, to, to restart this race. Complete restart, original grid, 10 laps. So at the moment, it looks like we're able to, to stick to it, which will be good if that is the case. Mm. Maybe we've got a little bit of uh, fat in the day in fact the formula yeah. fours weren't due to start for another five minutes officially uh, the, the team are doing amazing we're ahead of time by about 20 minutes i think when the race originally started so uh, um I, I guess it was just as well that we'd made up a bit of time because you never know when something like that might happen and uh, take a bit of time out of the day but uh no, they've done a good job to get us back ahead of time so we'd have to sort of in auspicious start first thing this morning when we had a, a delay after the first session but uh Qualifying more or less finished on time. Yeah, um, that, that Adam Preble fuel pickup problem is occurring on the left handed corners, which I suppose isn't the worst thing it could be, which is a predominantly right handed track. But uh, going through the uh, through S through the S's and, and Bobby's, that would affect you there, certainly. Yeah, and th- any indication that they've resolved it? Um, we'll wait and see if Josh can <laughs> give us any more information on that. But uh, I guess we'll find out when he comes out for the for the next race. Um, I, got, I got my wasp back in the uh, in the uh, commentary box now, and it always worries me when it's a fairly docile looking wasp because it means that they uh, uh, they probably uh, are anchoring for a fight, aren't they? I reckon they are. It just All depends right. whether you want to take them on, Chris. That's the... Not overly, not overly. No. Stay away, you. <laughs> not uh, overly. Green flags. We do green flag. That's we good. do green oh, flag, and it does still look like it is ten laps. So. Uh, it is Luke Cooper, number 46, on pole position with a front row to himself with the sad demise of 26, Felix Fisher. Second row, Bryce Aaron, one, two, three on his own with no one, two, two, Jonathan Brown. It looks more like a staggered grid at the front now that we so often see in uh, some of the single seaters. And it's not really meant to be that way around. So it's unfortunate that uh, it has ended that way. Um Oh, there we go. So, yeah, Celeste has actually said Adam had fuel issues. Every time he turned left, he was losing power. Let's hope the issue is fixed. So Adam's uh, uh, better half is hoping so. Third row, we've obviously lost David Vivian. So 75, Rob Hall on his own. Fourth row, uh, I don't think, although I stopped looking, did Grant Palmer make it back out there or not? We'll have to have a look to see whether the number 30's out there. Uh, otherwise, Matt Hallam's on his own on that fourth row. Kieran Atwood and Chris Acton on row five. Sixth row, Tom Hawkins and Paul Barnes. Nathan, excuse me, Nathan Ward and the repaired James Colburn. Wayne Paul Racing did an incredible job to get that sorted. Eighth row, 77, Chris Hodgson has gone. We know some Mark De Rosario in 25 on his own. Bob Higgins on his own on row nine because we've lost Alan Slater somewhere in the 69 car. Tenth row, 91, we seem to have lost Bob Hawkins, but si- uh, Michael Phillips in seven there on his own. Eleventh, Paul Morgan will be on his own because we know we lost 33, Chris Warden. 12th row, 78, James Rose on his own because Steve Bracegirder wasn't able to take the start in this one as well. So it's a, it's a, it's a weird one, that. It is. And Grant Palmer's going to start from the back as well. He's come through. Uh, uh, okay. Left. Cool. Uh, and more news from Josh. Unsurprisingly, a broken left front corner on uh, on Jonathan Brown's car. 
Yes, that's what we'd expect, isn't it? Zen Monkey Clothing. Go on, Matt. That, of course, is uh, Matt Hallam's uh, sponsor there. Uh, great to see your involvement, guys. Kevin Mills Racing with Zen Monkey Clothing. That, as I say, I've got to have a look at those guys because I just love that name. That sounds really, really cool. So welcome, guys. And I hope that we see you involved at Castle Coon for, for some time to come, as is, uh, is so often the case is that uh, you just get sort of emotionally linked. Oh, I, th- I worried for a minute then because I thought that Rob Hall was uh, was dropping back, but uh, he has gone to his place. Matt Hallam is on his own. Those two are there. Those two are there. Fantastic job to see the uh, um, what was it the seventy six guy James Colburn. He came into the pits with his front wheel, front right was bouncing. Do you like the the impression I'm doing there? Uh, bouncing. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know what bouncing was, Ian, uh, was bouncing along. And on that note, I'll put the screen back up to four. We don't need, <laughs> don't need my impressions. Five second board goes up. We're going to get this race underway. Ten laps of Formula Ford racing. One light, two light, three lights. Engine notes have long been since up. The fifth light goes on and off. No hanging about. And off go this field. Chris Acton looked good at the uh, from the fourth row there. Matt Hallam's got a good start. He's going to make a challenge for second place going around the outside. So Zen Monkey Clothing will be pleased to see that. He's up there. Luke Cooper's got the right start. But it looks as though the... Uh, uh, John, Jonathan Brown's not there. Sorry. Bryce Aaron was under pressure from Matt Hallam from the fourth row. I'm not sure whether it have worked up there, but it's definitely Luke Cooper in the front, and I'm not sure who's in second. It's Bryce Allen in second, I think, and I think it's Rob Hall in third position as they head down towards the S's for the first time then. Turning over through. Oh, big slide there by Luke Cooper as he comes out of the S's for the first time, which is Cooper ahead then. Uh, Aaron in second place. Rob Hall third. Matt Hallam is fourth. Chris Acton fifth. Tom Hawkins is sixth as they make their way down towards Tower Corner for the first one. Grant Palmer's only got past the one car so far. That's the number 60 of Paul Mock in the Sully Motorsport prepared car. But he isn't at the back of the field now. Through Bob as they go. It looks like we're going to get through here safely this time and back up with you. Yeah, that, uh, Luke Cooper's not getting his own way, is he? Because Bryce Aaron, the one, two, three car, is all the way up glued to the back of him through camp corner they go nice and cleanly then it is rob hall the 2011 champion small gap then we got matt hallam number 40 being pressurized by chris acton the number 59 car so uh interesting fight there heading up and it's uh, behind them this side by side suddenly goes hawkins and atwood by the looks of it 28 and 43 but luke cooper's not getting his own way at the front is he certainly not bryce aaron the young american taking the fight to him as they head down farm straight towards the s's for the second time rob hall trying to cling on to them as well in third place it's matt hallam in that spectrum in fourth chris acton in the way fifth and sixth and seventh we've had a change because kieran atwood number 43 now ahead of uh, tom hawkins in the number 28 ray gr11 round tower and I suppose there's one of the cars towards the back of the field, sounding a little bit tractorish, but leaders still right together and heading back towards you. Tractorish, I'm sure they speak highly of you as well, Ian. But <laughs> yeah, down here they go, and Luke Cooper's having to go very defensive. Bryce Aaron looking to try and force around the outside, which was tempting Rob Hall to look up the inside in the white and red number 75. It's uh, there's a whole lot of red in these front three positions and Luke Cooper again hugs the inside line there's nearly a bit of contact wheel to wheel as they wash out thankfully got away with that and Bryce Aaron tucks himself behind Luke Cooper up in towards quarry we go again and actually that's compromised Bryce Aaron he's back into the clutches of the 75 car of Rob Hall by the looks of it yeah so Swift Cooper cars first and third at the moment Bryce Aaron in the low Dempsey racing car the meeting that sandwich at the moment as they come off the S's towards Old Paddock once again. Definite gap back now to the fourth place car of Matt Hallam. He's got Chris Acton, the pilot, just behind him. And then Kieran Atwood, still with a novice cross on the back of his car. And then Tom Hawkins. Then you've got Paul Barnes actually ahead of Nathan Ward. So that's the Class B battle that's going on as well. A good scrap between the Black Swift and the, the Blue and White Swift heading through Tower Corner now as well. So that's one to watch out for just on your screen at the moment as the leaders are already heading back towards you. Yep, here they come. It's still the white nose tells us that that's Luke Cooper that has the lead, but only just about the uh, the red top white middle. 
horizontally, if you will, with the black flashes on the uh, the rear there. It tells us one, two, three. Bryce Aaron in second place. Got a good run th- along the start, finish straight through Folly, heading up Avon Rise, pressurising Luke Cooper. And it looks like Rob Hall's just fallen away in that 75 car at the moment, but it doesn't mean he won't come at him. Fourth place for Matt Hallam. Great job in the number 40 car. He's shaken off the attentions of Chris Acton at the moment, who's actually got more attention from the 43, Kieran Atwood. He's fought up to sixth as Kieran, and he's intends to do a bit more. Yeah, Kieran's having a very good race here, as is Luke Cooper out front, and Bryce Allen putting a lot of pressure on him. And you've got the day glow yellow and green helmet of the Husqvarna Liffrid car, 75. Drive from Bromyard in Herefordshire, Rob Hall. And a gap back to the next, well, three cars. Four cars at the outside. Class B, battle still ongoing. Nathan Ward looking to the left-hand side of Paul Barnes as they head down towards uh, Tower Corner. In the number five car, Paul Barnes, the Sully Motorsport run machine. Those two still right together. Just in the back of shot there. You can just see them going oh, through yeah. Bobby's now. Very little Ooh, to choose between them. And I'd miss that fact that those two had glued together. What an awesome fight that is between those two as well. And it looked like Nathan Ward, I thought it was a good exit. Down, he comes towards camp. He's on the outside, though. He's going to try the switch and roo. Switch and roo, even. But Paul Barnes... Sort of covered that one largely off as the leaders are up round quarry. Is that side by side? No, it isn't. It looks like Luke Cooper still got that, but it is side by side. Nathan Ward's got the inside at Folly. This is for Class B honours. They're still side by side. Bear with me in because they are coming up over Avon Rise. And I think Ward did just enough to squeeze him up over Avon Rise and he's got the lead in Class B. Yes, he has. So it's the Day Glow Swift SC92 that's now ahead. And out in front in Class A and overall, it is still number 46, Luke Cooper from number 123, Bryce Allen and uh, Rob Hall in third place. Luke Cooper's in the best up of the race so far at 111.1. And Barnes is back through. He's back ahead of Ward. That must have happened at the S's. I missed that. But now Ward is trying to fight back. He's going to try and go around the outside into Tower Corner. Can he do it? No, he can't. So Paul Barnes holds on at Tower. Well, class... Class A's coming down towards me almost side by side. They did go side by side for a second area, and it's all happening at both sides of the circuit, Class A and Class B. But uh, Bryce Aaron got himself alongside Luke Cooper that time, and Luke Cooper's gone very tight at Folly. I'm looking side by side for Class B in towards camp as well. We just don't know where to look, but Paul Barnes has still got it. But up in towards Quarry, they flick right who's still got it. It is still Luke Cooper just about. Goodness me, this is incredible, Ian. Yeah, already into the second half of this race. They're on lap six now. Cooper heading down towards the S's, but only half a car length in hand over Bryce Aaron there. And Hall's a bit on the grass there. That's going to cost him a couple of tenths, I think. He was already uh, eight tenths behind the two leaders. It will be a second behind now, so that's limiting his chances there. Meanwhile, the Class B battle side by side into the S's again. It's Barnes in the black car that is ahead, so it's nip and tuck between those two. Ward trying to come around the outside at Old Paddock, tucks into the slipstream on the exit of the corner, goes to the left-hand side of the circuit at Tower now, and is he going to go around the outside of Paul Barnes? Again, it oh. doesn't work out for him. Well, and again, down in towards camp, the, t- the two went side by side, heading towards camp, but Bryce Aaron has to tuck himself back. He nearly forced his way around the outside at uh, Tower, I noticed as well, and had to go very de- uh, defensive, did uh, Luke Cooper, in towards Bobby's, and he's going defensive round Folly, up Avon Rise, in towards Quarry Corner. The Class Bs are side by side in towards campers. The Class A are side by side in towards Quarry. This is just impossible, but just can't take your eyes off it. Nathan Ward trying to get a run up the inside at Folly, and I think he's going to do it, Ian, but you've got Class A. Yeah, and we saw on screen there at Quarry Allen was on the outside of Cooper. They were pretty much alongside, but Cooper prevails at the moment, just looking into the distance, and it's the black car that appears first of Paul Barnes up there at Quarry Corner ahead of Nathan Ward. Ward's going to try and get alongside him now. Uh, he goes to the left-hand side into the S's. Barnes doing a really good defensive job there. Just trying to have a look now at the uh, Class A battle. As there past me goes the Class B battle. You can see that on the screens now, heading down towards Hammerdown. And Wards are fully alongside this time as they go down towards Tower Corner. Can he go through? It's such a hard move to make it work all the way around the outside. They've seen it done before. Uh, I think Nathan's done it before, but not yeah. on this occasion. 
He has. He's done it more than once, I would say, as well, Ian. He does like that one because he's, uh, it's not done by many, is it? And he says, I beg to differ that it's not possible. And he's proven it many a time. Class A was kind of a bit to uh, relax that time. It was nearly half a second between the lead two. But Class B coming down towards us here. Into the pits has come number 60, Morecambe, sadly. But uh, Nathan Ward's got a good run on to start, finish straight. Bear with me a second, Ian, because heading up through uh, Folly, the first right-hander, Nathan Ward's got the inside line for Class B. Has he taken the lead of it? I've got a feeling he has, but I'm waiting for him to switch right at quarry. It looks to me as though it is the Class B now led by Nathan Ward. OK, no change in the top three, uh, but fourth, fifth and sixth right together. That's Matt Hallam, Chris Acton and Kieran Atwood still in that order. Tom Hawkins having a lonelier race there in seventh. And then in eighth place, it is now Nathan Ward ahead of Paul Barnes. So he's, he's finally done it. He's put a few car lengths between himself and Barnes in the black coloured car now. And then you've got James Colburn rounding out the top 10 just ahead of our Class C leader, Mark De Rosario. I think Barnes and Ward have been slowing each other a little bit up there and uh, they've dropped back into the clutch of the Class C battle. Oh, we've got a slow car there. I think that's Rose possibly who has got back up to speed again now. Right, the leaders are already making their way up towards Quarry and uh, Matt Hallam's having to defend from the two behind him as well. But the fastest lap of the race goes to Bryce Aaron, number one, two, three. Puff of brake smoke there as he's clearly trying. Nathan Ward, now he's made that move, is pull pulling away from Paul Barnes. That's a cracking fight he's had there. But the lead three is still close together. Certainly are. Well, the lead two are. Uh, it's Hall who's dropped away a little bit now on the penultimate lap of this race, of course. Coop has two lengths in hand over Bryce Aaron, who's never really got fully ahead, has he? But uh, he's been a constant shadow to Luke Coop all the way through this race. In fact, Aaron on the last lap did the best lap of the race, a one minute 10.634. Early on, Jonathan Van did a one minute 10.297. They're at the Bobby's uh, series of bends now. Out of it they come. It's still Cooper ahead. Bra uh, Aaron not giving up, though, and we're about to go on to the final lap, Chris. Yeah, we will, which is a shame because this is absolutely amazing. Through camp for the, the penultimate time comes Luke Cooper. He's just got a little bit of daylight from Bryce Aaron, one, two, three at the moment. As you say, 75, Rob Hall has corner, fallen away there. Still lapping fairly equivalent to them, but it's great fight. Matt Hallam is doing a brilliant job there, defending his fourth place. From now, Kieran Atwood, 43, has got ahead of 59, Chris Acton, but he's been hounded by the pair of them and he's just fending them off brilliantly, isn't he? It's doing a really good job. Absolutely right. Here comes Luke Cooper down to the S's for the 10th and final time in this race. That time through, he was uh, a little bit quicker than Bryce Aaron. Kept his lead, but there's less than a car length in it. They come past me for the final time. There they are on screen, heading down towards Hammerdown. Aaron looking to the left. He knows his chances of running out. Can he make a move around the outside? Nathan Ward's done that before, but Bryce Aaron, I don't think, probably has. He's going to have a look at the inside into the Bobbies. No, Cooper's got that covered, and we saw on lap one the perils of what happens if you try a move there. Heading up towards you for the final time. Here they come, very close together. Luke Cooper's having to go defensive. Has he moved over too late? Because it looks like Bryce Aaron's going to have a nibble up the inside. No, it's an optical illusion. Luke Cooper comes through, takes the checkered flag, and he is pleased with that because he knew he had to fight hard. Through comes second, Bryce Aaron, and then uh, Rob Hall, 75. But what about Matt Hallam? Brilliant performance in fourth place there to hold these guys off. He had his best time in qualifying. He's just done a brilliant job, and he's hardly moved there because I think he's exhausted after keeping those two behind him. Kieran Atwood in fifth, sixth is Chris Acton. There goes uh, Tom Hawkins, 28. But Nathan Ward, equally a fantastic job to take this Class B win. He's got to be pleased with that one and surely enjoyed the fight with Paul Barnes. Paul Barnes did a great job to really put that pressure on. And I think they are about to go side by side and uh, sort of put their thumbs up to each other. Mark, uh, sorry, James Colburn, 76. What a great way to repay the Wayne Paul Racing team of getting that car fixed. Number 76 came through to take Class C honours. What a fabulous performance. 11th, number 25, Mark De Rosario, second in Class C. There goes Bob Higgins in that beautiful 960 car. The uh, Riadro Racing Run, Macon 07, beautiful car. And, of course, he wins Class D. 78 is uh, the uh, James Rose Goodridge Limited Run Swift SC95. And then the final finisher is the number seven car of Michael Phillips in his, uh, his Class C car, which actually gives him third in Class C as well. Wow. They just always deliver just fabulous entertainment. Uh, and, and yet again, they did it. Yeah, absolutely brilliant stuff. Uh, even though we have that depleted field for the restart with uh, sort of two or three front runners 
uh, out of action. Grant Palmer was a retirement to the paddock, by the way, in that race, and we think he was the car that was down a cylinder as well. Just looking at the points then, going into the final meeting uh, on the 19th of September for these cars, it's now a 22-point lead, I reckon, for Luke Cooper on 136, and Bryce Aaron now up into second place on 114. Uh, and I think it'll be Felix Fisher third on 98 points. So I think, um, well, mathematically, Felix Fisher could still do it, um, but it's looking like it's between Luke Cooper and Bryce Aaron for the championship. Now, assuming Bryce Aaron's here for that final meeting of the season. I, I really hope so. I genuinely yeah, do. I do. Those guys have been amazing and it'll keep it alive. Uh, shame for Grant Palmer. I had a whole load of information sent through from his dad and I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to, to read that. Uh, Nathan Ward getting a lot of love as well. Top race Nathan Ward from Tyro Junior Karting who he does a lot of work supporting those guys. Uh, absolutely brilliant. And uh, Kev Davis says, thrilling Formula Ford, best race of the day. Luke under pressure, great drives from first two. Absolutely understandably and as you should you guys should be proud great drive from matt says zen monkey clothing matt hallam was absolutely fabulous there i really was impressed and equally yes you're right is that uh, uh rob a says very well done kieran atwood good clean fight all three of those together because of course you had chris acton all three of those that was an awesome fight between the three of them uh and more of the same so kudos to everyone there's so many drivers that you've got to congratulate on that one the one who really gets to do it, of course, uh, just quickly bring up as well another point there that uh, Alice Hallam says, well done, Matt Hallam, epic race, hashtag Zen Monkey. Well, the person who does get to have a chat with them and find out all about it and uh, is, I can hear the whistles and all sorts, is Josh down the background. Just quickly, Lucy Marie Smith at uh, Nathan Ward's other half says, amazing race, Nathan. I was watching from behind my hand. I bet you were, Lucy. It was amazing, but I'm going to hand down to Josh now. You got the drivers, mate. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, Luke just making his way over here. Luke, that was a pretty tough race. Very tough, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely uh, mega race with Bryce there. Um, couldn't break the tail at all, and it was, came right down to the last corner, and it's just, just able to hold him off. It seemed to be 10 laps of defender. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I was annoyed with the red flag because I just about gapped up. I don't know what happened to Felix, but yeah. um, that was a shame. Um, but yeah, it was an absolutely brilliant race after the, after the restart. Yeah, I think Felix had a broken suspension mount and he said, really, now that's, that's his championship in big dramas with no drop scores this year. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, it's a shame for the championship. Um, but obviously for you, that it's, it's been a perfect day. You've won both yeah, races. for me, perfect day. Two poles, two wins. Couldn't really ask for any more. Uh, really had to work hard for that second one. And today we've got some of the top Formula 4 drivers in the country here. Yeah, yeah, with Brown, who's won the Formula 4 yep. Festival. <laughs> Rob's come back as well, pairing with the Walter Hayes. And obviously Bryce and Grant and Felix are all amazing drivers. So it's, yeah, <laughs> great, great win. <laughs> and you had to use all your Castle Coombe experience in that one to, to know yeah, where to place yeah. your car. Obviously Bryce quite new to racing. So the inter quarry is quite difficult because it's still slippy with the yeah. oil down there. And I looked up into there a couple of times and I really had to make sure that I, I shut it down enough on the brakes to avoid running too wide and letting him pass on the exit. But brilliant race. And with Rob here as well, good to have two of the cars on the podium. Yeah, two cars on the podium is brilliant. Um, Rob's been out of Formula 4 for a while, so it's great to see him, him back in Formula 4 and even better to see him on the podium. <laughs> and now you prepare for in what, three weeks for the final round? Final round here, yeah. And Championship-wise, it's looking really good for me, <laughs> but with no drop rounds, anything could still happen. Well, well done today. Thank you, thank you. Um, we see if we can get Bryce over to have a chat. He's just uh, chatting to some of the team. Second place again, Bryce, but that was an incredible race between you and Luke. Yeah, no, still trying to find words for it. it. was every lap just to try and hound even each other, just trying to look for a gap somewhere. And it was tough. You know, obviously, I wish I could go and win it, but Luke did a phenomenal job. I have to give it hands down. You know, he did. He knows his place well. <laughs> he drove a great race, and I, you know, I can't, I can't take anything away from him there. You know, he was quick and he defended where he needed to. It was a little tough because we had a little bit of oil dry on the outside of turn one. So it's just tough to get to try to do the passes in there. But no, I enjoyed it, even though I came second. I still loved it. And, and good learning experience as well, learning the racecraft. Yeah, it was a lot of racecraft stuff. You know, <laughs> just trying everywhere, just looking low, looking high. And so yeah, racecraft-wise, you know, learned a lot from that. Um, another great experience in the book. And yeah, enjoyed it. Will you be back for the final rounds of the Castle Team Championship? See, the funny thing is, every time I say I'm not, like, the past few rounds, I've been like, oh, I don't think I will be. I'm not sure. <laughs> but I mean, and then we ended up coming back. And this time we came back with another guy. Yeah, I think um, we think you're second in the championship now as well. Maybe. Okay. Uh, well, I, I mean, I hope we. 
maybe we'll be able to come back, but I'm not sure because all the national stuff is picking up again in late September and early October. So we'll definitely see if we were able to. I'd hope we could come back. I love the track. The competition's great. But, yeah, really enjoying it here. So if we can, love to. Well, I hope to see you either there or we'll be at Brian's hatch for the yeah. meeting there, yeah. to one or the other. Uh, good luck for the rest of the season. All right, thank you. And yeah, Rob, over quickly. Yeah, We've got me. Yeah, sure. Um, good to see you back, Rob. First race in a few seasons, I believe. Yeah, first time back in a Formula Ford since 2017. Um, the first time back here since either 17 or 16. I can't quite remember. <laughs> I've slept since then. So, um, but yeah, no, it's nice to get back in the car and we're just trying to find the pace, really, just to see whether we do the Walt race or not at the end of the year. And by the looks of that race, we've still got some working out to do. So um, we'll see. You managed yeah. to avoid all the carnage up at the chicane. Then. Yeah, it was a bit of a nightmare, that was. I think it was on the cards in the first race that something was going to transpire. With You know, you have that many Formula Fords running closely together around here. It, it, you can sometimes have a bit of a knock. And um, it happened on the first lap that time. And the biggest problem was avoiding the tyres as they went like, everywhere like Skittles. But yeah. um, we managed to get through that. And then... It was really a case in the restart of um, trying to hold my position and, and seeing if if the front two fought enough for me to stay on the back of them because we didn't feel that we had the pace and that's that's the way it transpired really and um, even with them fighting we didn't but uh, but no we'll take it it's a good start and uh, we'll see what we do next time. I hope back in a few weeks time. Yeah, back in September. Um, we've got another test in between now and then so hopefully we can find a little bit. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what it is. It's time in the seat that's the main thing, just to find out where we are and we'll go from there. Well, well done on the podium. Awesome. All right, thank you very Head much. Head back to Christian right. Alcatraz, already on the track. Thank you very much, Josh. Yep, they're already out there and they're on their warm-up lap. So quickly through the grid for the saloons, obviously sponsored by Samco Sport. On pole position, it is Simon Thornton Norris, number one, with Robert Ellick, the number 50 golf alongside him. Hopefully sorted whatever issues he's, he had earlier as well. Second row, seven, Chris Rawlings and 66, Adam Preble. He is out there. Let's hope the fuel pickup issue has gone. Third row, 91, Gary Preble and two, Dave Scaramanga. Fourth row, six, should have been Rob Ballard there, but he He's not so on his own is 25 John Lannan. Fifth row, 39 James Bake Blake out in his layon for only the second race. And great to see that the uh, yellow uh, Astra of 98 Mark Wyatt is alongside him. Sixth row, one, two, three Peter Ellison, two, eight, two Dave Spiller. Seventh row, 26 Mark Sutton, 67 Chris uh, Terry Thorne. Eighth row is 23. Stuart Hignall is not there, sadly. The problem that put him out in the first one has left uh, its issues. 28, Chris Hignall, therefore, on his own. And then no Louis Fiddies. Sadly, he's not out there. So 88, Chaz Riles on his own on row nine. So, so much that we can expect to happen here. And uh, who knows what's going to really evolve here. We'll wait and see. But we've got uh, Simon Thornton Norris did not get the start he wanted at uh, in that first race. He's going to want something better. Green flag is now waving at the back already. Five second board is now up. 15 lap race for this. The saloon car sponsored by Samco Sports. Waiting for the lights to come on. No engine revs just yet. First light, second, third, fourth. On goes the fifth. Up go the engine notes. And long hold this time. Long, long hold. Off go the lights. Adam Preble screams away at the front. Simon Thornton Norris is slow. Gary Preble aiming for the inside of Simon Thornton Norris as he goes plummeting down the order to Simon Thornton Norris. That was not the start he wanted. I'm not sure what the issue is there with it, but uh, hopefully it's not a problem. But Adam Preble comfortably in the lead. The two golf side by side it is uh, on the inside well I thought that uh, Rawlins was going to do it but actually Rawlins is about to be passed by the charging Gary Preble up through the order yet again the Prebles are looking good yeah up to third place is Gary Adams in the lead after those uh, issues in the first race with the fuel pickup so it's Adam Preble who uh, got the lap record as well earlier leading the way then Rob Ellick second Gary Preble third Chris Rawlings fourth and a long way back is Simon Thornton Norris in fifth place, Dave Scaramanga sixth, Peter Alliston seventh, James Blake eighth, and then the rest of them. There's one that stopped. I think that might be John Lannan's car, possibly, that stopped on the exit of the S's. We'll try and pick that one up in a minute. But the leaders already making their way through Tower. And <clears throat> excuse me, you've got the Prebles first and third with Ellick in the middle of the sandwich. 
Yeah, down towards us here. He is very much the filling in the sandwich, uh, but it's sort of fairly equidistant. Grandstand seat for the fourth place, Chris Rawlins, number seven in the red golf as it stands at the moment. We just need to keep an eye on Alec to see whether he has a problem with gears that you were spotting over your end uh, in yeah. the first race, Ian. And over here, I was watching massive understeer coming around Camp Corner. If anything, he's closed right onto the back of Adam Preble this time. So that black golf is certainly flying by the looks of it this time. Yep, so they come down into a yellow flag zone here where they've got the stricken cover. It is John Lannan that didn't make it through at the end of lap one, oh, unfortunately, no. after winning his class in the earlier race. So it is uh, Adam Preble leading, Rob Ellick second, Gary Preble third, fourth is Chris Rawlings, Simon Thornton, Norris fifth, and not really making much impression on the top four yet. And sixth is Dave Scaramanga as we... Oh, working the second lap here of a 15-lap race. Can Gary Preble do a, a, another remarkable job to get through to a fourth win of the day? He's not dropped to the very back of the field this time as he did at the beginning of the earlier race, though, Chris. Uh, no, he he, uh, he he had a fair bit to do because of his grid spot and he made quick, sharp work of that mm. one and he's up with these two. But Adam Preble is now controlling at the front. I keep trying to work out whether he's potentially still got the issue. Fastest lap of the race so far goes to the second place car of Elick, which explains why he was able to close in on Gary Preble. But it's kind of, I don't know about you, I'm glued to the left-handers now to see what uh, what is happening with Adam Preble. Again, he slows there. Now, it could that be the left-hand kink as you get to the top of Avon Rise mm. that showed that he is still having that issue? Yeah, we'll have a look. He's obviously coming through the left-hander at the S's now. Seems to be around there reasonably efficiently. No real delay there. And uh, he's got Alec behind him and Gary, his brother, behind him. But, uh, yeah, no real time lost. And Chris Rawlings just struggling to stay with those first three. Now he's dropping back a bit in fourth. Not yet, though, into the clutches of Simon Thornton Norris in fifth. In sixth place on his own, very much, is Dave Scaramanga in the Scirocco. And then... a. Uh, uh, in seventh, it's Peter Elliston in another of the golfs, the black golf with the day glow bumpers and wing mirrors. So down comes the uh, Preble, Elick Preble uh, sandwich in towards camp. They come and it's the Astra of Adam Preble in the lead. Just runs a little bit wide across the grass there, but just kept his boot in sensibly there. He might not have uh, triggered the uh, timing beam. Gary Preble now is right up on Elick. I think Elick was spooked by that, thinking that Adam may have had a big moment there. But uh, I don't think that was on the cars. He just sort of had the two left-hand wheels on the mud. But Elick has now closed back in again. So it is as he gets up to that point that Elick has the, the running of that Astra, you know. And Elick has got the best lap of the race so far as well, a 111.194. That would have been well underneath the lap record, and apart from the fact it was a 10.8 set earlier on by uh, by uh, Adam Preble. A 10.881 is the new benchmark. They're past me now here at Old Paddock. Elick only a couple of car lengths. See, this is a, I have to say, this is a really impressive drive from Rob Elick here in the company of these two brothers who are absolutely rapid. They really are a benchmark around Castle Coombe, aren't they? He's doing a fantastic job. Just a bit slower out of Tower Corner, though, that time. He's lost a couple of lengths to Adam, and that means he's into the clutches of Gary. Yeah, I mean, I would not want to be Elick right now. It's just uh, that, that, you know, I'm going to wake up having cold sweats in my dreams tonight, imagining that I'm in that position. But Elick has been racing really, really quick and is a great character to speak to down in the paddock as well. And uh, he's got to be enjoying this, hoping that whatever issue was sort of a bit of an issue for him, a bit of a thorn in his side in that first race, does not come back. See, now he's fallen into the clutches of Gary Preble there. But as they then flick left and then the right of of quarry is that you see that again Elick is able to close massively onto to Preble but you mm. wouldn't believe the gap between them as they go they go around folly Ian no no it's uh, fascinating isn't it how it's changing around the lap back towards me at the S's then and uh Thornton Ice, by the way, is in fourth place now. He's ahead of Chris Rawlings, but he's still six seconds behind the lead group. I don't think he's going to catch them, but he is leading Class B, of course. Down towards Tower go the leaders. Still in the same order. Top three. Adam Preble in the Astra. The golf for Robelic. The Sat Leon for Gary Preble. Race warm winner. Adam has won twice already this season. As they head back to you, Chris.
They do, and it's really, I was just glued to that through Bobby's there, is it does look as though through the twiddly bits that Elick has got the, uh, the, the measure of these high-powered cars either side of him. And uh, we watch it now is that Adam Preble will pull away as they go through Folly up Avon Rise. The gap you can see on the screen now in to show that I'm not fibbing. And Adam Preble's lost it. He's kept turning right there as he went through Folly and he aimed towards the infield. He's got it tidy back up again. What an unusual mistake that was. Is that an issue with the car? I would not have expected him to keep going right there as he was powering up Avon Rise. And he's being passed by Thornton Norris at Quarry Corner now. So it's Rob Ellick now that's leading, but only just from Gary Preble. They are heading towards me at Old Paddock. Yeah, that was bizarre, wasn't it, from yeah. Adam Fuddy's. He's, he's going again, though, and he's still there in third place, a long way behind the two leaders now, but uh, just ahead of Simon Thornton Norris. But uh, leaders at Tower Corner... And it's still Alec Head, and they're starting to catch up on some of the traffic now as well. So this is going to add an extra dimension to the race, and maybe this might be where Gary Preble's just a bit more experienced than uh, the Rob Alec will, will tell, really, and that he'll be able to get a better path through the traffic than Alec, perhaps. Well, let's have a look down towards camp, and I thought that Gary Preble was going to have a sneaky snifter up the inside in towards camp, but he's just carried that one through. Oh, and that was a bit of oversteer for Alec this time coming out of camp. He started aging towards the infield a little bit there, probably conscious of the back marker in Chris Hignall, but he got it collected and didn't lose too much momentum there. So Gary Preble still in second, Adam Preble in third place, and, and pulling away from Simon Thornton Norris. That was a very uncharacteristic mistake in a slightly unusual spot that last lap when you consider it doesn't look like he has much of an issue. Yep. It doesn't uh, look like he's handling right, though, does it, to be honest, does, in general? No, I agree with you. Uh, Dave Spiller, just ahead of uh, Terry Thorne and up into 10th place, by the way. So leader Rob Ellick coming past me. He's about four or five lengths clear of uh, Gary Preble, then Adam Preble in third. Fourth is Simon Thornton Norris. They've just lapped the Hignall car. And uh, Chris Rawlings is just going to come past those two back markers as well. Hickle and Riles, I think that is, that uh, are being lapped. There's the leader through Bobby's. Preble dutifully following him through. Single file there. But will he mount an attack down into camp corner this time, Chris? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see as well. And uh, I'm also acutely aware of that down in uh, ninth position, the 98 car of Mark Wyatt, that Astra that they've had to work very hard on to get sorted. Just to pause in for a second. Gary Preble's got a good run down the straight, but the inside line at Folly was slammed shut by Alec to make sure that Gary couldn't do anything. But James Wyatt, uh, Mark Wyatt is getting quicker and quicker and he's closing on the cars ahead of him. He's now in the 118. So I think whatever they've had to replace on that, he's been bedding that in in the early stages and now he's going for it. Yeah, it's just behind James Blake in the Seat and uh, Peter Wellaston as well in the Golf. So catching both of those two leaders are catching. I think that's the Mark Sutton uh, MG and passing him and lapping him down here. At Old Paddock. It's still Alec that's ahead of Preble, who Gary Preble that is that takes a bit more speed out of the corner. And Simon Thornton Norris nice. is pulling off. Simon Thornton Norris oh. is pulling off at the S's. He's got a mechanical problem. All of a sudden, Adam Preble came past me on his own, and uh, I was thinking the same as you were, Chris. And Thornton Norris, the answer is, is parking on the old circuit at the S's. So that means that up into the Class B lead will go Mark Wyatt. Well, no, we had another good move down in towards camp here this uh, the second ago, is that uh, yellow Seat Leon of James Blake just moved up the inside of one, two, three, Peter Ellison as he's get, growing in confidence in that car. And of course, Mark Wyatt's only just behind them, as I said. The two leaders picking their way through traffic, through folly. That was uh, even Steve Weston had his head in his hands for a moment there, just making sure they get through cleanly. Past Dave Spiller, they go now into quarry. Adam Preble's trying his best to close in and he is lapping quicker than them, you know, but he's got best part of five seconds to make up. Yeah, and six laps after this to do it. They want to lap nine of the race now down towards me they come good drive this from alec to keep gary preble at bay the lap time is really competitive as well they were in the low 12s all three of the leaders on the last lap past me again down towards tower corner there's uh, adam trouble getting past the back mark as chris rawlings trying to follow him through in fourth position alec then under braking now for bobby's and yep, he maintains the position uh, there, the, maintains the lead. There he is, heading out of Bobby's back towards you once again. 
I'm impressed. James Blake has just romped away now. He's got in front and putting a new personal best. But the lead two glued together. Round camp they come. Oh, and again, that was just a bit of oversteer. So they've changed the setting on Elix's car. And he just oversteered. And he's made slight contact with Gary Preble. Gary Preble just had to check out there and has fallen away from Elix. And I don't think that that was deliberate by any stretch. Is that there was that oversteer and then overcorrection from Elix that just meant as Gary Preble thought, oh, I've got a chance to dive up the inside. Oh, sorry, the outside, and it kind of disappeared. So that was a tricky moment for both of them there. It was, and uh, Gary Preble's on the grass too. He was on the grass for a good stretch up the start and finish straight there as he uh, was taking avoiding action. So he's lost three car lengths maybe as a result of that as they come past me this time. It's still Alec that's ahead with five and a half laps to go from Gary Preble. But what was the lap time for Adam Preble that time? He did a 12.8. The two cars ahead of him are in the 13, so half a second a lap he's making up now. Uh, Adam Preble, can he get back on terms? He's still four and a half seconds adrift, though, it must be said. Yeah, it'll be interesting. They're now about to come up on uh, the battle between uh, uh, Elliston in the 1 2 3 car and Mark White and the Astra. Hopefully, White's got the experience and he's going to stay out the way he knows. Elliston, hopefully, will now see him. Unfortunately, that's put Wyatt away from the battle with Elliston, but uh, through goes Elick and Preble. Preble glued to the back of him again. That respite did not last long at all, did it? He's glued to the back of him in that stay out. And Elick in that golf, it's interesting. They've clearly changed it from the understeer to now he's into a little bit of oversteer through camp. And he just needs to, to sort of be uh, be mindful of that when he comes through. But he's still got the lead at the moment. He has, but for how much longer? Because Preble's up alongside him into the S's and he's gone through. All over the grass goes Elick. Elick loses out there. He's down to second place. Gary Preble takes the lead as they come up to lap James Blake. So a mistake there, I think, ultimately from Elick to get on the grass. Oh, and now a big, well, it was almost like a lockup, but he keeps while doing he was that. Out, yeah, it's yeah. bizarre. Uh, and certainly looked very concerning for a moment, but he's got a good lead now. And he's got the back mark between himself and Rob Elick as they, uh, they head through Bobby's again. So Preble all of a sudden, like the cork out of a bottle, has uh, made up quite a bit of time, it would seem. Yeah, I mean, I'm not mechanically minded enough uh, to, to know what, what it means, but it, I was almost wondering if it's like as he's changing gear that that puff of, of smoke from somewhere's coming. I, I don't know why it would do that, mm. but I've just been repeatedly watching it. There it goes a little bit there. And uh, and he's done it numerous times through uh, the, the right-hander of Folly here, but he didn't particularly that time. But up he goes in the lead. And Adam Preble's not really got an answer for these guys anymore. In fact, he's slowed down to the 16s, hasn't he? And Rawlings has passed him, I think, as well for third place uh, as they headed on to the oh, start yeah. of this lap. So, yeah, Rawlings up into third place now. So it's all changed. It's Gary Preble leading, Rob Ellick second, Chris Rawlings third, and Adam Preble fourth. I'm just wondering if he's having some of those fuel, fuel pickup issues yeah. again that are affecting him intermittently. Meanwhile, that Wyatt and Elliston battle that you're talking about is re rejoined and Wyatt and the Yellow Astra, uh, all that hard work and delivery of spare parts is paying off because he's, he's ahead of Elliston now and he's, he's leading Class B as well, Mark Wyatt, the Interceptor Racing car. Yeah, fair play. Uh, it's a good fight. And it's just uh, interesting where you can see that he's clearly been sort of like building that one uh, up and sort of sensibly bedding anything in. Gary Preble coming down towards camp and uh, we've it'll be... Uh, Four laps left to go. This will be the 12th lap. Uh, sorry, three laps it will be left to go now. He's completed 12 laps. Elliot comes across the line. And I don't know, that lap time almost suggests that he kind of knows that the inevitable has happened. There goes Chris Rawlins, as you say, the number seven car up into third. And Adam Preble in fourth. Now, that's still in the 16s. That car is still not healthy, is it? Uh, no, it's not, uh, not quite as it should be. Is it not handling quite right or... Or something, but uh, it's a shame because he was uh, four points clear in the championship coming into this round over Mark Sutton. Mark Sutton is leading Class C. Uh, Which he so didn't we... do in the first race. No, though, he did didn't. He? No, he didn't. Um, so this will be closing the gap in the championship potentially as far as Preble is concerned. Because of course, he's only fourth in Class A. So he's dropping quite a lot of points there potentially. A bit more competition in Class A, you must say, this year. But... Uh, there you go. So they've all gone past me. Uh, Gary Preble leading with just over two laps to go now. 
Yeah, here he comes again, picking his way through the traffic. Chaz Riles, I think that's going to be two laps uh, on uh, on Chaz now. Coming through, Chris Hignall be his next target as uh, Chris crosses the line, leading Class D, of course. Oh, and again, Elick, a mixture of understeer pushing him wide, then over correction. That is, I mean, it does look a handful through the fast part of uh, of camp up here but uh, the way he's able to close in on the other cars heading up in towards quarry it's uh it's intriguing of knowing where to go with that car i'd imagine for him but he sat there in that second under no pressure from third but i can't see that is there's any way he can close in on preble enough no it doesn't look like it so preble is here gary preble that is turning his way through for the penultimate time in this race old paddock past my commentary box it goes rob Alec second and quite a gap back to Chris Rawlings in third. I mean, there's, I don't, assuming that Preble keeps going, I don't think there's any danger that Adam Preble in fourth place will be Corks. He's such a long way clear of uh, Scaramanga. I think he's about half a minute clear of Scaramanga now. So if you can just nurse the car home for, for the fourth place points, that could be important the way that um, there has been a lot of attrition so far this season, Chris. Yeah, there really has, hasn't there? It's been a brutal season for him for, for many reasons. I mean, seeing Nor Norris go again, he's had like one good result, one uh, DNF uh, yeah, pretty yeah. Much each time now, sadly, for him. Gary yeah. Preble goes through to start his final lap now. And uh, although the lead is coming down, it's not coming down quick enough. So uh, number 50, Robert Ellick sat there in that second. Third place for the other TSR golf at number seven, Chris Rawlins. And Adam Preble just here trying to nurse this around, but he's not going to come under pressure from behind either, I don't think. No, I think you're right. Um, with cars now working their 15th and final lap, Mark Sutton about to be lapped again, I think, by Gary Preble, but he is still leading in Class C, ahead of Chaz Riles. I think the two cars still circulating within Class C with uh, John, uh, John Lannan, the very early retirement after winning the class in race one. And uh, Chris Rawlings coming past me. And yeah, I mean, Adam Preble's last lap was a, was it a 118? Bit of a mm. smudge on the screen. It's hard to tell. So he's really dropping back. He's in danger of being unlapped by uh, Mark White and James Blake before the end. But Gary Preble's heading back towards you at least. Yep, here they come for the final time down towards the checker flag. Gary Preble is going to be four wins out of four for his race today. What a great performance. And it's not been plain sailing, but he's done it. Robert Ellick, great performance today in that number 50 Volkswagen Golf. He's probably going to be frustrated with uh, a couple of things he's going to go and work on, I dare say, because the pace and driving skill is there. Chris Rawlings comes home with a podium that he threatened earlier. He's got it this time, as he managed to do in the uh, race last race meeting. Chris Hignall comes across the line in number 28 to take the Class D honours. And there goes Chaz Riles just behind him in, uh, well, so that's 12th and 13th on the road. Second in Class T, uh, C for Chaz Riles. There goes Adam Preble. He manages to keep that fourth position there to sort of do a damage limitation to his championship aspirations on what has been a very tricky day for him. But a second and a fourth isn't the end of the world by any stretch. We wait for Dave Scaramanga to come home in fifth place, the number two car, the Volkswagen Sirocco. Here he comes now to take the chequered flag. And he is therefore going to finish in fifth place. Sixth is already taking a checkered flag. James Blake in that number 39, really getting to grips with that C at Leon, but very impressive in seventh and class B win for 98 Mark Wyatt. He was closing in very rapidly uh, on James Blake at the end there. Also a good performance for uh, the number one, two, three car, Peter Elliston. He came home in eighth position. Ninth, 282, Dave Spiller. Tenth, just crossing the line there and getting second in Class B, 67, which is Terry Thorne. And uh, 11th, number 26, is uh, a great performance with the Class C win for the, uh, the the 26 car of Mark Sutton. His championship aspirations doing uh, being dealt a great hand there. 28, Chris Hignall in 12th. 13th, number 88, Chaz Riles. And sadly, we lost Simon Thorne to Norris and, of course, the 25 car right at the start there of uh, John Lannan, which was a real shame for both of those. But still very entertaining, albeit uh, a, a rather tricky situation for a number of those. But the Samco Sports Saloon Car Championship, Gary Preble making it four out of four there and making his way towards uh, Josh as the sun is absolutely beaming across here. I'll tell you what I'm going to very quickly do this time so that uh, there's probably a little bit more time for uh, Josh because we rushed through the the podium for the last one. But I'm going to go through the uh, the GT 
grid for race number two, he says, as he waits for it to load. Right, so the grid is going to be as follows, and it is amended because I think we've had probably some withdrawals or something. R front row, Oliver Ball, 41, and 112, Kevin Jones. Row two should have been 21, Dominic Shepard, but it probably isn't, and 138, Sasha Kakad. Row three, 27, Bradley John, and 24, Tony Bennett. Fourth row, 23, Nigel Mustel, 56, Alan Hamilton. Row five, 241, Lucky Kara, 20, Tim Woodman. Sixth row, 99, Jamie Sturgis, 81, Neil Greenland. 40, Jazz Sapra, and 8, Kevin Bird on row seven. Row eight, 175, Martin Thomas, and 458, Alistair Fazikas. Ninth throw is 86, Jeremy Cook, and 73, Michael Parsons. Tenth row, 33, Paul Arbor, 59, Del Brett. And on the 11th and final row, 124, Sonny Gill, and 123, Alex Baldwin, or Alexander Baldwin, not the actor. So it is a different one. Uh, I can see that uh, down there, ready to receive the drivers, is uh, is Josh. So I'm going to bring Josh in, ready to... Uh, receive the drivers. the drivers. I'm going to put that taken up the full thing and see the cars in the back. All sorts of uh, great comments. For some reason, we're getting the echo of me this time. There we go. That's a bit better. Uh, Tracy Prumage was obviously cheering on both of, uh, of her sons there. Uh, well done, Mark Wyatt. Class B win. Deborah Humphrey, you are absolutely right. That was an amazing performance. Tracy Prumage saying, well done, boys. Very proud. So you should be. Josh, I think you're rounding them up now. Yeah, the drivers are yeah. over here. Here comes Gary. It's another race. It's another Gary Pebble win. Oh, my days. What a day. <laughs> Don't get any much better than that, does it? Uh, Certainly the two saloon car races. You really had to work for it. I worked very hard for it, yeah. Um, yeah, what can I... Just absolutely fantastic. Just at, oh, never dreamt of four wins in one day. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just speechless, really. Yeah, got, got a reasonable start this time. Um, kept on the back of Adam. And, and Rob, and um, just sort of be patient. And um, I don't know what happened to Adam, but he, he just seemed to lose the back end going through folly and um, just, just ended up going infield. And then um, I was just sort of sizing with Rob and, and just sort of following him and seeing what lines he was taking. And, and I could see he was really punishing his fronts. And, and uh, I just thought, well, I just wondered if there was enough laps left before I could pounce. So that was the that was the big question. But um, yeah, thankfully I managed to do it and get the win. Get a bit of a grassy moment past the pits. Not sure if you've seen that bit of cartoon King before. No, I mean uh, I got a great run down the outside of Rob, and uh, I'm not sure if he didn't see me there or what. But he sort of um, didn't give me a lot of room, and uh, we just we just touched a little bit. It's uh, spat me on the grass. So. Yeah, I had a, had a good old tank slapper for about a good 100 yards going down there. It was a bit of a twitchy bum moment, but uh, managed to pull it back. Yeah, I oh, chuffed the nuts. Absolutely the chuffed the pace nuts. today looks almighty. When, sort of in the 11s consistently. I think Adam just squeezed into the 10s this morning. Yeah, I mean, the car feels good. We've changed the gearbox. Um, it's, it's still not 100%. It's one I built myself, so I've only got myself to blame. But uh, yeah, we'll we're, we're get it back in there, pull it to bits and fine-tune it for next time. And good to see some new competition up the front. Oh, amazing. Yeah, I mean, Rob, Chris, Adam, uh, it's, uh, just, it's just, yeah. It makes you really feel like you've won a race when, when you win it. You know, when you win one of those, you, you feel you've earned it. And hopefully it'll be more of the same in a few weeks' time for the last round. Let's hope so. <laughs> well, well done. Thank you very much. Let's get Rob, Rob Alec over. Here comes, here comes Rob. I think he'll be very pleased with his day. Second place, uh, Rob, and it was not so close to being a win. Yeah, nearly that, nearly that. We've been messing around with the tyres. These different tyres are allowed now. We tried the Pirellis, and for some reason my car was just terrible. So we wasted like two test sessions and the last races basically chasing tyres and trying to find a problem. Gary and Adam tried them today and had the same <laughs> issue, just nightmares. We put these Area 52s on first time we've driven on the cars come alive basically. So yeah, just um, I hadn't done enough racing really. So Gary came up behind me, started making a few mistakes, cooked the tyres, went on the grass a bit. That was all it was. And then come the end, I started coming back at him. So it's good to be in the mix of him. But you're saying like you haven't done much racing. Gary's done so much and so much here. So yeah, you must exactly, be really yeah. pleased to be battling with him. Yeah, exactly. We ain't far away now. I think he knows that we're knocking on the door. <laughs> so, yeah, it's good. It's good to be there. And you'll sure be back in a few weeks to try and beat him. Yeah, yeah, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. Yeah, now we've got the tyres that we're happy with and the cars, the cars there. I, I turned the power right down because I couldn't drive on the tyres. So that last race, that's why the cars come live because I turned the power back up. So maybe we could squeeze a bit more out of it and <laughs> gave him closer. Chris reckons we had the fastest lap. So we'll yeah, get, I think so. Yeah, we're getting we're getting us in the right direction. Yeah, I think, uh, what are here? One minute, one eleven point one. Yeah, so that's a big jump from yeah. where we were last year and. 
yeah, it's good to be racing with him, really. <laughs> well, Adam come off, but <laughs> well, well done Cheers. and good luck. Uh, like to see Chris Rawlings is over here. I <laughs> think we're not going to get Chris, it seems. So I head back to the other Chris, Chris Dawes. Thanks, Frank. Yeah, they're probably all talking and sorting out. So thank you for that, uh, uh, Josh. So we'll put that down into the green room and you'll see that we've got this wonderfully eclectic mix of GT cars out there. Now, we knew that the second row, 21 Dominic Shepard, wasn't going to be there. Sadly, let me have a look. What are we missing? Nigel Mustel's not there. We kind of uh, suspected, Ian, didn't we, that that uh, Nissan Nismo GTR was, was sounding ropey uh. and going a bit slowly and he's not made it out there, sadly. Yeah, it's a shame, isn't it? I mean, he did finish fourth in the early race. Everyone that started the early race finished, by the way, which is actually a bit unusual yeah. for a GT race, which is, if, if that's not a bit <laughs> rude to say that, but uh, that, that, that that was good going, that everyone... Uh, everyone Just quickly pick out some of the, the others, aren't they? On. Lucky Care is not um, out there, and Neil Greenland's not out there either, so that's uh, bizarre. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so obviously a few people sort of probably nursing problems home in the earlier race, but... Uh, not able to sort of get them fixed satisfactorily to take the start of the second and Lucky Kerr is probably exhausted as well because he's been uh, two days racing at, uh, at Donington Park in the Ferraris. Um, and then uh, the, the sort of qualifying and, and race number one in the BMW. But I know he was looking forward to it, but maybe he's just kind of uh, hit his, his maximum point. Uh, I love the story that he was, uh, he was here... Uh, was it the first race meet of the year when he bought the Ferrari out and then didn't appear for the second one and neither did, I don't think, Lee Frost did either from, from memory. And uh, and it was basically uh, Lucky Kerr had had a dream in the night about uh, eating um, scones. And so he woke up with an absolute hankering for scones and sent a couple of his guys out to hunt down some fresh scones and cream and everything and sat in the paddock having the best scones, he says, that he's ever had. And they just decided they were enjoying the, the company of everyone in the paddock, which, of course, is a lovely thing about Coombe here, uh, and decided that, no, they didn't want to go out and race. <laughs> right. That's bizarre, isn't it? I'm probably just, well, we don't all sort of live out our dreams the next day, isn't it, really? And uh, we're not supposed to be motor racing, but, uh, but there we go. Um, no, exactly. It's, it's turning into a nice afternoon now. Isn't it? With the, with the, with the sun out. For this final race of the day, uh, beautiful afternoon here at Coombe, and I think we're in for for a good race here as well, aren't we? With um, Kevin Jones had a really good drive in the first race, didn't he? To keep Oliver Bull at bay all the way through that uh, that first was, race, Bull. It was the start that he got, wasn't it? That was mm. the thing, and he needs to do the same again, doesn't he, Kevin? He does. He does. That's the key. If he can, that he's shown that he can keep. Uh, on a Bay 15-minute race. Exactly. Ball. But if Ball gets the start, then you think that Ball could possibly pull away. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he is second in the championship. Tony Bennett, with his Class B win earlier, sort of continues to lead overall. Uh, but, okay. But... <laughs> Here we go, though. What are we going to get? Oliver Ball in control for the start. The lights go out. Off go the field. Again, Kevin Jones has got a good start. Is he going to do enough to be able to get through? He snaps across the front of Oliver Ball. Oliver Ball's going to be livid with that, that he's not been able to capitalise on it. I thought he was going to. Bradley's got a brilliant jo uh, job in that start. 27 Bradley John in the Evo. He didn't manage to do it the first time, but he's up into third on the back of these guys. And then I think it's uh, uh, Sasha Kakad sat there in fourth at the minute. Yep. So down towards the S's they come for the first time. And it is as it was in race one. Kevin Jones leading. Oli Ball in second place. Bradley John third. And... Sasha Kakad, as you rightly say, in fourth place. In fifth, it's Tony Bennett leading the Class B charge. And Alan Hamilton, despite those uh, it was clutch issues that he had in race one, wasn't it? He's back out there. He's in sixth place. Tim Woodman's seventh, and I think it's Jamie Sturgis' eighth as they head through Tower Corner. The lead's already up into Bobby's for the first time. And it is Kevin Jones leading them from Bull in second place and Bradley John third. Yeah, in fact, Alan Hamilton was all over the back of uh, Tony Bennett there, I noticed, although he's fallen away a little bit back into the clutches of Woodman. But here comes the top three. It is uh, Kevin Jones ahead of Oliver Ball. Bradley John up into third place. Sasha Kakad alone only fourth at the moment, but Tony Bennett's going to try and hunt him down in that number 24, that ridiculously quick Caterham R300. Then it's Alan Hamilton just back into the clutches in that 56 class of 20 Woodman as it stands at the moment. And it's a great fight between Sturgis and Jazz Sapra as well. 
Yeah, great stuff as the leaders come back down towards us. And I guess something a bit different in this race is that Kevin Jones is just starting to make a little bit of a break from Oliver Ball. We never really saw that in the earlier race. He's sort of half a second to the good here. It was, yeah, seven tenths at the beginning of lap one, at the end of lap one. Actually, as they come around this first part of the lap, I think Bull is catching him. And I think in the, the first race, or after the first race, Jones said that Bull was fast around the back of the circuit, around this part of the track. So then possibly by the end of the lap, uh, Jones will have got a bigger lead out again, up towards seven tenths as it was at the end of lap one. Such is the speed there round with me already. Well, you said that he was pulling away from Ollie Ball. Let's cancel that because I would say mm. that's not the case anymore. He's managed to reel him in and Bradley John has been dropped a little bit. Now let's check. Now that's still a quick lap for Bradley John, but I think it's the uh, usual thing, isn't it? It's taken a moment for the, them to get things wound up a little bit here. Now that it's done, Oliver Ball's reeled him in. But as we saw in the first race, it's one thing to catch, it's another to pass. And we saw strengths and weaknesses between the two at different parts. But Oli Ball has just put in the fastest lap of the race. Yeah, but I think on this first part of the next lap, up until the sort of going to break for the S's, I think there, Jones continues to build the lead. From the breaking area for the S's onwards, I think that is where Bull is strongest. And he's closing the gap. It's right under the rear wing of that noble as they go through Tower Corner, as you can see, and head off up towards Bobby's. Um, there they go. And you see there's nothing to choose between them. They're both using quite a bit of curb as well to get through Bobby's just as fast as they can. So, as you say, different strengths at different parts of the circuit, and we're in for another cracker. In fact, look, Alan Hamilton's onto the back of Tony Bennett again in that blue Westfield Aero onto the Caterham R300. Two very different cars, to say the least, with all sorts of additional appendages uh, and, and a real work of art on that uh, 56 car Westfield Aero of Alan Hamilton. Team Hamilton will be cheering him on there and he's closed in Tony Bennett. Bennett's lost contact with his usual nemesis and rival Sasha Kakad as it stands at the moment. But the leaders towards you, that's another fastest lap for Bull. Yeah. It's uh, a, a 107.373, not into the 106s, which we've seen. But, uh, yep, he's within two car lengths of the Noble here. And I guess the question is, where is his best chance of an attack? Or is he going to be relying on, on Jones making a bit of a mistake somewhere in order to capitalise? I, I think it might take that, to be honest, for Oliver Ball to be able to, to make his way through. Third, by the way, Bradley John. Fourth, Sasha Kikad. Fifth, Tony Bennett. Sixth, Alan Hamilton. And Tim Woodburn, Jamie Sturgis, Jazz Safra. And it's the Ferrari of Fazikas that rounds out the top ten. Well, in towards camp come the lead two again. I've got the impression, to be honest with you, if he's going to do it, it's going to be um, uh, Tower or Bobby's sort of. I mean, Bobby's, I can't see how you can do it in these cars, to be honest. But he mm. seems to close out of the, uh, the S's in front of you down yes. towards Tower, doesn't he? Yep, That's where absolutely. it's the closest, whereas by now, it's you'll see it coming towards you. It's sort of, relatively speaking, spread out a little bit. Yeah, so down towards me, they come at the S's. And again, it's a much bigger lead going into the S's than it is coming past me for, for Kevin Jones. They're coming up to lap the one, two, three car, Alexander Baldwin. I don't think Bull is quite as close on this lap as he was, or he has been on the previous couple, actually. And that's because Jones put in a new fastest lap of the race, actually. Mm, yeah. He did, didn't he? So that explains that. They go past that Civic, which looks a little, a little bit out of place against these much quicker cars <laughs> going past it. They go out of Bobby's and uh, back up towards you. But but yeah, I think maybe another lap where Jones hasn't had quite such a strong lead in. As you say, Tower could be the place where Bull might mount an attack. Well, through they go here, and it's a new fastest lap for Ollie Ball this time. They are trading br blows like a pair of prize fighters, aren't they? Up in towards Quarry they go. Now, is Ollie Ball closing at this stage? Yes is the answer. So, actually, there's the point, uh, Ian, that I've just noticed, mm. is that it's probably from Quarry round that he's able to close in a little bit. Yeah, let's have a look down towards the S's. His two or three car lengths of drift as they, uh, as they head into the S's past... The Marshall's post past the commentary box there. You can see them on screen. Two lengths distance is the gap between them. Down towards tower. Sort of bright lights going almost at the same instant. And Kevin Jones 
keep holds on. I'll just sense here that unless Kevin Jones makes a mistake of even a tiny mistake, it's going to be really hard for Ollie Ball here to, with all of his experience trying Castle Coombe, to, uh, to be able to make a way through. What are we on? Lap six about to complete that. Yeah, it's going to be challenging. Well, he's very, very close this time. Now, looking ahead, we've got three back markers they're going to be up with. And that's, um, I think, what have we got? Arbor and uh, and Sonny Gill having a great fight. Now, that could be interesting. They're going side by side ahead of them into Quarry. So they're going to be encountering them around about by you. Del Brett, they'll be picking off first. But it's the two fighting of Arbor and Gill that's going to be a challenge for them, you know. It certainly is. And Kevin Jones gets past Del Brett's car. So too does Ollie Bull. So they've both got past the first of those three back markers. Then they've got Gill and Arbor. And Ball's going to try and use this to his advantage. But he was going to try and go around the outside of Jones there. But Jones really then thought the same thing. But then the BMW was in the way. So they both then switched the right-hand side of the circuit down towards Tower Corner. They've both got past those two back markers now. And the orders remained unchanged. So... No real get let, net gain or loss for either driver there as we work lap seven of the race, but there'll be more traffic to come before the end. Yeah, that was a bit sort of a uh, hold your breath moment there as they went through there. Down towards us, they come to complete their seventh lap in this 15 lap race. Across they go, still Kevin Jones. He's done a great job here. Uh, so good to see that noble back again and it's looking mighty mighty quick he's mastered the rolling starts and to be honest that's the part that makes the biggest difference and then he is just fighting brilliantly and legitimately against Oli Ball I think that Oli Ball probably could go a bit quicker but I don't think that that tells the story it's not just a defensive drive by Kevin Jones I don't think is it absolutely not it's uh a good all-round effort, this one. Well, they've got some clear track here. Hopefully the next lap or so. Ball not close enough at the at Old Paddock to be able to, to challenge. Half a second the gap at the beginning of the lap. They go through. Buddy John still there in third place, by the way. Sasha Kikad still fourth. Tony Bennett and Alan Hamilton. They're still having a really good battle over fifth and sixth in the Class B lead as well. Only a couple of car lengths between them. But leaders back along Westway and towards you. Yep, here they come down towards us now. Ollie Ball is very, very close this time round. Across, oh, it's very different lines there through camp, but it doesn't seem to have compromised uh, Jones too much. New fastest lap of the race and a new personal best for Kevin Jones. So they really are pushing each other to to special lap times here. Up Haven Rise they go, and it's still seven laps to go for these guys. So they've got plenty of time, and Ollie Ball's. Probably he's got to be trying to weigh up where it's even possible, even more than you were trying to weigh it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, I think he's you know, pretty fast running out of options here, isn't he? I th maybe he is gambling on back markers being the key here. They've got some more to lap. It's the 86 car of Jeremy Cook. It's the 73 car of Michael Parsons. So BMW and Volkswagen Golf, respectively, that they will get in the next few corners, Just I think. <laughs> quickly as well, Ian, coming towards you is that Alan Hamilton's all over the back of the 24 car of Tony Bennett. Certainly is, and that's the fifth overall and the Class B lead as well. Only about two car lengths between them. They've got some traffic to deal with as well. Del Brett, they are catching. That, uh, big almost like scoop on the front of uh, Alan Hamilton's car. It's almost like he's going to use it to scoop Tony Bennett out of the way, isn't it? Ooh, and turn... all... Del Brett didn't even see him, I don't think, then, did he? Well, I'm not sure he did. Heading through Ooh. Bobby's. <gasps> uh, they've just about squeezed around Del Brett. How? <laughs> How did that it, happen? It, it was, there was a lot of breathing in required, I think. Uh, <laughs> that was incredible. I mean, and that was clearly that Alan Hamilton was like, I cannot wait around. They're now trying to get past this Arbor and Sonny Gill battle. And again, the problem is these cars are probably sort of below the uh, normal wir uh, mirror view. Yep. Oh, and they're just trying to get past Arbor, which shouldn't have that excuse. But that seemed oddly difficult to get past Arbor this time. But uh, they both threw. But Alan Hamilton, remember, that is Class B first and second, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, class A, for, or not Class A, but overall first and second. Class C first and Class A first. Jones and Bull still in the same order. They're heading into Bobbis again for the 10th time now. So coming up to two-thirds race distance as just uh, through the S's comes the uh, Class B lead battle. And it's still Tony Bennett ahead of Alan Hamilton here. Uh, but again, only by a couple of car lengths. Can Hamilton get a good run down towards Tower? No, I don't think he can. So it's still Bennett. The leaders, they're on their way up towards Quarry, I think. 
I mean, this uh, they are indeed, uh, they're making their way up the same order, still picking up through some back markers. But it's quite incredible is that Alan Hamilton's comment to me was that, yes, they're working on being back out again, but not expecting to be fully competitive with it slipping because it was uh, um, a slipping clutch that they were having. Exactly the same issue as last meeting. We may need a stronger clutch for this engine. Well, actually, you've got to look at this and say, well, maybe they're doing all right. <laughs> Well, or, or what could he do with an even stronger one? True, uh, yeah. Ollie Bull is putting a bit of pressure on Kevin Jones down into Tower Corner, but nothing's going to come of it still, I'm afraid. So that's uh, still the same order. Jones and Bull looking up in the distance to Quarry, and it is still Bennett ahead of Hamilton. There's a bit more daylight between those two this time, I think, Chris. So perhaps mm. I'll let you take the leaders up towards you at uh, Upper Camp. Not the first time today that we've struggled to know which bit to really pick up on, isn't it? Different right. size of the circuit, but uh, the way we love it, across the line goes the overall leaders, and it is still Kevin Jones of, ahead of Oliver Ball, 112, the Noble ahead of the white and orange number 41, Vauxhall Tigra silhouette. Up Avon Rise they go, past another back mark. I think that may be Jazz Sapper that they've just gone past there. And uh, round quad corner they go. It, it kind of sticks at that equidistant. Bradley John's crossing the line, number 27, in a lonely third position. And Sasha Kakad's doing well in fourth. Yeah, leaders with me for the 12th time. Best lap of the race has gone to Bull, a 106.415. So he's gone a couple of tenths faster than he went in the first race. So it's, that really shows the intensity of this battle out in front here. Third place is still Bradley John, number 27. Fourth is still Sasha Kakad, uh, 138 in the Audi. Fifth is still Tony Bennett ahead of uh, Alan Hamilton. And they just round in quarry corner now. So they're more than half a lap now behind the overall leaders, Jones and Bull, who are already back towards you. Yeah, they're coming down. Their next target to lap is the 458, the Ferrari 458 of Fazikas, number 458 on the track as well. And uh, I got it wrong. The BMW they put a lap on last time was Kevin Bird, car number eight. But heading up, Avon Rise, they go. And again, Ollie Ball's got a good run up there, but not really able to do anything about it. And uh, this time they're going to try, probably by you, they're going to be trying to get past this Ferrari 458. Yeah, could well be. Ferrari's uh, heading into the S's now. It's sort of two or three lengths clear of Kevin Jones. Uh, of course, the Ferrari, and it's own right, it's not a particularly slow car, um, so they need to pick their moment, but they get past uh, Fazikas now, both of them quite easy, going to his driver's right as they head down the stretch towards Tower. Uh, still no change in the order, so two more laps to go at the end of this one. Can Ollie Ball find a way through? Or is he going to concede more ground to Tony Bennett in the championship race here? Well, Tim, uh, Tony Bennett's under pressure again from Alan Hamilton for that Class B lead. Tim Woodman as well is under massive pressure from Jamie Sturgis. So that's an interesting battle as well, albeit different classes. But the leaders come through here. Del Brett, they're going to put another lap on that uh, silver Porsche. They just had to, and that was a breaks out. And this is the chance for Ollie Ball because it, uh, the apex went to the Porsche there. And suddenly that meant that... Uh, Oh, the Kevin Jones, I think, has been massively compromised by the back marker there. And Ollie Bull has gone through. And no, Ollie Bull's run wide. <laughs> yeah, Jones straight back at him through Quarry Corner. So Bull has lost quite a bit of time there, in actual fact, uh, after all of that. And that has probably, net result, handed Jones the race. Because all of a sudden, with a lap and a half to go, Jones has got 10 or 15 car lengths, perhaps, over Ollie Bull as they go past him, as you can see on the camera there. So there'll be a lot of work for him to do. So I suspect he's going to be a double for Kevin Jones today in the Castle Coombe GT. Uh, I guess we just need to look out for that Class B battle now, which is, I think, heading up towards Quarry. It is a bit, little bit more daylight. Oh, well, no, it's gone again, actually. <laughs> mm, yeah, not a lot of daylight, must be said. But a couple of car lengths between them. That's not quite as close as it was on the previous lap. They've got the Michael Parsons golf to, to lap as well now. So the lead has gone on to their final lap now. They've got another couple of back markers, the Sunny Gill and Arbor, which is actually the other way round to what it was last time they encountered it. We've lost the 175 BMW of Thomas somewhere, sadly. So that's pulled into retirement. But that was really weird is that Del Brett took the apex in towards the very fast folly um, and uh, and I think that uh, Jones was already trying to aim towards the inside. It disappeared. The anchors got thrown out, and, and Oliver Ball was able to go around the outside, but obviously took too much speed into quarry. 
Yeah, that's right. Jamie Sturgis, meanwhile, is ahead now of Tim Woodman, so helped into seventh place. Although Sturgis had a sort of grassy moment here between the S's and Old Paddock. Leaders have gone past me again, and it's uh, over a second, well over a second now for Kevin Jones. So he should be able to bring the car home for a double victory here today. Uh, two Class C wins as well. Yeah, it'd be mighty impressive. Yeah, I see what you mean that uh, Jamie Sturgis ahead of Tim Woodman and Jazz Sapper's now joined that fight. That's three of them duking it out. Down here towards us for the final time towards Camp Corner. Probably not going to challenge Alex Baldwin, I wouldn't have thought this time. Across the line and a great double victory there for the 1-1-2 car of Kevin Jones. That noble is uh, one of my favourite all-time cars. I'm not sure he saw the chequered flag because he looks like he's still at top pace. But uh, Oliver Ball, number 41, in second position. And we look towards the right to wait for uh, Bradley John, who's going to take third, which will also be second in Class A because Oliver Ball still won Class A with that second place on the road. And uh, I, oh. I agree. Kevin Jones hasn't seen the chequered flag the way he's pushing on here. Very serious penalty you can get for failing to uh, observe the chequered flag as well. So let's hope that he uh, that he gets the message and is able to pull into the pit lane. Yeah, this uh, Class B fight is coming across the line now, and Tony Bennett punches the air in delight because he knows that he had to have a fight, not just a great fight on the road, but he knew that that was for actual class honours. Previously, he's been fighting with Sasha Kakad, who, by the way, took fourth on the road and second in Class C. But Tony Bennett, you could see from that punch, that meant a lot to him to get that one, and it means a lot for his championship fight. So he comes home fifth and wins Class B. Sixth is number 56, uh, Alan Hamilton, second in Class B, a great spirited fight there. 99, Jamie Sturgis comes home in seventh with the Class D victory. Eighth, Tim Woodman, number 20, and third in Class B. Ninth, number 40, Jazz Sapra, that gives him second in Class D. Tenth, the Ferrari 458, number 458, Fazekas in the uh, third in Class C. Kevin Bird, number eight, and it definitely is Kevin Bird because apparently Chab's uh, uh, damaged his collarbone, possibly even broken it, which I didn't realise that, but uh, he's not out there. Uh, so Ch uh, Kevin Bird comes home in 11th. 12th, number 73, which is Michael Parsons in the uh, Volkswagen Golf. In uh, 13th position, number 86, the Class C car of Jeremy Cook. 14th, 1, 2, 4, and Class F win for, for Sonny Gill. Great fight he was having with the 33 car of Paul Arbor and just got the nod because 15th was Paul Arbor. And Delbrett, number 59 in uh, 16th place. 17th, number 1, 2, 3. Alex Baldwin, although he came in before he took the chequered flag, but I'm sure that'll just be for the little mistake there. But uh, yet again, an intriguing race. Great win for Kevin Jones. Now, we need to sort of just, uh, between ourselves, guys, we need to just make sure that we have an agreement on driver of the day so we can announce that as well. Josh is waiting to receive. Um, and I'm just typing this to you guys so you can see it. Josh, I know you're about to do it, but you need to see uh, see your phone as well. Uh... Right, so I've just put in my thoughts. That's just that's not dictatory. It's just my thinking uh, uh, to see what we're going to do. Because between the three of us, I'm sure many of you already know this, is that we do have to uh, pick a, a driver of the day, uh, which... It just seems to get harder and harder for me. Um, and uh, uh, by the way, on my point as well, I think I also put the uh, the additional challenge that was faced in that last race as well. So it just added a bit more weight to me. But uh, you sure? You guys are happy with that one then? Uh, it is our driver of the day. And I've got to let Joe know this as well is that Nathan Ward just about takes it. Gary Preble nearly did with four race victories uh, and numerous others were, were really featuring hard. Matt Hallam with his great fight as well. Robert Ellick was great in his, uh, his golf. But we're going to award the driver of the day with uh, not just the, uh, you know, he's been away for a long time and he's had to work on that car. He's got it sorted. He took the Class B victory in race one. Race two, little did we know that as well as that great fight with Paul Barnes, that was whilst he did not have first and second gear. So he was doing chicanes in third or fourth. So he, he'd lost those early on. I know it's not the end of the world. He'd be worth losing third and fourth, but it was a big challenge and he managed to uh, to take that victory. So uh, congratulations, Nathan Ward, for the driver of the day. And welcome back, Nathan. Golden ball racing. It's good to see. So let's bring in Josh. I can see he stood there, but no one else is with him. Are you, are you getting the drivers there yet, mate? 
Well, let's talk here. <laughs> we're trying to get. We're doing reversal. We're doing Bradley first. Um, Bradley John, who took third, I think, he's making his way over here because obviously uh, Kevin Jones arrived a bit late, as you guys were mentioning. So we'll speak to Bradley first. Um, third place for you using your full drive there to keep up with the guys at the start. Yeah, well, I just, I just thought with the issues I've had with the car today. Um, and just with a bit of luck, I just didn't want to push it too much, so I just settled down for third overall, second in class. So I was just happy with that, really. It's been two podiums, a good day. Yeah, it's a, a very pleaseful day with uh, with all the developments we've done to the car, and it's all running perfect now. So really happy with that. And I presume you'll be back in a few weeks to actually push that bit harder. Yeah. Be back for the last race of the year. It started only last month, but now it finishes next month. It happens really quick, doesn't it? I know it does. It does. <laughs> but at least it's a good thing that we are actually having some races. Yeah. And it's grateful that we are, really. Yeah, lots of hard work <laughs> behind the scenes to allow it. Yeah. But well done and Thank look forward you. to in a few weeks. So third place, Bradley John. Second was Oliver Ball, who, who once again is in really close racing here in the GTs. A little bit too close on the start. I think there was a, a hell of a chop going into folly which if i hadn't backed out of it would have been another plane crash for that car which is out of order so not happy about that but the rest of it yeah it was fantastic it was a great a great battle um just sort of trying to figure out where and how and if any little mistakes one chance with about three to go up, up to quarry um passing a back marker which was completely fine and i just went a little too deep on the brakes and then he could get back through, which is a real shame. Um, and then I had oil on my tyres, a couple of laps, and that was fine. Uh, so, no, apart from the start, that was a really great race. Yeah, hearing some of the guys, if it's still up there, at quarry, a bit of cement dust, and that's yeah. quite slippery up there. Yeah, I, that's where I ran too yeah. deep. Um, I couldn't, I just couldn't stop it, because I, I, there were three abreast, and it's like, okay, going to have to try and stop it. I was looking in my mirrors, and we were, we were fine. And then it was like, oh, that corner's coming up a bit fast. <laughs> <laughs> and then just ran a little deep onto the onto the cement dust, and that was it. So you got to give it a go, but yeah. not this time. But it, it's hard enough, isn't it, normally to go around the outside, let alone where you've got yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, Now looking forward to the final round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a few things to fix on the car. Uh, see if we can get a bit more pace, which I think we can do, and then we'll come back. Okay, look forward to it. Well done. <laughs> and then our winner, last winner of the day, was Kevin Jones. So we'll get uh, Kevin over here hopefully kevin another another close race and you managed to hold him off yeah 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 just about and all got a bit messy with the back markers but um you know they're doing their thing and you got to get around them so a bit nip and tuck there for quite a while but that's a part of i guess gt racing anyway isn't it it is yeah but you know there's so much speed difference between our end and the, and the other end that, you know and I say they're doing their job, but yeah. it does make it uh, challenging. I mean, is it quite easy to defend round here, or, or would you say not so much? Um, depends where you've got the speed. You know, Ollie's quicker through the first chicane, and he pulls speed on me there, but I can defend the line there, so that's not a problem. Um, if it was somewhere else, it might be different. <laughs> and are you going to be back here in a few weeks for the last rounds? I'm not sure yet. Uh, that I'm not sure. We've got another commitment, which I'm, I'm not... I'm doubtful, so, but, you know, if I can, I will, for sure. Did you, are you racing it anywhere else? I'm racing at Donington in three weeks' time. Right, OK. Or so, <laughs> oh, the weekend after the Castle Coombe one. So keeping busy in the car. <laughs> trying to, yeah. <laughs> well, well done. Trying to make up for lost time. Well done on two wins today. Uh, thank you to Castle Coombe. Thank you. So that, uh, Crystals and the Instagram, completes all the interviews down here. A little bit of tension, I think, at the end of that race. Ooh, but it's been a good yeah. day of racing here at Castle Coombe. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I yeah, think, I think even you got nervous got then, didn't you, Josh? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, they went, well, <laughs> they went in well, two well, directions in the end. <laughs> yes, yes. We'll leave them to, to sort that one out. I was just saying to Ian, interesting that I did call it a chop, but I didn't realise it was quite like that. So, it, obviously, because I'm from behind here. But, uh, sure. Well, that's the joys of racing. We love all of that. But uh, congratulations to them. Josh Barrett, thank you very much for your work down there. Fabulous job uh, in something I know is completely different for the setup, but Kevin do has done such a good job with the setup down there, hasn't he? Yeah, it's a, it's a perfect way to do interviews. And actually, doing the interviews down here means we can chat to the drivers for longer than when we do it in the pit lane because we have to wait for the drivers to get over there. So actually, even though it's a little bit more awkward, it's, the interaction is a bit better to have a longer chat. 
Absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with awkward, I always say. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I make my living. But Josh Barrett, thank you, mate. You'll be back you. for the uh, the two-day race meet. One day down there, uh, or wherever it happens to be, we don't know what's happening yet. Uh, and one day in uh, uh, Old Paddock, is that right? Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. As we said earlier, we've got 750 Motor Club content there, which I'm quite well used to. And looking forward to working out who are going to be the champions. Like I was saying to the other guys, it's, it's weird, isn't it, that we've only got one meeting left. I know. Well, I mean, Castle Coombe's obviously got more, but for as yeah. far as the local championships, we've obviously still got the Autumn Classic. The bikes are racing here as well. But yeah, we were hoping for a meeting later in the year, but it just wasn't possible to tie up any more. So anyway, for now, Josh, thank you very much for your sterling work, mate. Thanks, Chris. So let's uh, put him down there. So that's him free to go. Let's bring in uh, Ian Salmon. Hang on, let me do that so that we are we are all back in this together, as we always are. Uh, Ian, what a, a fantastic day of entertainment. Uh, brilliant, wasn't it? I mean, I think uh, it's, it stayed dry today. That helps. I know when I was here at the beginning of July, first meeting back, it was a bit damp and it rained, didn't it, during the afternoon? Uh, but I think it's so much better when you have a nice, clear, dry meeting. The racing is that much more exciting, that much closer. Um, we didn't have any long delays during the afternoon at all. We just had that bomb bit of clearing up after the, the Formula Ford second time around. But really good racing, particularly from the Formula Fords, I thought. Um, two good wins there for for Luke Cooper. Disappointment for Felix Fisher. His championship hopes look to be over, but uh, that one might be going Luke's way, but we'll see. No drop scores that final round, so if you have a problem in the first race, that could really scupper your chances there. Um, saloons, I mean, they, they were so entertaining today, I thought, the saloons. I mean, so, sometimes we yeah. normally we have very big grids of them. Not so much this year for, for obvious reasons, but first was one of the best saloon races I think I've seen around Castle Coombe for, for quite a long while, so that, that, that was good to see. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be some frustrated faces down there, isn't there? But we knew that when they've got the new model of tyres that they're allowed to run in the saloons, it's putting new pressures on on a few other elements of mm. those highly strung uh, cars anyway, because, of course, they just yeah. seem to get more and more powerful, don't they? Um, so, yeah, I mean, absolutely brilliant. It, it sets up, and I would imagine you've probably got a disappointment that you're not here for the two-day week yeah, because well, it's kind of I'll set it all up. I'll have to watch the stream, won't I, to, uh, to, 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 to get the benefit for it. But, but and, yeah, and no. we have no idea whether we're doing that. For anybody who's no. watching, we have no idea. Feel free to drop your comments in that you want it to the circuit or whatever. But I have no idea whether it is. That's not up to me. But uh, uh, And hopefully we'll have spectators here. Who knows? It's the Fingers unknown. Crossed. Yeah, but, but no, I think it sets it up really nicely. GTs as well. Two cracking races there. Bit of tension in the second race. We like we, we like that, don't we? It just yep. makes that bit more exciting. Uh, a hot hatch, of course. Gary Preble dominated those, didn't he? Uh, uh, early yeah. on, and we had the sports racing as well, where Mike Genvey gave a bit of a, a, bit of a masterclass, didn't he? But uh, it was that was to be expected. And uh, in terms of the stream, I've got to say a massive, obviously we say a massive thank you to Kev. That goes without saying, the guy's our hero because the work and stress, I mean, we, he was up against it earlier today, to say the least. But his son, Greg, what an incredible job he did on doing the cameras following. It just made it the finished piece for me, what he did with that. Yeah, no, absolutely brilliant. It's raised another level, hasn't it? So, uh, you know, to do all this from scratch, from uh, nothing, you know, um, that first meeting in July to, to what it is now, really good, really good job. It is. And uh, and as we say, it's not supposed to be a production trying to compete with that side of thing. It was never that. It was just about bringing something there. So I know we had comment that said about engine noises, which at best we get it coming from your commentary box sometimes, don't we, as they as they go past and what have you. But it is static cameras. It's not and you, nobody's out there doing it. And uh, thank you, Kev, for the work. And your son, Greg, was an absolute asset there, to say the least. It was uh, pure brilliance. Ian Salmon, thank you very much, my friend. I know that's the thank last you. time you're here, possibly the last time we're working together this year. I'm not sure I yet. It, I think it probably is, unless anything, uh, unless anything strange happens. And this has been the year for strange things happening. That's very it. true. Yeah, yeah, it has. Uh, so thank you very much again, mate. Yep. It's been a pleasure. Okay, I'll see you in 2021. Fantastic. Yeah, okay. take it steady, my friend. So thank you to uh, Ian Salmon as he uh, will wind his way back. Thank you massively to all of you that have watched. It's been an absolute pleasure. I can see the uh, the comments that are coming in and it does mean a lot to us because all of us put in an awful lot of work and we appreciate it. Great day streaming the action, says Peggy Spackman. Thanks, Chris and team, for keeping the stream possible. Well done, all drivers, especially Mr. Parker. That's just bias, Peggy. Uh, woo, what a day, definitely. Uh, Dave Luck says, thank you, Chris and your team, for all the effort you have put in today to give us a truly enjoyable afternoon afternoon's racing hopefully we'll be with you in person next time 
honestly, guys, I'm I hope so too. But I, it's 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 out of well, it's out of all of our control, really. You just it's such a big deal to try and get it sorted, and who knows? Let's hope so. Deborah Humphrey, after your fabulously hard work today to get uh, Mr. Wyatt out there, and and really he delivered. Thank you once again for great coverage from all the different series. Much appreciated, Chris, Ian, and the team, and I much appreciate that. Uh, Lulu Tupu trying to remember i think you said that you're watching from france apologies if i'm remembering that wrong thank you very much guys and coom tv coom tv will um will will be coming back watch the space we'll be coming back we'll do uh, you know review shows i've sorted out that we're going to get an interview with lucky carer which is absolutely brilliant that we're going to be able to get a word with him he and i were chatting yesterday at donington and, we, and we're going to set that one up um, we're going to be picking up a, a show, probably the preview show for the next event. We'll pick up with uh, VP Racing because, uh, you know, VP Racing Fuels are the title sponsor for the double header. And we thank you guys for doing that because everybody acknowledges, everybody knows that the circuit and the racing club have had a torrid time with everything stopping at the moment um, because that's it. That's how they exist. And of course that all completely stopped as it did for, for so many of us that they got hit hard. So anyway, that has been an absolute pleasure. I'm going to leave us and play out with those couple of adverts. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Kev Davies even said, thanks for everyone for turning a boring day into an exciting one. Great job by all. I hope it would never have been that, that boring day. Crikey. It's uh, like su super cider Sunday yesterday. It should have been for people. And then it's that bank holiday tip. Well, I'm going to go back for gin and tonic. So on that note, I'm going to play us out with uh, a couple of sponsors messages. Have a safe evening and the rest of the week, and we'll see you all very soon. Until the next Coombe TV, from myself, Chris Dawes, or Dawesy, as it will be once we get to the Coombe TV, good night. Video one is about the reasons and benefits of public speaking or presenting. Well, let's think about this another way. Why on earth do we exercise? It takes some serious willpower to get going, and it's all too easy to talk yourself out of it. But we know the benefits will be significant, so we push ourselves to do it. And once you get going, it becomes addictive, including the battle of wills to keep going. The same applies with public speaking. It's easy to psych yourself out if you let yourself, but it lets you share your knowledge, point of view, passion, emotion, etc. You have the opportunity to inform, motivate, win over and persuade an audience. What a buzz and an honour. I have the same addiction to the battle of wills, adrenaline and achievement with public speaking. So turn around the way you see it and relish the chance and opportunity. And it hurts a lot less than exercise. Becoming a racing driver has never been easier with Castle Coon Circuit. Book your Ard's Novice Drivers training course at the Wiltshire venue today. The easiest and quickest way into competitive on-track action. Welcome to Castle Coon. My name's Alan Cooper. I'm the, the Chief Driving Racing Instructor here at this circuit. We're here today to do the Novice Driver Training Course, often known as the ARDS course, which is the first way to start off and get your racing driving licence. So, no further ado, let's get on and show you what's involved. So you've seen the format. Everyone here today passed their tests and now have their racing license. Who knows, the next time I see them could be as I commentate on them in front of the usual packed house of racing fans here at Castle Coombe Circuit. All you need to do to be next is to visit castlecoombecircuit.co.uk and select Become a Racing Driver under the Racing tab. Becoming a Racing Driver is easier than you think with Castle Coombe Circuit and Motorsport UK.